gmail.com. At the box office this weekend, number one was uh, Don't Worry Darling. It made $19.2 million. Followed by The Woman King, Avatar. Uh, they're, you know, replaying yes. that original Avatar film. Uh, that was number three. It made $10 million. Yeah, that was definitely worth it. Uh, then we had uh, Barbarian, Pearl, See How They Run at number six. Followed by Bullet Train, DC League of Super Pets. Then Top Gun Maverick and Minions, The Rise of Gru to round out the top ten. Uh, well, we're going to start with this since we did mention Don't Worry, Darling. After Vulture reported on Friday that Olivia Wilde and Florence Pugh got into a screaming match on the set of the production, 40 production and crew members released a statement denying the allegations. The statement issued exclusively to people reads, As a crew, we've avoided addressing the absurd gossip surrounding the movie we're so proud of but feel the need to correct the anonymous sources quoted in a recent article, any allegations about unprofessional behavior on the set of Don't Worry Darling are completely false. Uh, they declared uh, there was never a screaming match between our director and anyone, let alone a member of our cast. Uh, the team also described Wilde as an incredible leader and director who was present with and involved in every aspect of production and who ran this set with class and respect for everyone involved. Mm. On Friday, Pew shared a post to Instagram saying that she was grateful to be part of the movie. Said this film was such an epic story on such a large-scaled shoot. All while during peak COVID times. For that, I will always be grateful. To, to all of you who helped make this, your dedication and love was seen daily. Thank you. With that, here are some pics I took from this time. More to come, she wrote. Tarantula. Well, so they're all just saying, yeah, whatever. It's yeah. a bunch of garbage. So. It, 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 it did what they expected it to do. It had a lot of some, you know, they say, oh, even bad news is good for a, a premiere of a uh, sure. movie. So, but it, like, honestly, what's the big deal? E even if they did get into a shouting mission, it, it's an it's an argument. Crap like that happens all the time, all across the world. Well, you know on I mean? movie like, sets, especially, you yeah. know, it happens a lot. Yeah, yeah. but mm. no, who knows? Okay. I don't know. All right, so Sylvester Stallone and Jennifer Flavin are back together. Oh, I, oh, I said this. Yeah, yeah The did. actor's rep has confirmed reconciliation rumors days I love you. after the Rocky. I love you. After the Rocky star shared old cuddly photos with his wife, that's what you had pointed out. Yeah. It's what it seemed to be, right? Last week, yeah. It's wonderful. Uh, and a spokesperson tells Page Six they decided to meet back up at home where they talked. And we're able to work out their differences. Uh, they are both extremely happy, according to this particular source. I love my 400 million. I mean, my ex. I mean, my wife. <laughs> On Monday, Stallone. It got uh, real when we started talking finances. Uh, Stallone insinuated that he and Flavin may have worked things out. The actor had posted a throwback photo of the two of them holding hands. <laughs> Uh, she had filed for divorce on August 19th after 25 years of marriage and accused the actor of excessive spending. Huh? Uh, that's what it says here. And Stallone denied financial wrongdoing but agreed that their union the is, go. was irretrievably <laughs> broken. Uh, there were many rumors about what led to Stallone and Flavin split, including buzz that it had to do with a dog. We talked about that. The actor reportedly... Wanted to get a Rottweiler to protect the family, which she did not want. But Can I keep him? He found me home. I'll feed him. I'll take care of him. <laughs> but he told TMZ we did not end the relationship on such a trivial argument about the pooch named Dwight. Uh, but Stallone admitted they disagreed on how to care for the dog. Uh, because they split their time between Los Angeles and Palm Beach, that Florida. Was the big, that was part of it. Obviously, there's other stuff at work. I'm glad they're back together. Uh, because again, like it was the uh, the social media post did seem kind of weird, and he was getting nostalgic for the relationship. He had noted their issues ran deeper than Dwight, uh, but the timing was certainly interesting. Hey, it's more than just Dwight. Uh, Stallone. Dwight, Dwight, Dwight. <laughs> Not about Dwight. Doesn't that name sound funny if you keep saying it over and Dwight, over? Dwight, again? Dwight, <laughs> Dwight, 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 Dwight. I don't like it. It uh, also sounds like a, a Nicholas Sparks novel, deeper than Dwight. Deeper than Dwight. It was uh, a misty morning. Stay <laughs> <laughs> rose from bed. He brushed his toothuses and then went outside. There was Dwight with the bone in his mouth. Oh. Yeah. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> oh, it's okay. You're not a very good, not a good writer. <laughs> the end. Get off my back. Oh, there's a romance. Ah, and I love my wife too. Uh, and I love my money more. Uh, Stallone introduced fans <laughs> to Dwight two weeks before Flavin filed for divorce. 
Uh, but he had said at, he had said at the time, we just went in different directions, yeah. adding, uh, I have the highest respect for Jennifer. I will always love her. She's an amazing woman. She's the nicest human being I've ever met. Well, I'm glad they're back together. Yeah. I mean, they've been together for a while. That's good. Good news. Yeah. On uh, Monday morning. After 45 years, James Earl Jones is saying goodbye to the galaxy far, far away by officially retiring from Star Wars. And there's a really interesting twist to this. According to Vanity Fair, Jones signed the... We must get the plans for the Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvester Stallone will be the taking voice over. Of Darth Vader. As the voice of <laughs> Trust me, if I take this helmet off, you're not going to like it. It looks like French onion soup. It's disgusting. Oh, my God. Nothing is over! This time, your planet is over! <laughs> I hate this rebel scum. <laughs> so, uh, according to Vanity Fair, Jones has signed the voice rights to his character. you didn't meet my second in command, Dwight. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, puppy, puppy. You're so cute. I love you so much. I'm going to blow up a planet just for you. <laughs> Uh, no, he signed over the voice rights for the character Darth Vader over to Lucasfilm and uh, Reese Speecher. The latter is a Ukrainian company that uses archival uh, recordings and an AI program to create new dialogue with uh, the voices of performers who have either aged out of their roles or passed away. And we've seen this used before. This method was uh, used to recreate the voice of a young Luke Skywalker for the book of Boba Fett and to mimic Vader's voice which Jones is now aged out of for his scenes in Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, and it's it's um it's amazing and scary at the same time that it sounds, you know, so good, but yeah, they got it going. So Matthew Wood, a sound editor at Lucasfilm, has recorded Jones's voice numerous times throughout his 32-year career with the company and the latest being for the Rise of Skywalker when Wood showed Jones re-speecher's capabilities. The actor went ahead and agreed to sign over the rights to his voice to keep Vader alive. He had said James mentioned that he was looking into winding down this particular character. So how do we move forward? Uh, though many studios recast voice actors and the original performer can no longer play the part, Jones' distinct sound has become syn synonymous, synonymous with Vader. Like it's even, even even someone who could do an impression would of not him get it. Would not get you, it. No agree. matter how hard you tried. Um, I did not know that he actually had the the rights to the voice to the um yeah i guess so that that they must have made that deal early on because um you know when they decided to go with david prouse in the costume and then james earl jones is the voice i guess that's when that deal was made mm -hmm. so uh that is the way that they are going to go forward with that it's probably a, it's a good idea because that'll always be the voice of darth vader yeah and they can they can pretty much mimic anything now that they have enough i mean there's you know Hours and hours oh, of his voice on on uh, uh, recorded. So you folks, they'll tab. Uh, Hilaria Baldwin has oh. given birth to her seventh child with a husband Alec Baldwin. She shared in an Instagram post on Saturday afternoon. The baby girl uh, named Alaria Catalina Arena. Um, it sounds like a, uh, a like a, a, a civic center. Was born on Thursday. Well, I, Irina is spelled I R E N A, okay. not A R E N A. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so the Hilaria Catalina uh, Arena, Arena welcomes the WWE. Yeah. It sticks in concert. <laughs> So Hilaria had a daughter named Ilaria? Yeah. Hilaria. I L A R I A. Mm. All right. Or maybe it's Alaria. It's probably Alaria. So, ladies and gentlemen, at the Both she and the baby are healthy and happy. Uh, the yoga instructor and actress announced that she was pregnant back in March, calling it a huge surprise. Uh, in 2020, yeah, they had welcomed a baby boy. Six months later, they announced the birth of their sixth child via surrogate. Uh, and she had previously opened up on social media about suffering two miscarriages. So they have, <coughs> excuse me, now a seventh one in their fold. It is a uh, lovely family that they have there. Uh, I think Casey, that... It appears Alec Baldwin did a little bit of what you did and got one of the footprints. I'm not sure if tattooed. that is a tattoo or if they actually put the because you know they the, the ink, ink up, yeah, yeah. yeah if they just inked up his arm. I feel like they inked up his. It arm. Maybe you're right. Yeah, because yeah. it's too. Late. Hey, Rihanna is going to perform the 2023 Super Bowl halftime show in Glendale, Arizona. Uh, Rock Nation Management, which manages the singer, confirmed her participation in the annual festivities, uh, and. <clears throat> the NFL head of music 
Seth uh, Dudowski said the league is looking forward to the performance. So uh, it's funny the NFL has a head of music. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, it's such an important part now. Uh, stated we are thrilled to welcome Rihanna to the Apple Music Super Bowl halftime show stage. Uh, Rihanna is a once-in-a-generation artist who has been a cultural force throughout her career. We look forward to collaborating with Rihanna, Rock Nation, and Apple Music to bring fans another historic halftime show performance. They just plug in the name every year. Uh, so, yep, you will, I'm sure it'll be a uh, tons of dancers yeah. and, and all kinds of... Uh, she should just sit on a, on a stool with a jug and yeah. just say... <laughs> <laughs> Or with the uh, trombone game, Preston. Oh, yeah. that, oh man. Yeah. That would be the absolute best if she came out and played trombone Sure, champ. took her quest. Uh, yeah, do we have something here? <laughs> Not a try in the arena. <laughs> All right. Uh, I was uh, bummed to see this, as I'm sure you, will, uh, you were too, Steve. Louise Fletcher. Yeah. Uh, late blooming star whose riveting performance as the cruel and calculating nurse Ratchet in One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest uh, set a new standard for screen villains and won her Academy Award has died. She was 88 years old. She was great <coughs> in that role. She was also, she was so loathsome, but she also could play a real good, like a kind grandmother and yeah. uh, she had a, a, a great range. Uh, Fletcher died in her sleep surrounded by family at her home in France. Um, and it's it's an interesting backstory on her um after putting her career on hold for years to raise her children she was in her early 40s yeah and little known when she chose the role opposite jack nicholson in the 1975 film directed by uh, milos foreman uh and who had admired her by he, he admired her work uh the year before in director robert altman's thieves like us and at the time she didn't know that many other prominent stars, including Anne Bancroft, Ellen Burstyn, and Angela Lansbury, had turned the role down. She says, I was wow. the last person cast. This was in a 2004 interview. She said, it wasn't until we were halfway through shooting that I realized that the part had been offered to the other actresses who didn't want to appear so horrible on screen. Yeah, yeah. And then One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest went on to become the first film since 1934's It Happened One Night to win Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Actress, and Best Screenplay. And clutching her Oscar at the 1976 ceremony, she told the audience, it looks as though you all hated me. Yeah. <laughs> and then, this was really cool. She then addressed her deaf parents in Birmingham, Alabama. This is at the Oscars, talking and using sign language, uh, saying, I want to thank you for teaching me to have a dream. You are seeing my dream come true. There was a moment of silence, and it was followed by thunderous applause. Later that night, uh, Foreman made the uh, wry comment to Fletcher, and her uh, co-star, Jack Nicholson, he said, now we will all make tremendous flops. And in the short run, at least he was right, because all their projects they did after it's that, true, yeah. immediately after that, were crappy. She's in, and not by her fault, but one of the absolute worst sequels of all time and one of the worst movies of all time, Exorcist 2. That's correct. The Heretic. Yep. Horrible. Uh, mm. Far more than her male peers, Fletcher was uh, hampered by her age in finding major roles in Hollywood. Uh, still, she worked continuously uh, for most of the rest of her life. She's in Firestarter, too, right? Her... Was she, she the, the grandmother? I think. Um, I don't remember I'm that. probably wrong. Uh, in her post-Cuckoo's Nest films included uh, Mama Dracula... <laughs> Dead Kids and the Boy Who Could Fly. Uh, she was nominated for Emmys for her guest roles on the TV series Joan of Arcadia and Picket Fences and had a recurring role as a Bojaran religious leader Kai Wynn uh, Adami in Star oh. Trek Deep Space Nine. Yeah, she was great. And played the mother of musical duo Carpenters in 1989's Karen Carpenter Story. Um, and part of her career was hampered because she was so tall. She was 5'10". She was taller than all the leading men. I didn't know um, that. But listen to this. So um, she was born the second of four children in Birmingham. Her mother was born deaf, and her father was a traveling Episcopal minister who lost his hearing when he was struck by lightning at four years old. Holy ago. hell. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Uh, she said it was like having parents who are immigrants who don't speak your language. Uh, the Fletcher children were helped by their aunt, uh, whom lived uh, she lived with in Bryant, Texas, and taught it's amazing. them reading, writing, and speaking, as well as how to sing and dance. Well, like uh, in, in Coda, they show um, the the parents in a in a way become reliant on their yes. hearing uh, capable 
uh, Child, kid. Yeah. yeah. Yep, exactly. She played Norma Manders in uh, Firestarters. There you go. You were right. Uh, okay. She was survived by her two sons, John and Andrew Bick, by the way. The so. Penn heirs. All right, just a couple more quick things. Uh, let's go to this. Oh, uh, People reports a different stroke star. Todd Bridges got married to designer uh, Batijo Hershey, I guess is how you say her name, on Wednesday, and uh, it was in Beverly Hills, California. Bridges told the publication the ceremony involved just our closest friends and family and that he was excited to marry somebody that I'm madly in love with. Wait a second, you're not Theo. Uh, the Everybody Hates <laughs> Chris Actor. It's Tommy Theo was getting married. Also, uh. <laughs> also shared that the uh, the pair met in March. So they got married pretty quick. He said, we met through a friend that I've known for a long time named Mandy. I was uh, supposed to actually be setting her up with someone else, but it didn't go that way. And when I met her, I was like, I am not going to set her up with anyone else. I want her for myself. On the um, sitcoms of your uh, track here, Preston, did anyone watch the Norman Lear 100th? No. Uh, birthday celebration on ABC. I, I watched it over the weekend. I'd recorded it. Case you have to see what Kim Fields is wearing. Oh, <laughs> there is a, there is a lot of low cutness. Oh, really? Yeah, it's pretty wild. Uh, and to see everyone, Preston, you know, you don't want to think of people as aging, but you know, uh, it, it's bound to happen. So they had the three girls. Uh, Joe um, uh, Blair was in the audience. And the other two were there as well, but it was it was wild to see them. But yeah, okay. she had a plunging neckline. Uh, you have to check it out. Tootie Kim, did. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Kim Fields. It yeah. looked like uh, I just. Uh, it looks like she's wearing a robe. Wow. Right. Yeah. yeah oh nice. wait a minute. No, that's a uh, that's a kind of like a flesh colored shirt. Is it? It's kind yeah. of like a mesh with beading on it. Yep. Look at her neck up here. Yeah, but it comes way down, and you can see the shape of her breasts. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. Sometimes that totally fools me, especially like on Dancing with the Stars. Oh my or god! Something. Yeah, because you're like, she is barely dressed at hell. hell, and then they get close in, and you're like, oh, yeah. if they're just faking it, liar. They're yeah. faking it. Uh, let's see. On uh, Friday, Bachelor stars uh, Clayton Eckerd and Susie Evans announced in a joint statement they are splitting up. No! No. This never happens. Yes. Yeah, so they wrote, wow. We'll be friends forever. With incredibly heavy hearts, we wanted to share that we have decided. And juicy farts. That we had decided <laughs> oh to <my> go. <laughs> I made it funny. <laughs> I'm a poet. Uh, He's such a moron. Uh, we wanted to share that we have decided to go our separate ways. Uh, they wrote, We understand that there will likely be a lot of questions about this decision. <laughs> no. Really? No, we're good. Not a one. Uh, we don't care. Any questions, anybody? <laughs> no. Okay. They said social media is definitely a highlight reel, <laughs> and much of our experiences together we have kept private, as I'm sure most can understand. But we will share this. Although this last year together has brought us so much joy and so many laughs, <laughs> there's also been a significant <laughs> amount of pain, and they left it at that. That's all that I have. Which, uh, which chucklehead is this one? I don't know. This is... Uh, He's a moron. <laughs> Clayton, Clayton Eckerd is all his right. name. My he, name is Clayton Eckerd. And uh, her name is Susie Evans. I love you, Susie. <laughs> I don't love you, Susie. Where are we now? So, yeah, they're they're over with, and I know you're all heartbroken about it. I think contractually, they're at least required to be together for about a year. That's when it seems, you know, uh, there's probably something that spells out. You we, can't break up right away. Right. We'd like you to sort of at least massage it for a while before yeah. you break up. Yeah, pretend for Which at you least will. six months. Yeah. <laughs> All right, a new horror movie is coming out next week, and the studios found a creative way to let people know about uh, about it. Uh, they, they sent background actors to live baseball games front and center. So it's Paramount's latest offering called Smile. And several marquee matchups aired on uh, big TV stations on Friday, including uh, the Dodgers against the Cardinals, the Mets against the A's, and the Yankees against the Sox. In all of them, there was at least one person <laughs> prominently positioned behind home plate that held a super creepy smile the entire time. Did wow. you guys see this? Yes, oh. I did. And, and Preston, I don't know if I was a pitcher. I mean, I know you're supposed to... I blocked that stuff out that I wouldn't be distracted by that. Yeah, so they had like this yeah. overly and bright oh, shirts. Man. Yeah, big big eyes, big smile, yeah. and not moving at all. 
Uh, so it was perhaps most notable during the Mets game where a woman in a highlight green, highlighted green shirt with the word smile written across it was standing and smiling awkwardly until a security guard uh, told her to move along. Another guy in a green uh, in green was also spotted at the Dodgers game sitting in silence and holding a creepy smile for much of the game. Uh, some of them stood up at times, but most sat still and just held the pose completely committed to the gag. Dude. Another oh man, God. this time in blue, was seen at the Yankees game, and he got up occasionally with viewers at home certainly taking notice uh, that uh, uh, it was freaking them out a bit. Uh, so, yeah. I like the concept. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. yeah. It's a really good idea. Uh, so I, I watched the um, the trailer for it. I'm not sure if I'm sold on it or not. We'll, yeah, we'll see, see what they do with it. Yeah. All right, and then finally, speaking of trailers, uh, according to Deadline, Netflix dropped the trailer for the limited series The Watcher. On Saturday, starring Naomi Watson, uh, Bobby Cannavale. Uh, the series is based on, and we've talked about this before, uh, it's based on the true story of a couple who bought and then were forced to abandon a $1.4 million home in New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. After they started receiving letters from someone who claimed to have been watching the home for decades. Like yes. Ultra creepy letters that were coming to them. Still gives you chills. Uh, and like one of them said, I am the watcher, bring me your young blood. Uh, the series is set to premiere on October 13th. I don't think there was ever any resolution from that at all. Oh, it was Burt Young. No, no. That was sending the letters <laughs> from the Rocky movies? It's Paulie? Yeah. Paulie? I was wow. bored. Wow. No, yeah, th that whole thing, that removed entity who supposedly, you know, was always keeping an eye on them is, is a chilling concept. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm intrigued by this. All right, we're now ready to play the clips. La Brea mm. follows a family separated by a mysterious sinkhole in a primeval world and is back for a second season. Here, star Natalie Zia, or Zay, I'm not sure how you pronounce her last name, reveals the uh, steamier tone that fans can expect this season. Here we go. We did have to employ an intimacy consultant this year. It, you certainly see more of the romance um, than you saw before, which was, I guess, nothing. I don't know that you saw any of the romance before. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this description sounds stupid to me. <laughs> it is stupid. Yeah, it is La Brea follows a family separated by a mysterious sinkhole in a primeval world. And they're talking about romance in this clip here? Yes. What? Yes. Sometimes when you see a woolly mammoth, you get you, you, you get wood. It, it happens all the time. So so there's a sinkhole that's opening up, and what? The things are coming out of it? No, no. they go into it. They fall oh. into it. It's it's I it's the La Brea tar pits, is it not? Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and that's nope. where the sinkhole occurs. And they fall into this. It's basically uh, the lost uh, land of the lost. It looks like land of the lost. Yeah. It's what it is. Okay, All right. Let's go to the. But next they're horny. Clip. Next clip here. Uh, reasonable doubt follows a brilliant defense attorney in L.A. who bucks the justice system at every chance she gets. In this clip, producer Carrie Washington explains how her interest in sociology helps other actors. I think I have used a lot of it. I mean, I think you know what we, for me. I tend to think about characters in the kind of social science context. Like when I'm playing a character, I like to think about how she's become who she is and how she thinks and how she lives in the world and how society impacts who she is. Translation, boring. Reasonable Doubt will be available for streaming on Hulu tomorrow, by the way. All right, there you go. That's what I got in the entertainment report this morning. All right, we have some stuff taking place. Uh, first and foremost, I have to mention you, Hulu. Is yeah. Happening. And we have your opportunity to win $1,000 two times today. We'll do it at 8 and 10 during our program. Then it happens at noon, 3 and 5. So don't miss your chance to win the money. We also have Dane Cook, who's going to be on the program in the 9 o'clock hour. And he's got a new comedy special. Uh, Jack and Bam Bam stopping by a little bit earlier than the regular crossover because he's going to be filling in for Pierre Robert, and we want to make sure that we get a little bit of a recap time between Casey right, right. and Jackie and some of the things we might have missed out on. Uh, and as we are taking a break right now, I would like to give away some movie passes. We have the greatest beer run movie premiere, and it is tonight, 7 o'clock, UA King of Prussia. And we'll take five callers at 215-263-WMMR. Just the first five callers. Give us a buzz right now. You get to go tonight Casey Boy, fresh off his trip, is going to be there this evening oh my God. for this event. So 7 o'clock at the UA King of Prussia. Click contest at WMMR.com for another chance to win. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us.
about this, but it's a big announcement. Princess Kate and Prince William are expecting their third child yeah. together. It is official. Kensington Palace confirmed on Monday that they are already, of course, they are already the parents to Prince George IV, and who is four. I'm sorry, not the fourth. Prince George is four. <laughs> How did you pull that one off? And uh, <laughs> Princess Charlotte, who I is... I ricocheted off the ceiling. Uh, who is two. The Royal Highness, here's the official uh, announcement uh, from Kensington Palace. It said, their Royal Highness... The Royal Highness... Says... <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> The Duke, Duke and Duchess, Duchess of Cambridge, Cambridge are very, very pleased to, to announce that the, the Duchess, Duchess of Cambridge, Cambridge is expecting their third, third child, child, Harry the Fourth. The Queen, the Queen and of England, member and of members both. of Parliament in conjunction with the Benny Hill estate. <laughs> <laughs> they got the full. Of both families uh, are delighted and Ringo. with the new <laughs> What? Ringo and Betty Hill. <laughs> Step it up. Fish and chips. <laughs> Fox hunts. Tallywhacker. Tallywhacker. <laughs> So, uh, Kate is again facing an acute form of morning sickness. Sometimes she had grappled with uh, during her first two pregnancies. It's um, yeah. it's completely debilitating. There's a do they have the name of it there? It's it's uh, yeah yeah. It's called uh, hypermesis uh, gravidarum. Right. So she's her her level of nausea and everything is off the charts. Sounds like a Harry Potter spell. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Harry- she had it with with each. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly. So she actually canceled an appearance Monday morning due to the illness. Um, and they had said that uh, in a statement to as with her previous two pregnancies, the Duchess is suffering from hypermesis uh, gravidarum. Uh, her Royal Highness will no longer carry out her planned engagement at the Hornsey Road Children's Centre in London today. A 35-year-old royal is expected less than three months, uh, is reportedly, I'm sorry, less than three months pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> And they only went public with the information because of how sick she is. Are you uh, okay in there, sweetheart? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some milk of magnesia? <laughs> <laughs> the prince recently discussed Kate's it parents seems to be in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the prince recently discussed Kate's parenting skills in glowing terms and admitted that uh, there are good days and bad days for every parent. He had said, "We well, as the uh, the other parents in the room will testify, there's wonderful highs and there's wonderful lows. Uh, it's been quite a change for me personally. I'm very lucky in the support I have from Catherine. Uh, she's an ama- amazing... <laughs> she's an amazing mother and a fantastic wife. Love between a man and a woman is a beautiful thing. Especially if it's on video. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't you agree? Uh-huh. Yeah. I'd have yeah. to agree with you on that. <laughs> and and as wonderful as expressing that love through human touch and yeah. and uh and and well, getting it on. Right. I'm being nice because Bill's here this morning. Oh no. All right. This is about sex. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the withdrawal method. Okay, where you go to the bank and you take everything out in one <laughs> shot. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay. No, also known as the pullout method. Yeah. Uh, is being used twice by twice as many men as a decade earlier. Uh, there this are... is for as a form of birth control. Yeah, it is the most. It is it is a risky proposition. Oh yeah, and, absolutely. Um, you know it. it uh, uh, and that's that's I don't know that's that's not good news. Listen to this: while ten percent of unmarried men between the ages of fifteen and forty-four use this form of birth control in two thousand two, that number jumped to nineteen percent in twenty fifteen, according to the Center for Disease Control. Yeah, but but the use of condoms is on the rise, but still only a third of men wear them. So in my condom days, I my brand purchasable at the local mobile station, Bearback. Trojan? Bearback. Yeah. Really? No. Wow, I was a Trojan guy. Trojan guy. Trojan I went bread. with the most popular product. Trojan bread. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, do they still have the machines in, in men's bathrooms? I haven't seen them in a long time. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the dispensers you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, on the weekends, I work as a lot lizard. <laughs> ah, it's good to know that yeah, those are there. Yeah. You sure you're a woman? Yeah. I, ha- I have on rare occasions seen them before, Case. That's where I saw them for the first time as a child. There was a, a bar across the street from our swim club. Go buy daddy some condoms. <laughs> and no, but I, I didn't know what condoms were. I just knew that they had a machine there. Yep. And so I went over there. I bought some out of there. I bought a French tickler and a regular one. I was oh, going to yeah. ask if they had French ticklers or <laughs> yeah. not. Yeah. <laughs> 
And then I brought it back to the pool and I inflated them like they were balloons. Of course. <laughs> and there was like an adult who was like, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Come here, Want to have a pool party? <laughs> I've been waiting for you. Uh, this is a dream come true. Um, according to Planned Parenthood, about 27 of 100 women will get pregnant with her partner uh, when her partner uses the uh, uh, the withdrawal as uh, control. Comparatively, only about nine out of every 100 women on a contraceptive pill will become pregnant in a year. I um, have you ever seen just one fireman on a hose? That's kind of what I'm like. So uh, with the uh, with the whole withdrawal thing, like I just I'm, I'm not, I have no control. Okay. Yeah. You probably took it one level into <laughs> yes. the uncomfortable bill area. Yeah. About exactly how you discharge, <laughs> dude. Okay. Here. We're going to move along now to something else. So we do support our local firefighters. Of course. Yes. Of course. But we had um, four listeners come in. We had Mel, Frank, Kat, and Victoria, because we've been talking about uh, the movie It, which is opening on Friday. I'm going to go see it on Saturday. I already got my tickets. I'm ready. I'm seeing it Friday. All right. So what we did is we took these uh, these four listeners, Mel, Frank, Kat, and Victoria, and we, we put them in another room with Dr. Stephen Rosenberg, Philadelphia's number one hypnosis, uh, hypnotist, uh, the Thor of hypnosis. The Thor. He's been referred to quite often yeah. <laughs> as the Thor of hypnosis. But I, I want to, uh, it's going to take a minute, but they're, they're in the other room. I want to bring our listeners in. Aren't you? And I, we're going to have them meet some people. Meet some people. Aren't you pulling for them? Yeah, yeah, I think it would be awesome. <laughs> I, if, uh, it'd be so cool. Yeah, if they were able to uh, get past their fears. But we are going to set the stage here. They're, they're making their way in now. There's Kat, and uh, here Mel comes Mel. Mel doesn't look happy. Okay, and great. you have uh, Victoria. She was the most scared. And uh, Frank is uh, wearing his glasses. He's got uh, a vision issue, so uh, it, we, we can't quite read him from his eyes. So right. why don't you guys come on over to the microphones over here. And uh, first of all, let's see how you're feeling. Kat, you were the first one in. How are you feeling after that session with Dr. Rosenberg? I'm feeling pretty good. Okay. I'm uh, more relaxed, more all right. calm. Good. Yeah, he, he, it it was it was definitely calming. And okay, tea. okay. Uh, but that, now what you may learn is that from now on you're going to smoke. No, uh, no, yeah, no. that's uh, <laughs> that, they replace the one trade off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mel, they replace your clown fear with a desire to smoke. Mel, you looked really nervous when you walked in here. Is it the fact that we have the room decorated with uh, balloons and circus fare? Does that bother you at all? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's bothered me quite a bit. Oh, okay. really? I was really relaxed until I saw the balloons and the big uh, tent okay. behind me. Then let's go to Victoria. Hello there, Victoria. How you doing? Um. Shaking. All right. Okay. All right. And then fa last, let's let's talk to uh, Frank. How do you feel? How, what did you think of the session? Did, did did it resonate with you at all? Not really. Not no. really. You, okay. okay. Well, what would you just so you, you do you, you just don't like clowns? Correct. We have some clowns here. Okay. Right. And what we we're gonna we're not gonna have nope. people screaming and yelling and running in and going crazy or anything like that. No. We just wanted to get your initial reaction. When we bring a clown into the studio, <laughs> Mel is already. You look like you've gone into. Uh, she is. You're staring off She's into white. the distance. This should be fun. Mel. Yeah. You okay. Yeah, I'll be good. Mel's okay. crying, guys. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think Mel. We Mel do you yep. want to take a seat, Mel? Are you good? Okay. All right. All right. All right. So. This is a heavy metal version of Send In the Clowns. We're bringing in our first clown. This is Cheeks, by the way. Cheeks is a female clown. Yes, yeah, so Cheeks is coming. Cheeks, just stay over by Nick. Don't yeah. don't get any closer. Uh, uh, Mel, how you... Look, do you, is Cheeks is fairly pleasant, right? Yeah, Cheeks is good. Okay, okay Cheeks is good. Could you normally be this close to a clown? What? Could you normally be this close to a clown? Uh, my other... Past instances have kind of been fight or flight, so I've just run. Okay. <laughs> All right. So well, you're doing great. This is, this is, this is hey, good. Doing good. well. Cat, you're not looking no, at her. No, she's not looking at all. I, I don't like the black lipstick. It's. The black I, lipstick. Yeah. Victoria <laughs> Victoria is not looking at her either. She's just to her left. Uh -huh. And you're doing okay. You should yeah. feel my pulse because my pulse isn't doing okay. Okay. But can you, you, can, you look at, can you look at her? No, I'm good. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. You don't want to look at her? Because, mm -mm. okay, so we, we've gone to this was the easiest level, by the way. We're going to bring it up just a notch. Let's bring in Grin next, oh please. Uh, oh, Grin. Connor, let Grin come into the uh, the studio. Now, be nice, Grin. Come on in. Send in. All right, here. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, here's Dude. Grin. He's horrible. Victoria's crying now. Victoria, you oh, crying? she is, Yeah, too. she is. Okay. Frank, how you doing? 
If it wasn't for the fact that I don't have enough money for bail, <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. It's, yeah. it's wild that his reaction is to to attack. Attack. I can see that though. Yeah. All right. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna bring in our last clown, and we'll do this quickly, and then we'll we'll get them out of here because I think it's getting to be too much. Yeah. And get guys. the assessment. So All right. Other clowns. Carnage. Step back. Got Let, let's bring Carnage in. Carnage is the he's the head honcho, and he is. Uh, not only is he wearing the bib overalls, but he also has a, uh, a chicken hanging around his neck, uh, which he was squeaking. And uh, Carnage, come on over to the microphone. How you doing, man? Good, good. How's it going, guys? Good. It's good to see you, as always, sir. It's kind of tough to miss these guys when they no, show up. No, they're awesome. Yes. And they, they're, believe it or not, at the camp, a lot of times, kids will come up to them because they think they're so cool. So you guys hearing them speak in normal voices, does that make a difference? Yeah, no, I, I'd say definitely hearing them talk is one thing and just physically seeing them and hearing, like sound effects is another so that horn like triggered me <laughs> oh my god <laughs> carnage is leaning in towards her she is no, you, oh he's handing her a bloody rag that's <laughs> probably not a good idea all right, all right. and then cat how are you doing now uh yeah seeing him just walk in was 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 it made your heart race and stomach drop and then when when they start talking it's it's all right okay all right i think we're making strides I think here so. Casey, does anybody want to hug them Go uh, ahead. A clown? Yes. Uh, no, Mel is saying no. Don't let Frank right. say no. Cat, would you be open to a hug from one of these clowns? I'll hug a clown. Yeah. 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 We're breaking down barriers here. All right, Cat. No, let's not have them. No, come no, no. Over. Oh, you come you, over. You go to the clown. <laughs> All right. So, we go. so we're gonna uh, all, a group hug. A gr look at this. Wow. wow. Get a picture of this. This is wonderful. It worked. That's right. now that was. That was special. Uh, Victoria? Okay. You, all right, Victoria. Oh, all right, Victoria. Mel, you don't have to. Don't worry. No, Mel, you're fine. All right, so Victoria's getting in. She's actually smiling. She so and she's closing her eyes at the same time. So we're going to get a really good picture for you. Let me ask Mel. Would you like to do it or no? Sure. All right. She's, oh. she's diving in. She's going to do it. We're making we're making friends. <laughs> this is a beautiful thing. <laughs> Mel, look at Mel's face. You're doing a great job. Oh, oh yes, I am. Oh, that was huge. All right, Frank, we're not even going to answer yeah. that. <laughs> Unless you want to volunteer that. Yeah, you probably don't, right. do you? No. 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 Okay. He doesn't really. All right. Oh, my is this God. Real? Are you really doing that? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's Very good. awesome. Right. I love that. Let's hear it for Mel and Frank and Kat and Victoria. They did wonderful. Fear of clowns. Getting over it right here on the Preston and Steve Show. Yes, we have from the Banfazi. Let's give some love, ladies and gentlemen. Chris Jericho. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I walked in. There's a whole uh, studio audience here, a live studio audience. Yeah. yeah this is great. And a lot of people were excited uh, and, and came in here very specifically just to say hi and, and see this interview in person. Well, it's great, and thanks for having me on. You must be like, uh, first I'm on the phone, then I'm here in person. <laughs> I appreciate uh, all the Jericho love. I'll tell you that right yeah. now. Coming over to the house next. Yeah, yeah I got, I got an app next week. There's a yeah. hologram. Right. They're going to tour. There's the, the Jericho hologram and the Dio hologram are going on tour next month. Hey, you got to milk all the milk out of that Every where you yeah. can squeeze the crap out of every drop. Every teat. Let Absolutely. Me, let me teat. tell you first how impressed I am with the album. I took it home the other day. Oh, right. I yeah, listened to it, listen to it a little home. bit different this time, and I'm like, I just love this album. Well, Bill's a huge, Man About Town, yeah. Bill West, a huge yeah. fan so as well, so you'll they, be hearing more of them. They got a new album coming out in November, so sorry. I didn't mean to no, go on and love. on about that, but I'm in love. I'm a young man in love. I'm in love. He's in love. I'm in love. <laughs> What, were you, what song is that? It's Oh, God, is that from... Uh, it's from Little Mermaid. She's in love. Oh, I don't know that song. Nah. Not when what? you're in love with a crustacean. Uh, maybe the stage show. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. Have you, okay. Anyway. Uh, That's so, Kathy's bailiwick. She's, a, she's the singer. If you would like to uh, see the video clip, it's on our Instagram. It's account. great. They were fantastic. So, over the weekend, uh, there was a bright light across the sky, uh, and it was uh, Saturday night, and apparently what people thought was some kind of a, uh, I don't know, uh, 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 a meteorite or something like that, turned out it was a, a SpaceX launch. That's cool. Uh, Falcon 9 rocket out of, uh, out of Florida, and... Uh, I had, we were talking about this on the phone last night. Nick, This I did not see this. I was like, oh, I saw that. 
What I saw was Friday night. I saw something different in the sky. Oh. I, want, I want to bring that up in All a right. moment because... What's happening in the sky? What's going on? Because Fire in it, sky. It kind of freaked us out. But I saw the video, uh, Casey, that you sent over that Seamus took. Seamus took from our... I think it was our front yard. So it must have been up there for a while. Did that look like what you saw What no. the Seamus video? No. What what he saw, What the, the video and what people saw on Saturday night looked similar to what I saw several years ago at a block party that we were having okay. and I'd been drinking a lot and I thought I saw an alien. <laughs> or, uh, a fiery angel. I thought I saw an alien spacecraft or something like that and that's when I called Matt I O'Donnell remember, remember. at oh, yes. 6ABC that yeah. night and I'm like, dude, I saw something that didn't look right and he called around and he found out indeed it was a launch. Oh. Local broadcaster Preston <laughs> Elliott was drunk last night. <laughs> Claims uh, to have spotted a glowing angel. But it, <laughs> this looks exactly yeah. like what I saw all those years ago. Because it was at least 10 years ago that I saw that. Uh, and uh, so this is pretty damn cool, man. So I was driving uh, a bunch of ladies to a concert on Saturday night. And uh, my, <laughs> I, I was the dad. And uh, there were uh, two girls on the back and uh, one girl in the front. And... Um, one of the girls in the back on the right-hand side of the, uh, on the passenger side of the car, uh, she's like, oh, my God, what, what the hell is that? And she's like, it looks, it looks like a common. And anytime I hear anything like that, I'm like, yeah, she's probably drunk. Right, right. You know, yeah. like, th this is, it's nothing. And then uh, we all saw it, and it passed right in front of the car. So I was heading east on Route 30. We we're going to Ardmore Music Hall. And, uh, and then it's, it kind of zoomed in front of us. And it really did look like what a comet would look like. Yes. And so. How, how bright? Um, really bright, really bright, br brighter than a uh, an airplane, right? And um, but this Steve, it was moving super fast. And Preston, years uh, years ago, you turned me on to the um, uh, tracking system for the uh, International yes. Space Station. Yes. So I'm looking at that, and I was like, it doesn't look like that at all because it's too bright. It's too bright, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and the space station moves in a, like a, sort of in a straight line. And yep. this looked like Steve. It looked like a plane, but with this massive fan attached to it, kind wow. of like a. Um, like a comet would look like. Oh, I would have liked to have seen that. So uh, we, we they got video of it. I, I posted it up on Instagram on uh, Saturday night, and I've never received so many responses so quickly as to what it was. People alerted me right away that there was a SpaceX launch, and I think out of the, where? I think out of Florida. 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 Yeah, yeah it was yeah. out of Cape Canaveral. Isn't but, that amazing? Yep. So, and you, there are launches like in uh, Southern Virginia, right? Like the Wallace yeah. Island or whatever. Right. And it would seem to be to make more sense to be able to see that around here. But, but for Florida. For Florida. And people were seeing it all up and down the East Coast. So I was getting alerts yep. on Instagram from, like, Maine and all the way down from Florida. People were able to see it all over the place. And it was really pretty fascinating. And then, so it passed, like, in front of a car, you know, due east of us. And then it just disappeared. And I was like, what wow. the hell is that? And <laughs> it turns out it was a rocket going into space. And when we couldn't see it anymore, it, it had gone into space. It had gone out of sight. So what I saw on Friday night, uh, my wife and son and I were outside. We're just sitting outside. And it was probably, I don't know, 8, 9 o'clock, something like that. And we're just looking up at the sky. And Parker just, he, we're just kind of, you know, hanging outside looking up. And Parker goes, satellite, because we'll, we'll see them from sure, time to yeah. time. You can tell they don't blink. Right. They move steady and uh, not crazy fast, but but you can tell the difference between a plane if you stay and if you if you look at it for a while. Okay. And we, we saw this bright light, and it was brighter than, than a satellite that I've seen before. Um, and it was just a... It, it didn't have a, a tail on it or anything like this one did, Nick. Okay. And it's moving, and we're sitting there watching it, and I'm and I'm keeping an eye on it, watching it for about ten seconds, and then it just faded out and disappeared. And I'm like, okay, that's not normal. What was that? Mm. And it kind of weirded us out a little bit, and then we stopped thinking about it. But I, I, I was, I mean, like, it had it wasn't an aircraft because its plane went out. Um, it looked too low to be a satellite. Uh, we didn't hear any sounds at all. It wasn't a helicopter. You don't have a lot of light pollution where you are also, right? I mean, Not a ton, Not no. a ton, no. right? No. So, um, and how long did you say you saw it for? We were sitting there probably about eight or ten seconds. Okay. You know, and, and I'm, we're sitting there watching, yeah, yeah, that's a satellite. And I'm like, wait, oh, wait, it just disappeared. So it was really strange. So I'm wondering if it might have been some type of... I don't know, because satellites, they don't... They're, they're, Goodbye, they're, Preston. They're Goodbye. Light doesn't go. I know. I enjoyed my time on Earth. And for just I listen a, to your show every morning. <laughs> oh, that's cool. For just a moment. <laughs> uh, for just a moment, I thought maybe yeah. UFO. How, listen, yeah. we don't know. I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. I mean, to me, it was a UFO. It was unidentified. Uh, I, could, yeah. I couldn't identify it, and it was flying. So, hmm. uh, Hang on. Let me go to Chris, who is a science teacher. Hi, Chris. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Chris. Uh, yes. 
uh, I am a science teacher, and uh, I spe- my specialty is uh, space and space travel and all that stuff. Excellent. Um, but, uh, yeah, I wanted to just kind of explain to everybody who got to see this, because a lot of questions that came to me was, like, why the heck now? Um, and it really has to do with the fact that, yeah, th- th- most of the launches are coming from Cape Canaveral, and they're usually following e- the eastward uh, direction because it's going along or as close to along the equator as we can go in the U.S. Right. Um, and this time, however, because this was a Starlink uh, mission, in other words, this is just one of Elon Musk's pet projects and trying to get as many satellites up there as possible. This one was going more north uh, to cover more uh space okay so yeah that's why they like most of the east coast got to see this because it was traveling almost along the east coast where usually it's going just east that's yeah wild. you know what that is odd chris because I, I remember reading one time about why florida and in, in that particular in that location is one of the best places in the world to launch from and there's a couple of reasons number one you have all water to the east and the reason that most of these air, uh, spacecraft want to go to the east is is because the world is rotating in that direction right. and kind of gives it a little bit of a boost. And so uh, it wouldn't make okay. sense to go the other way. You're fighting, you're, you're going to lose momentum if you go that way. So the reason you want all that water is in case they have to uh, abort. Abort, yeah. And there's not going to be any danger of, of crashing over, you know, populated areas. So that's really interesting. because that, And that might be why we don't really see them up this way that often because they're headed east as opposed to headed north. You think so? Yeah, that's exactly it. And then that's another reason why it was also following along the coast rather than just like a perfect north trajectory because that would be putting it over land, which is a very big no-no. It's right. at least following the coastline so all of our procedures can still fall into the ocean. Interesting. Okay. And correct me if I'm wrong, the first Hooters is in Florida too as well, right? <laughs> it, it, yeah. it is. Yeah. And that it's in makes clear it. water. Yeah. yeah. Coincidence? It's, yeah, there. I don't think so. <laughs> I when you're, when you're planning out a launch schedule... <laughs> That's that's worth researching. Yes. Uh, and by the way, so, so I've got a, there's a couple of texts uh, coming in. People saying that that I saw what I saw on Friday night was the ISS. It definitely isn't. I have the ISS watch app on my phone. I know exactly what that satellite looks like because I, I watch it regularly. This was bigger and brighter than that. Uh, what I saw on Friday, which was not this SpaceX launch, and Did I you hear anything. I don't know what. No, I couldn't hear anything. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Hear it. In hindsight, maybe I did hear something. Afterburner. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, Chris, you didn't hear about any launches on Friday night about what I saw, did you? Uh, I no. can't. There were three launches. I just don't know specifically what times they were. There okay. were three separate launches. Yeah, I can't remember which projects and from what location, but I know the one from Cape Canaveral was SpaceX. Okay. I just got a great video that uh, Mr. Peanuts sent to me. Uh, he was at a wedding somewhere, and it's just a beautifully shot, like, uninterrupted video uh, where the, the, the rocket comes into... Wow! Isn't that great? Go show Where Steve that. Go yeah. show Steve um, that. I want to see that. <laughs> uh, Chris, thank you for your call. We appreciate it, sir. Thank you. All right, take care. Uh, look at that, Steve. Wow. You imagine? Oh, yeah. Look at how big that looks That's in the phenomenal. sky. Isn't that huge? Yeah. So I didn't see Jack S. And I was yeah. I was outside a lot on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What I time was, at was a charity it? Event. I wish I would have seen it. Nick, what time was it? Uh, I guess about seven thirty, seven forty-five, oh, something like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So there was wow. like on social media though. I was watching everybody. Did you know, it blow up? Well, yeah. No, no. Like yeah, it, yeah. yeah some like people, you know, some of my friends or whatever. But out in Bucks County, you know, there's always like this. That, you know, people say they see things. Right. And, right. There's been tons of you, you know, supposedly UFO sightings. So when this happened, like all my friends out there were like, what the hell is this? <laughs> we're oh under my, attack. we got to get out of here. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, when yeah. I saw that, all those, it scared me all those years ago. It kind of scared, and I looked around immediately because it went quick. It wasn't like this, which seems like it was sustained in the air for a long time. I saw it, 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 uh, that, that cone shape formed. And, <laughs> and, uh, and then... After a few seconds, it disappeared, and I started walking around to people. I'm like, did you see, see that? that? Uh-huh. Did you see that in the sky? And they're looking at me like I had three heads. Mm-hmm. And I felt like, you know, or did I see it? Do you I, keep you know, your the end is near sandwich board by the I front should, door? I should, yeah. I should, yes. Just get outside and tell everybody um, we're all going to die. <laughs> I love. I would love to, and yeah. I know you said it as well, to see an actual launch in proximity. I, I, I don't mean right under it, but, you know, across whatever the, wherever the viewing area is, especially a night launch, would be amazing. Yeah.
Yep. So, but you kind of have to be in Florida at the right time because you got to take a chunk of time. Well, yeah. Even if you plan it, uh, they can uh, you know delay the launch or scrub it or whatever, and so you can go down to Florida for a wasted trip. How long? How long are we delayed for the? um, Oh, Artemis is supposed to be tomorrow. Yeah. I saw last week that they were gonna they had rescheduled the Artemis launch for tomorrow. Uh, I don't know if that has changed again because there have been so many issues with it, Steve. I thought I read that with the pending hurricane that they're gonna push it back further. They might even. Put the they might even take it back into the uh, uh, into the giant shelter that they have. Or okay. the, that would make uh, sense. The, the assembly building, the yeah. carport. Uh, maybe the carport. No, they have uh, the assembly building. They they might have to move it all the way back there because of all the right. hurricane coming up. I don't know if you want to fold this in at this point, Preston. But the um, the space force theme, the anthem was um, oh. really. I don't know if yeah, you it was last that. week. Let's. Yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't heard it yet. I haven't yeah. listened to it. Uh, and uh, and Neil deGrasse Tyson commented on it. Space Force, <laughs> it's the Space Force. Kind of like that. Is it really? Yeah, well, oh, here we, we go. Lose it. Dude, you know what Stop this it. sounds like already? What? Uh, in the in the first Captain America, the first Avenger movie, yeah, when he's doing the promotional yes. tour, when he's going and he lifts up the the motorcycle, yeah, yeah. Marissa, see if you can find in in the first right. Captain America movie as he's as he's touring the country, you know, uh, each dollar is a bu- is a bullet in your best man's gun or something yeah, like yeah. that. All right, hang on, let me. In the mind, I can't understand the words. Can Not you? Me either. Uh, play it back. Yeah. Um, hang on. Maybe we can find find the lyrics for it. Can you back it up? Uh, I, I, I thought you were doing that. Sorry. Okay. Stop it there. When you're Ralphing in the dark. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when you're Ralphing in the dark. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Off to a good right, start. Yeah. Right. Connie knows your nuts are blue. You <laughs> can't. That. Yeah. He knows your nuts <laughs> are blue. All right, so all right, when you're ralphing in the dark, right, Connie right. knows your nuts are blue. You're ralphing in the dark. Connie knows your nuts are blue. Right. Right. In the dark. Nuts are blue. <laughs> I love this version. Yep. <laughs> Somebody writing these lyrics. <laughs> okay. I can't make it out. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> hang on. We got after Connie knows your nuts are blue. <laughs> Uh, will you? I, it's a menstrual cup. On the no, slide. I heard, heard menstrual cup in there. Oh, yeah, there. No. I'm hearing different. You what? I'm hearing will you jizz on the playground slide? Oh, oh my what? god! Wait, hear that again? Think, we can't say that though. I don't think. No, no. I think you're right. Okay. Um, so uh, I, yeah. you can't really discern what they're saying. I've heard I heard space a few times. Uh, it has a it has a very retro sound to it, don't very you think? Very much so. Yeah, like, like a, a John Philip Sousa esque. That had to have been what they were going for. Nick, yeah. I don't think those were the same uh, lyrics. I don't think so either. And I didn't nowadays. get it right. Nick, well, no, not that. Nick oh. had pulled up what were supp- were thought to be the the lyrics, but they didn't match what was being sung there. Here's the uh, here's the the Captain America thing. <laughs> can storm a beach or drive a tank, but there's still a way all of us can fight. And, well, uh, uh, yeah, like like the uh, a, a fifth of the uh, the Star Wars. Uh, what was it, Miko? Who, who did the uh, disco uh, Star Wars? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh a fifth of Beethoven fifth of, type yeah, thing, but, yeah. but with Star Wars, Star Wars theme. I, I, I something a little bit more um, orchestral, something a little bit bolder. You know, right? 
Uh, and and, and I'm, I'm not hearing that. I just don't know why they feel the need to do the traditional sound. Like, like um, all the other, like, anthems were, were written in that time. Right. And we're now in 2022 where you don't have to write something that sounds like it was written in the 30s well, or 40s. That, like, take something like an Aaron Copeland-esque, um, you know, fanfare for the common man or something that has that sort of um, impact to it. Ty, uh, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson makes an interesting point, Preston. Okay, you want to uh, yeah. a piece of audio from him. Uh, right there. Yeah, here we go. That's the first I've heard it. It sounds very 1950s, you know, mm -hmm. but, yeah. <laughs> but I, I kind of like it. And, I, and, and what's funny or curious is that the other branches of the armed forces, the songs tend to be songs that you would march to. You know, you've let urge to get up and march. But Space Force... You want to be able to feel like you want to launch something. And I didn't feel launchy with wow. those lyrics <laughs> or with the with the rhythms, but maybe if you watch a rocket launch while you hear it, that'll reset how we think about the mood we should attain as we listen. That's which what one, I, yeah. Of, of the other themes uh, from the military, which ones do you guys, there's Anchors Away for yeah. the Navy. There's, which uh, I love. Um, uh, the Wild Blue Yonder, off we go into the Wild Blue Yonder for the uh, the Air Force, and you have the Halls of Montezuma for oh. the, uh, I love that That's one. That's great. The, the Marine Corps. I'll do respect to the other. <laughs> and then the Army is, what is the Army's uh, theme? Rock Me Amadeus. Rock Me Amadeus. <laughs> I don't Falco? <laughs> Now, why would they have chosen that? It's so crazy. It doesn't make any sense. What is the Army's theme? I don't know why I, I can't <sighs> think of it. I know all the, the other all ones. you can be in the Army. I know that's a commercial from back in the day. Right, but... I'm having um, a brain fart on this. Yeah. You know what? I wonder, does it happen, Preston, that you associate because of the association is what informs your decision to like it or not? Uh, or, you know, which came first, the chicken or the egg here in this situation? Do you like it because of the association or would you have liked it if it was played for you before you knew it was attached. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, oh, as the Kazons go rolling along. Ah, is that okay? That's great. Mm -hmm. so again, over that's hill, over dale, dale, we will in the dusty oh, trail okay. as yeah. the Kazons go rolling along. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, high, it. Hi, hi, he in the, 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 the dillery. The Phyllis Dillery. <laughs> I don't know why I would Phyllis Dillery. Dillery. That's what I would sing when I was a kid because I didn't know the words. And, and but you knew Phyllis Dillery. <laughs> I knew Phyllis. <laughs> Well, because it's Scooby Doo. <laughs> Every young boy at that time loved Phyllis Diller. <laughs> Casey, last night in the uh, Phillies game, they lost in extra innings, and uh, Andrew Dilly Bellotti got the, got the loss. Oh, no. <laughs> so I can't see Andrew Bellotti's name without thinking Dilly Bellotti every time. Wait a minute. Did I, was I singing the wrong song? Because isn't, isn't that the... Uh, the Army goes... I think you're but, right. But I think the but the, the Marine Corps is... Um, From the halls of, of Montezuma to, to the shores of Tripoli. Something the Phyllis Diller <laughs> at the Phyllis Dillery. Everybody, the United States Marines over there. Rock me, Amadeus. <laughs> They should all use America F. Yeah, as they're the, all yeah. really good though. I do. I do like. I like uh, Anchors Away. That's a great song. And uh, Wild Blue Yonder is a cool one as well. Um, hang on a second. Let me go to. <laughs> let me go to Julie. Hi, Julie. Good morning. Good morning. What's up, Jim? It Jill? reminds me of this song from uh, A League of Their Own. Oh, oh the, the girls the, all American yeah. Yeah. league. Actually, it does. Um, Members yeah. of the all American, American league. Girls the cities near and far. We have Canadians, <laughs> Sweden. Irish ones, and Swedes. I said Africans and Swedes <laughs> yeah. one time. That was before Africans and Swedes. Yeah, <laughs> but I want something a little bit more current sounding for this one. You, you know what I mean? Some, like, do you have any ideas? Uh, I mean, well, I was thinking something like this might work. Okay. Drop it. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. What's up, Kevin? 
Hey, that uh, Space Force, that's almost like a direct knockoff of the, the Small World from Disney. The it, music, it, it, you can play it right over. Really? Play it again. Play it again. All, All right, right hold on. on. We'll, we'll back it up. Thank you, Kevin. We'll check that out. Right. Um, here we go. Hang on a second. Wait, it, it's a small world after all. But how does the, the lead up to that? It's a world of laughter, a world of tears, is a world of hope, and a world of there's a much the the phone. It's a small world after all. No, I don't hear that. Yeah. Not here. It's a, small <laughs> it's a small world after all. It comes grooving up slow lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the, the I, I guess the members of Space Force are going to need to know that song to be able to sing it. I would imagine, yes. You know. Did you guys have a, uh, a school song? Yeah, on my oh, uh, at O'Hara we did. Uh, do you remember it? I do. Were you asked to sing it? From uh, time to time, yeah. as, as a student body, we did not have a you school didn't? song. No. Really? Mm -mm. Um, Ours was "Needle in the Damage Done." No, wow, kidding. that's, that's kind that's of a downer. Not a good school, yeah. Okay. Um, O'Hara, O'Hara, home of the red and blue. Alma mater, we salute you. Our loyalty is, is true. true. Ah. Yeah. There's always something about that, or you know. Mm -hmm. Our heart is with you, or we're not or... so sure about you. <laughs> Kathy, did uh, you guys? I'm have sure a we song? had something. High like I can, I can hear the. It was band. probably a Belinda Carlisle song. No, I can hear the band playing it at the football game. But I don't I know why I'm having a brain fart. Where'd no you idea. go to school again? Pensbury. Pensbury. Okay. And maybe Conestoga has one, but I don't. I know Bucknell did, but I don't think. I don't know. Maybe Conestoga did. They all end up borrowing, like, University of Michigan and uh, Notre Dame anyway. They do. Yeah. yeah. The band made us <laughs> do you remember? Uh, do you remember Bucknell's? No. Okay. And there is one, and I think at some point they go Ray Bucknell, which I never really liked. Ray yeah, Bucknell? Yeah, like, hooray, but uh, hooray, it takes too long, so they just... Uh, Ray Bucknell. Yeah, there's a, an apostrophe, Ray Bucknell. Okay. And doesn't Nell do the break in the song? Yeah, yeah, yeah she, she does, does. yes. <laughs> The, the Kong Kong? Right, right yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Isn't okay. that how we got on the uh, Nell kick to begin with? Because we did uh, Buck or Nell with Jay Wright one time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think we did oh a Oh, my God. Yeah. And and so we played clips from Nell. Uh huh. And then I think we played like random uh, deer sounds. I saw it on Kong Kong. Yeah, Nell. <laughs> Imagine that getting up at orientation. Yeah. I'm oh. not so sure about this, Chloe. And now we have a special guest speaker. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Jay Wright on. Look, she did that all with a possum in her mouth. <laughs> I saw Jay Wright on Friday night. He said to say hi to you all. You oh, that's good. Cool. Cool. Where did you uh, see him? I do, I do quiz at a place called um, uh, Christopher's in Wayne, and uh, our team came in fourth. Jay Wright's team. Even first. Oh, wow. of course. Yeah. Is he a regular there? No, it's, apparently his son is. Uh, and Jay walked in. It was it was funny because like I guess he had an event at, um, at Villanova earlier. It was parents' weekend, and so Jay came in like dressed to the nines. He, it was classic Jay Wright G GQ suit and all. I'm sure he irons his pajamas. <laughs> he, he looked like a million yeah. bucks. But as soon as he walked in, he just got swarmed by like Villanova students and parents and alum and stuff. It was neat. It was cool to see him. All right, that's cool. Yeah. Nice. All right, well, anyhow, uh, this whole thing got started with the, the uh, SpaceX uh, la launch that everybody saw all over the Delaware Valley. So uh, you weren't alone. It was, uh, And there's some really cool videos that yeah. of that. Yeah, amazing. All right, well, something that would be really cool is you winning $1,000. So we want to make sure that we uh, stay on time for uh, MMR's You Who Loot. We are going to take a break. We'll be back in just a second. In fact, here's more about that right now. And, and I definitely like the song. And what did I come back and tell you guys? It's solid. This I is said, real deal. My word was it's legit. Yeah. Nice. Okay, yeah. because, uh, you know, you have people who have a name from another uh, another entertainment industry or sports mm -hmm. industry, and then they want to open the door and head down another path and try something out for a little bit, and most of the times that doesn't work. 
Um, so I was uh, pleasantly surprised when I listened to it. I'm like, okay, this is this is straight up. It's the real deal. Well, it's cool. This is our seventh record, and we're almost like a 17 year overnight sensation at this point, <laughs> which which is good because I it think good. over the years, slowly but surely, people have come to realize that, like you said, this is legit. This is the real deal. Mm -hmm. If if it wasn't, uh, I wouldn't be doing this. Um, I think every band has some kind of a gimmick when they start, whether it's Slipknot wears masks or yeah. Kiss has makeup or all these different things. Bottom line is. Either it's good music or it's not. And it doesn't matter who's in the band or what the story is. Yeah. Either it's good or it's bad. And after all these years, people are finally going, holy smokes, Fozzie is legit. They make a judgment just because I'm in the band. Yeah. I think sometimes we have to work twice as hard to get people's respect because of that. We don't mind. Yeah. When I was 13 years old, I decided I wanted to be in a rock band and I wanted to be a wrestler. And people laughed me out of the building. I remember I went to church yeah. and told people, and people laughed me out of the church. <laughs> Here I am all these years later doing both. I really don't care if people have a judgment about what I do or what I don't do. All I know is that this is good and I know that people are embracing it. Right. If you have a passion and a desire and a talent to do more than one thing, especially in this day and age, it's okay, and if people don't have a have an issue with that, Paul Stanley said in this documentary that I watched, I probably told you guys this you did, yeah. about the book, the only people that tell you you can't do something are the ones that have failed. I'm not going to tell you you can't do it because I did it. You can do it. And when Paul said that, I embraced that concept and went for it wholeheartedly, and here we are right now talking about this stuff, and it's a great feeling. Well, I think in, in a way also you have the benefit of you, you had another... You, not, I'm not going to say a safety net, but you had another thing running that allowed you to say to just be tenacious and that you're, okay, you don't dig it now. We're, we're going to keep doing it. We're not yeah. going to stop. And then, as you said, through attrition, people started to come on board. And this, as you described, Judas is the game changer. So is your time uh, being on the mic and doing what you did in, in the ring helped you out with being able to talk Absolutely. to the audience? Absolutely. And, okay. I, 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 when I first started wrestling when I was 19, I wanted to be the ultimate rock and roll frontman in, 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 in the wrestling ring. Paul Stanley, Freddie yeah. Mercury, you know, Bruce Dickinson. I wanted to be like the front man, the party host. And so I did that when I first started because I wasn't the biggest guy, but I knew I could have the biggest personality and the biggest charisma. Mm -hmm. So when we started Fozzie, um, I just took those same qualities that I was using as Y2J that I stole from great front men, like I mentioned, and then took it back into Fozzie. So it's very much uh, symbiotic. That's a big word for a Canadian. <laughs> but it all depends on connecting with the audience, whether it's wrestling or music. You need to connect with the crowd and let them know that you don't take yourself seriously. You take the music seriously. You have to have a good time. And when we go do these festivals, there's not a lot of bands that do that. It's very aggro. It's very mosh pitting and stuff. And that's fine. But for us, just drink some beer and chant Fozzie and show your boobs, whether you're a girl or a guy. We don't care. And that's when you get the connection. Yeah. Let's like, Especially in this day and age with all the crap that's going on in the world, come to a Fozzie show, leave the BS at the door, and just have a good time, man. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Well, that's, you know? that's it. And, and we've said this, at least the, the very nature of our show is that if, you know, uh, over the years, you've we've heard other shows where it seems like they're pissed off all the time. Why, why, why would I want to listen to a show or go to a show where I think they're, yeah. they're not enjoying what they're doing? It's okay to smile and laugh. Yeah. I think sometimes the, the word fun and rock and roll gets lost in the translation. Those are always my favorite bands where you can go and just have a good time, man. That's what it's all about. And um, it's, it's kind of a lost art. And it's something that we take great pride in. We have a reputation for being that way is, is if you come to one of our shows, you're just going to leave with a smile on your face and that's okay. Yeah. It doesn't always have to yeah. be growling and, and angst and, and, and anger. You know, go to a, a go to a, a, a Lamb of God show if you want to do that, and that's fine. But for yeah. us, we'd rather have some fun. Uh, I know with all that going on, let's not take our eye off the ball here, folks. There's a new Miss America. In yeah. Canada, yeah. <laughs> uh, they had uh, in, in Atlantic City, obviously, is where the pageant takes place. So they had taken it away for like a couple of years, right? And then they brought it back. I, I just don't hear about it anymore. Guys, I used to. afterwards. We used to watch it. It, it was, was a big deal. It was a thing years ago, would, yeah. it was massive. Yeah. And it's just now, I think... Um, I think internet porn took care of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we have a couple of clips from it. We have, uh, well, do you want to hear the winner? Or Yeah, let's hear the winner first. All right. right. Miss North Dakota. Your new Miss America is Miss North Dakota. <laughs> so Miss North Dakota. Miss North Dakota uh, took it. Attractive young lady, as you would imagine. Wants to be the uh, governor. Yes, eventually. Okay. That's her aspiration. Yep, that is but correct. But the highlight <laughs> for the evening was uh, the town portion, especially Miss Louisiana. All right, here we go. Lucky Lucy, are you ready? Yes. 
Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. I'm ready to talk to her. And I cannot see your listening. What was that? I said I can't see your listening. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Sound good, really. You betcha, it sure does sound good, doesn't it, to be here in front of all these nice people? <laughs> it's a drink culture. What was that? It's a drink culture. What was that? It's a drink culture. <laughs> 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 she just gives up. God damn it, I said it's a dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting mad at herself. <laughs> I suck! <laughs> slams slams the dummy on God the ground. Freaking thing. <laughs> <laughs> to be here in front of all these fine people and mid-level celebrities is such a thrill. What are we going to do? We're going to entertain you. What's that? We're going to entertain you. What's that? We're going to entertain the people! What I said is, if you just listen for an effing second, we're going to entertain the people. She's gorgeous, though. She's stunning. Yeah, We're looking yeah. at, a, oh, at a still yeah. shot of her. She's with a Miss her, America contestant. Yeah, yeah, with her two uh, ventriloquist dummies. <laughs> and the dummies. Oh, we haven't even heard the clip yet. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> you good people ready? Lucky Lucy, are you ready? Yes. Hit it. All right, I'll let it. I'll let it play. Hang on a second. I wanna ride on the plains of the desert, outless of the great divide. I wanna hear the coyotes sing as the sun sets in the west. I wanna be. Well, honestly, what, what, where is this? Where does this fly? I think if, if you if you come in before someone's receiving a lethal injection, it's like. You might have it. Uh, before you get the shot, we have a ventriloquist actually. <laughs> and they're going to do it. Give me the shot. <laughs> give me the shot. <laughs> All right. We haven't even gotten to the yodeling part right. yet. Hang on. Oh, Hang. There's yodeling? Yeah, yeah there's yodeling. Apparently yeah. there's yodeling. All right. Here. At that very moment, half the judges were booking flights to Naples, Florida. <laughs> right. Wow, the look at how hot she is. Super we're hot. At that uh, video footage of her now. She's, uh, wow, she's a stunner. And that's Miss Who? That is Miss Louisiana. Miss Louisiana. Okay. Nick had sent me some information about this guy. His name was Xavier uh, at an, uh, Atencio. And he invented Leopold the FBI cat? No, he did not. <laughs> Uh, he was the Disney Imagineer oh. who helped bring to life iconic theme park attractions such as Pirates of the Caribbean and the Haunted Mansion. And he passed away just this last Sunday, and he was 98 years old. So when I was a kid, um, uh, for a brief period when I was in third grade, which would have put me, I would have been about 17, uh, <laughs> the, um, we went out to, you know, to live in uh, California for almost a full year. And um, going to Disneyland, the Disneyland, there was no Disney World at that time. Uh, those attractions were, you as a kid, you might as well have been transported to another universe. You couldn't it was believe it. was just mind boggling. Mm -hmm. And they, they, you know, they just actually sort of um, re tinkered uh, Pirates of the Caribbean because of a. Uh, PC questions, but it's still essentially the same ride there. He also wrote the lyrics to other to their memorable songs, Yo Ho, 
A Pirate's Life. He, oh. he wrote that. Did he write It's a Small World? No, that's from no, a, yeah. he didn't. He wrote, but he wrote uh, Grim Grinning Ghost uh, that they sing on the Haunted Mansion. Yeah, for yeah. As well. uh, in the mid 1960s, uh, Atencio's career uh, changed course, and Walt Disney called him into his office and asked him to join the Imagineering Unit that created theme park attractions. He said, I went over there reluctantly because I didn't know what I was getting into and nobody there knew what I was supposed to do either. About a month later, I got a phone call from Walt. He told me, I want you to do the script for the Pirates of the Caribbean. This is a great opportunity, and if you don't do it, you're fired. Uh, and he said he had never written a script before the Pirates assignment. Uh, Pirates was the last ride that Walt Disney would directly supervise. Disney died uh, December in 1966, just three months before the attraction. It never really opened. He died before it opened. It's amazing. But uh, Atencio helped him to experience it in a way. He said, we mocked it up on a soundstage in full size, and we pushed Walt through it. We rigged up a chart. Uh, what I'm sorry. am I looking at here? We rigged up a cart that moved about the same pace. I can't see. The boat would, and we moved him through. This hurts my back substantially and we had the auctioneer why are you doing this to me and we had the auctioneer up here and he said what do you offer this buxom wench and then on the other side a pirate yells six bottles of rum etc etc he said but it was hard to hear and i said i'm sorry walt you can't hear the stuff too clearly and he said if you go to a cocktail party you tune in on one conversation and then you tune in on that one every time they come through they'll see something new and i thought why the heck didn't i think of that that is Xavier Atencio. Oh, yeah. oh, a pirate's life for me. So he wrote this. We kindle and char in flame and ignite. Drink up, me hearty show ho. We burn up the city. We're really a fright. Drink up, me hearty show ho. We burn up the city. Yeah, we burn up the city and rape the people and kill everyone who won't come along. <laughs> we slit their throats and throw them overboard and turn them into shark bait. Yeah, exactly. Me hearty show ho. Escape the children and make them slaves. <laughs> the city, we're really a fright. Drink up, me hearty show ho. Because of syphilis. <laughs> the robot, you know, with the mouth. <laughs> and we're all half crazy because of syphilis. <laughs> but you're right. They burned down the town. Burned down the town and killed the animals uh, and sexually okay. abused the women. <laughs> uh, pirate's life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's the how the salty uh, old sea. Mm -hmm. I think that's how the first movie ends with Johnny Depp saying, "Drink up, me hearties, yo ho." Oh, really? I think that's the last line Drink of the movie. Drink up, me hearties, yo ho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's doing that freaking Jack Sparrow impression. Uh, <laughs> no, he needs he needs to be just Johnny yeah, Depp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah, be... yeah, yeah. They come into town and rock around. <laughs> Is it the Viper Room? Huh. <laughs> I noticed that it's very hard to swat a fly. Oh. They move so fast. Well, I have it kind of down to a science. <laughs> I have a theory, too. What is yours? You, uh, it, in, in, in many ways, it's like sex. You uh, come down the back <laughs> from, uh, from b behind the eyesight doesn't go all the way back to the back. Okay. So that's how I come in for the SWAT. My theory is, if so if you're just sitting there and one, like, lands on your leg or something like you that. You ain't going to win. Mm -hmm. You don't move. No, no, right. I've, I've, I have a way to do it. I slowly will bring my hand into position, and then I will wait, and I will watch the fly. And once the fly starts doing that thing with its front two little hands, yeah. if it starts rubbing them together, because at first it'll notice your hand, it'll stop. That's right. when it gets all greedy. Freeze and won't move. Yeah. And then when it starts going about its business, it is now not necessarily paying attention to your hand anymore, and then, bam! Nail them. I'm, I'm a fly hater, and I actually keep we keep a, a scoreboard at my house for dead flies. <laughs> That's cool. Everybody's name is on there. I notice there's a fly hater, too. <laughs> and uh, and if you get, you get a hatch you who loot. Now, listen up. Here's your keyword. The word is advantage. All right, I'll spell it for you. A-D-V-A-N-T. A G E advantage A D V A N T A G E and you have until 15 minutes after the hour to answer that. Three ways for you to do it. You can text it the special contest short code number, which is four five nine one one. You can also enter it at the MMR app or at WMMR.com. And one random entry wins a thousand bucks. 
in our company-wide contest. Each winner gets a call from Beasley. Make sure that you answer your phone. Contest rules are available at WMMR.com. And it's brought to you by Horizon Services. So, again, I'll repeat it. Advantage. Good luck to you. Send that in right now. While you're doing that, let's take a look at traffic, see what's happening. Kathy, what you got for us this morning? Stop traffic on the Vine westbound 95 to the Schuylkill Expressway. That was all because of the accident on the Schuylkill. So, westbound, you are jammed from Vare Avenue through to Girard. Good news is the accident is now out of there. Uh, westbound also slowing from City to Belmont eastbound side, slowing from 202 into Gulf Mills, and then from City to Spring Garden. A uh, 30 bypass eastbound at 113. There's an accident blocking the right lane. Blue Route northbound. We have volume building from Baltimore Pike to the media bypass. Same on the southbound side. 95 southbound jams from Cotman through to the Vine. 55 northbound. Heavy depth fur to the 42 freeway. And then on 42 north, expect delays the Black Horse Pike to Creek Road. This traffic report brought to you by Mattress Warehouse of Philadelphia at Mattress Warehouse. It's the last chance to get savings on sleep solutions. Take up to half off. Get free no hassle delivery and setup and get 0% interest interest financing visit mattress warehouse and that's your traffic on 93.3 wmmr all right thanks guys so i would just like to point out uh, one of mmr's big friggin deals it's happening this week in fact it starts today this one i think you're gonna love because it is two tickets to bates motel oh. and haunted attractions and glenn mills for just 50 dollars. so that's two tickets for 50 bucks that is a hell of a bargain i, I love that place it just thunders they they i mean you know everything there is top notch number one haunted attraction in america for half price so uh you can they're valid for any night of the week by the way the combo passes so uh you can do this now at WMMR.com and use the keyword deal. And that is while supplies last. So that might go quickly. Just a heads up on taking advantage of that right now. All right, let's do the Bizarre Five. Now, bizarre. WMMR presents bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre, bizarre Five. Brought to you this morning by Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, focused on being the best at one thing and getting it right every time. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers coming soon to Fairless Hills in the Court of Oxford Valley. One love. All right, we're going to start with a local story in the Bizarre File and one that has a good ending to it. A Delaware County man is crediting the Phillies dollar dog night promotion with leading him to a cancer diagnosis that ultimately saved his life. How about oh. that? Phillies fan Bill Finn discovered that he had stage 4 diffuse large B-cell lymphoma and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma that began in white blood cells. Last September, he went to a Phillies game during Dollar Dog Night with the intention of breaking his own personal record for hot dogs eaten. The next day, he woke up with a stomach ache that he thought was the result of his overindulgence, but the pain lasted more than a week. He visited a doctor at the urging of his wife, Heather, which led to a series of visits over the next month before he was diagnosed with cancer. That began a seven-month period of receiving aggressive radiation and chemotherapy, which began only days after the birth of his son, Riker. One year later, the Phillies invited Finn back to their ballpark, and he got a chance to go on the field and meet Charlie Manuel. This oh. was just this past week. Oh, that's cool. And uh, they, the fans are using uh, Bill's story as a means of encouraging people not to ignore seemingly normal health symptoms. But I thought that was pretty cool that uh, the there was a tie into Dollar Dog. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. An animal sanctuary in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the DRC, is facing demands for ransom money after kidnappers abducted three of its baby chimpanzees. Frank Chantereau, uh, the founder of the sanctuary, said this is the first time in the world that baby apes were kidnapped for ransom. Uh, his sanctuary called Young Animals Confiscated in the Kata uh, Katanga uh, is abbreviated, by the way. Uh, well, it's anyhow, it's close to the border between the DRC and Zambia. All right. Uh, a key route from Congo to South Africa uh, through which apes are smuggled to the rest of the world. So kidnappers broke into the sanctuary around 3 a.m. They took away three of the five baby chimpanzees mm. that he had rescued so far this year. Uh, their names are Caesar, Hussein, and Monga. Uh, he later found uh, the other two hiding in a kitchen. Uh, an hour after the break-in, his wife received three messages and a video of the abducted chimps from the kidnappers. I'm wearing a blindfold, but I can hear boats outside. Boat He's, horns. He said they told us that they... <laughs> They had planned to kidnap my children because they were supposed to come here on vacation, but they didn't come, so the kidnappers took these three babies hostage and demanded a large amount of ransom from us. I think we're in a basement because I hear them coming downstairs when they're coming to feed us. Uh, the kidnappers claimed to One have... One of the men speaks with a Dutch accent. Have dro 
They claim to have drugged the and chips. They're speaking something that sounds like Farsi, but I'm not sure. And threatened to hurt them. <laughs> All very helpful. Yes. And any bit of information yeah. will help. Yeah. Uh, so anyhow, they they claim. I'm hearing what sounds like like a limp. One of them probably has a bum leg. The, the cadence is irregular. The kidnappers claim to have drugged the chimps and threatened to hurt them if uh, Chantereau didn't pay the ransom. Uh, he said, obviously, it's impossible for us to pay the ransom. He said, uh, not only do we not have the money, but you need to understand that if we go their way, they could very well do it again in two months. And we would also have no guarantee they would return the baby to I us. I want you to return my baby chimps. I have a special set of skills <laughs> that makes people like me bad for monkey-stealing pricks like you. Uh, the authorities are still investigating and trying to identify the kidnappers. I, I, you, that, honestly, that is a, that's a, that's a serious thing. Because the, if they see it as a revenue source, that could be really bad. Here's another uh, story that kind of ties into the first one that I had. Uh, an OnlyFans customer's life was saved by one of the platform's top content producers. Belle Grace is in the 0.1% of top creators on OnlyFans, and she helped in this particular case. Um, it was getting hot and heavy on camera when Belle noticed that uh, the man on the chat with her had one testicle bigger than the other. Wow, and it was and it happened to be hot dog night as well, Preston. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and apparently, she had a uh, she had a healthcare career before she got into OnlyFans. Ah. So she urged the man to go and get it checked out, and doctors revealed that he had an aggressive form of testicular cancer, which was thankfully caught in the nick of time. That's amazing. Yep. He said, I honestly, I said, honestly, I do think you should get it checked out, she said. And it took me about four or five weeks to actually convince him. Uh, she said he did turn around and say, look, I'm really embarrassed about it. I don't actually want to go. Honestly, I just go. And I said, I just go and you'll be fine. Just get that uh, peace of mind and everything's okay. My OnlyFans account, who I pleasure to myself every week, suggests that I have this checked out. Uh, the man himself is understandably incredibly grateful for Bell's intervention and said, I can't thank Bell enough for encouraging me to make the doctor's appointment. I honestly didn't think that anything was wrong. Well, maybe that's the next frontier in, in telecare, Preston, an OnlyFans account. Maybe so. All right, and then finally, uh, we'll end with this story. A cannibal from Michigan pleaded guilty to killing and eating part of a man named Kevin Bacon. Wait, what? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, if you're going to eat somebody. After uh, meeting him on a dating app three years ago. We've, we've talked about this before. But Mark Latunsky copped Thursday to murdering and mutilating the 25-year-old hairdresser with whom he lured to his home in December Bacon. of 2019. Latunsky admitted to stabbing bacon in the back, then removing parts of his body before taking him to the kitchen and chowing down on them. Bacon! Bacon! Where's the bacon? I smell bacon! 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 Gotta be bacon! Only one thing smells like bacon! That's bacon! Uh, Latunsky reportedly told cops that he cut off bacon's testicles oh. and ate them after meeting him on Grinder. After the killing, Bacon's corpse was found hanging from the rafters of Latunsky's basement with a rope tied around his ankles, his throat slit, and body parts removed. Oh, my God. That sounds like Ed Gein. Yeah. Absolutely. Latunsky uh, had previously pleaded not guilty with an insanity defense, and the dramatic reversal came less than a month before his trial was scheduled to begin on October 18th. The guilty plea came against the recommendations of Latunsky's attorney, who said that he has a history of mental illness. What are you, crazy? Uh, Bacon's family first grew nervous <laughs> when he failed to show up uh, to breakfast on Christmas Eve 2019. Investigators later found his car in a Dollar General parking uh, parking lot and then tracked him to Latunsky's house. So that's messed oh, up, man. It's horrible. And we'll end there. That's all I have in the bizarre yeah. I got some more really good stories. We'll get to those a little bit later on uh, this morning. You do have about three minutes or so left. Uh, to enter a YooHoo loot word for today, that word is advantage, A D V A N T A G E. So make sure you don't miss your opportunity. Just take some time right now to enter that. You got, like I said, you got about three minutes. Advantage is the word. It could win you a thousand dollars. It's that simple. So go for it. Uh, reminder as well: the latest Daily Rush video is up and running. Casey's Big Adventure Day Three. I watched it last night. Yes. I loved it because uh, a lot of it is uh, them playing carpool karaoke with us, <laughs> which was so much fun. It was fun. great. Yeah? Oh, it, good. It was excellent, Case. You got to see the video. All right, I'll watch it. It's a it. blast. Uh, you can be the first to see the newest Daily Rush by subscribing to our YouTube channel, sponsored by Xfinity's Gig Speed Internet. You can learn more at Xfinity.com. But check out the video now on PrestonandSteve.com or at uh, our uh, YouTube account. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't forget Dane Cook joining us this morning. We'll be right back. Preston and Steve 
on 93.3 WMMR. Hey, it's Casey Boyd. Now, what have Jackie Bam Bam and I been up to on the road? Well, you can see it all on our gallery updates at WMMR.com because shenanigans are meant to be shared. Now, not necessarily paying attention to your hand anymore and then, bam! Nail them. I'm, I'm a fly hater, and I actually keep we keep a, a scoreboard at my house for dead flies. <laughs> That's cool. Everybody's name is on there. I notice there's a fly hater too. <laughs> and uh, and if you get you get them, you get a hash mark for every one that you get. He actually keeps score. I should have done a prize at the end of the summer, but I never got around to doing that. But anyhow, so here's the deal. This question, why do they move so fast, uh, flies, was uh, put to the BBC World Service crowd science team. And the answer is that compared to us, Basically, uh, they see things that uh, every, they see things essentially what we see in slow motion. So um, they see the world this moving. This guy's wearing a bucket hat. <laughs> Much slower. <laughs> the speed of time differs depending on your species. This happens because animals see the world around them like a continuous video. But in reality, they piece together images sent from the eyes to the brain in distinct flashes a set number of times per second. And I'll explain that. So humans average 60 flashes per second and flies 250. The speed at which those images are produced by the brain is called the flicker fusion rate. Flicker fusion rate. Yes. Flicker! And there's, it's weird how they were able to determine this. So in general, the smaller Did the species... Did they capture a fly and interrogate him? The faster its critical flicker... They put a, a light in front of him. Uh, please, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm so thirsty. <laughs> he starts smacking him around. No. Oh, no, please. Come on. I'm, just, I'm just a fly. In general, uh, the smaller the species, the faster its critical flicker fusion rate is, and flies in particular. Critical flicker fusion rate. Yeah, so Professor Roger Hardy from the University of Cambridge investigates how flies' eyes work. and has It's a, actually very interesting when you stop and consider it. And uh, has an experiment to determine their flicker fusion rate. So it's simply how fast... A light has to be turning on and off. That's the flicker. Right. Before it's perceived or seen as just a continuous light. So a, like a flashing strobe light. Okay? Right. So, so even and you can tell when it's going off and on. But at some point, you can't, even though it is going off and on. Right. right. So, that's a, so what they did is they insert tiny glass electrodes into the living light-sensitive cells of their eyes... Of a fly's yeah. eyes. Photoreceptors. How do they do that? Before flashing LED lights at faster and faster speeds. Each flash of the LED produces a tiny electrical I current. I assume ladybugs come in in nurse outfits. In the photoreceptors. That'd be hot. <laughs> hey, hey, up here, buddy. Up here. Here's where the 10,000 eyes are. <laughs> Each flash of the LED produces a tiny electrical current into the photoreceptors that a computer can graph onto a screen. Huh. Tests reveal the fastest fly record distinct responses to flickering up to 400 times per second. Yeah, so, but I'm, I'm amazed at, at modern science and the fact that they can actually do, take like, something that tiny like that and actually... How do they get them to sit still to put those things in their eyes? The chair is very comfortable. Yeah, it's, it's comfortable. They get a little foot well, this masseuse. Is good. What is this? Oh, my God. Look at this. The feet come up. And they have them uh, relax. Somebody said that's why electricity cycles at 60 hertz per second, or HZ. Is that hertz per second? It's just hertz. Oh, 60 hertz? It hurts. God, would you stop it already? We're morons. All right. I have a list of, uh, of things from uh, various magazines of suggestions of what to do. Ooh. <laughs> is this so is activities. This local or, or anywhere? No, this is just anywhere. Okay. Uh, uh, but no, these are stupid. A pumpkin spice latte date. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Treat your bestie to a PSL. Bestie. Wait, what's a, a PS? A pumpkin spice latte. Okay. I know. And yes, spend, uh, I just wanted to let you know that your list stinks. Uh, <laughs> how about dinner and a fall-themed movie? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. All right, what's Throw a, that list out. What's how about buy some movie? orange crayons and rub it on a piece of paper? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, how about wait for, them to, hey, wait for them to come in and, and relax the straps on your hands? Uh, bake an apple pie together. Mm. Yes. Okay. What if you're what not you're, together? What, what if you're alone? How about this? Watch a football game. <laughs> <laughs> These are just ridiculous. These are like out of, you know, like Allure magazine yeah. or, uh -huh. you know. Yeah, right. Or how about look out the window at your neighbor's house? <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God. Like, somebody actually got paid to do that. Th they needed an extra page in the right. magazine. Right. Here's a good fall activity Walk to the end you. of your driveway, turn around and go back. <laughs> From the mind of, uh, of Preston Elliott, do one of the uh, the train rides that are available in our okay. areas. Okay. 
that would be cool, right? Yeah. They, There's one out of New Hope. Um, Sept is all over the place. What? What is it? Sept is all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is so scenic. <laughs> Just that chest hey, man, is. I'm sorry I pissed on you. Yeah, especially the houses that live right next to the train yeah. tracks. Those it, are always lovely. Uh, Strasburg is the one you're thinking Strasburg, of. Strasburg, yeah. Right, is that the, that's the best in the area, right? That's, they have the ghost train. It's like the old-style locomotive. Is that... That's, that's, that's no. out by uh, Lancaster. And okay. didn't we have yeah. a, a Not Your Average Listener? Was she from? She was yeah. an engineer. Yeah. Yeah. An engineer, yeah. For them, yeah. That was cool. And that, that, was one, really that cool. one goes for about 40 minutes? I from what so. I understand? Something like that, yeah. yeah. 40, 45 minutes? Most okay. of them are like a half, you know, anywhere from like 40 minutes to an hour. That's still cool. But yeah. Case, along the lines of what you were saying, and if you're in Jersey, New Jersey Transit. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Yeah. I'm hey, sorry. It, <laughs> Listen, it's there? not exactly the same experience, but the, the buses are always a blast. <laughs> <laughs> this also says, uh, have a fall photo shoot. Oh, I'm doing that. <laughs> what? what? Who put this together? Sling know. Blade? Uh, We're doing a family photo shoot. I got some great ideas for Otto. No, <laughs> don't make fun of that one. Go outside looking, up, looking out there at the uh, raccoons out in the field. Uh, mm-hmm. So you're doing a fall fa- a photo shoot? Yeah, we're doing it, Steve, on Forbidden Drive. Yes, it'll be. Yeah, I'd love to. Forbidden that's, Drive is close to me. Huh? Actually, that's a good idea. Can you? Do you want to bring us hot chocolate in the morning? I will absolutely. Uh, spice latte. SP. What is it? Uh, SPL. Uh, PSL. SPL. Uh, PSL. Look, I brought some Pumpkin. SPLs. SPL. D- Look, I brought some silent but deadly. Yeah. Pumpkin spice latte. I brought uh, some SPLs. <laughs> what did I say? Silent no. but deadly. Oh, yeah. SPDs. DVDA. It's DVDA. I brought some DVDAs, everybody. <laughs> PSLs is and lube. And just replaced DSL with, with is something penis. very different. <laughs> yeah. What? All right, hang on. Just say I, the letters. The letters aren't profane. No, no, but I'm just saying. You well, you know what DSL, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But a PSL is. D-sucking just, lips. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So now you're P-sucking. Oh, okay. All right. Thank <laughs> you. Guys. We used to say DSB, deadly sperm buildup. <laughs> yeah, and got laid in a year. Oh. Yeah. I have DSB. Here. Where's that taking place? My pupils are right. <laughs> <laughs> We are all. This is. We are. This is. This is it. We're These are full activities. We are off the rails. I just want to know when yes, you're I'm doing. Yes, I'm interested in where the DSL is taking place. <laughs> I believe I qualify. <laughs> I, I definitely qualify. Romano. R O M A N O. That was my nickname, by the way. What? Are you what? kidding? Shut DSL? Up. DSL. My girlfriends would call me that. Yes. Wow. <laughs> How <laughs> ironic. <laughs> That you is. know I wasn't actually using I know. That, That's the definition yeah. of irony. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It does, yeah. That's like, that's, it's talking about Sling Bay. It's like nicknaming him the brain. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, genius. DSL. Uh-huh. It's funny. Wow, we still find things out about each other after all these years. <laughs> The Warner Brothers uh, movie A Star is Born remake is pushing its release to May 18th, 2018 from September 28th through 2018. Why is that? You know what? They don't really give a reason why, but they're moving it up. This Uh, is Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga? Yeah, exactly. Cooper plays Jackson Maine, who discovers a talented unknown named Allie, that's Lady Gaga, uh, her eventual fame puts a strain on their romance, and previous versions include the 1937 film starring Frederick Mark and Janet Gaynor. And the one with James Mason, where I played Norman Maine. Yeah, in 1954. Judy Garland's Esther Blodgett. Yes, James Mason and Judy Garland. It was the first time it was a musical version, and that was the first time. It was a musical? The original was not. Oh, okay. Like, they did, they sang... They sang. But, there were songs sung. But did they sing... Often. Did they sing dialogue to each other, or was it just songs uh, were in it? Uh, there were songs performed. Okay. Yes. Thank right. you, Mr. Mason. Uh, and have some Thunderbirds. Yeah, thank you. When yeah. friends drop by unexpectedly, I break out the Thunderbird and beef jerky. <laughs> beef jerky? Absolutely. Okay. And everyone leaves with a small Tupperware container full of taco dip. <laughs> oh. That's how we roll at the Mason house. <laughs> <laughs> Do we still have the Thunderbird? Uh, see if you can find that audio. Look up James Mason and Thunderbird, yeah. which was basically Thunderbird <laughs> is like the malt liquor right. that you'll find, you know, discarded bottles of in uh, alleyways. In alleyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, oh, here it is. Yes. I like the unusual flavor of Thunderbird wine. <laughs> it's an exceptionally good drink for every occasion. Thunderbird has an unusual flavor all its own. An unusual flavor. <laughs> Well, I imagine perhaps a sloth seminal fluid to taste like. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's unusual for sure, as I'm only guessing, having not ever gone down on a sloth. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> unusual oh for sure. 
Oh my god, I'm wheezing like crazy. <laughs> Not quite like anything I've ever tasted. <laughs> Actually, physically <clears throat> sticks in my teeth. <laughs> which you don't find in most liquids. <laughs> I suggest that you try Thunderbird. It's really delightful. Best way to get rid of unwanted friends. This is peak, peak lazy. Um, Walmart has revealed it is testing a service in Silicon Valley that delivers groceries straight into customers' refrigerators. They'll pack your fridge for you? Yep. <laughs> They'll pack your ass, breast. <laughs> you moving? Bend over and I'll pack your All ass. All right, is this because, like, so... Help you pack your ass. <laughs> Amazon, you have Amazon, it was like pantry or whatever, and then Amazon Fresh, where they deliver it to your, your How about doorstep. Am Amazon Rectum, where they mm. actually feed you the food and then push it through your... Oh, dear God. Yeah. So the problem we have with the Amazon Fresh isn't really anything except for the fact that... Um, <laughs> Uh, they're, when they pack the frozen food and the, um, uh, the perishable foods, they have ice packs to keep yeah. it like fresh. Now we have like, like 70, you don't, you don't have to we keep have them. 70 ice packs. You don't have to keep them. <laughs> right? You, you can know what? actually throw some of them out if, if you, you can, want. If you can, drop them off at uh, retirement homes. They love to play with them. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you is, so you feel obligated to keep them all? Well, all right. So they they did come in handy for the shore this past summer. I keep we, a couple we, of them. Yeah, we we kept yeah. um, you know a whole bunch in the freezer. So when we would take a cooler down to the beach or whatever. But uh, can't you return them? I, I guess you no, could. It's just, it's just plastic right, with water on. in it. Oh, all right. It's oh, wait, not... By the way, what is is it just plastic with no, water in it? Because it's... those things stay frozen for days. Well, yeah. Poke one open. Drain it out. Drink it. Drink it. Drink uh, it. No, thanks. No, and then, yeah. no, 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 it's, no, I'm saying if you want to get rid of them, just to, and then throw it in the recycling. Is well, it my point is airline think... employee semen? Is that what it is? Yeah. I don't okay. think it's just water. I will bet you. Oh. What? That would be a great mm. idea. Oh, wait, okay. I will bet you. Oh. A shopping spree? Oh. That it is more than just water. What do you mean, no? Make you... it more interesting. Than well, what, the, what does... I want your ripped shirt. Yeah, complete, oh, okay. complete the you rip on your shirt. Back. Rip oh, it all the way down. Let me rip right the now. rest of your shirt. Yeah. And you got a bat. We, we <laughs> now rip it below <laughs> knocker level. <laughs> you have to puncture them first, right? You can't no. just throw them away full. Yeah. Yeah. Is that too much effort? <laughs> Did you say yo? Uh, or did you say no? I said yeah. Yeah. Yo. Okay. I said yeah. yo, buddy. Yeah, yo. Anyway, um, yo. yes, my we, we started uh, hanging on to a few of those as well, and then what am I doing? And I just started throwing them away. So. <laughs> I'm done with the coat I wanted to make out of these. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on. What? What? We, we may uh, pass along, and the weekend is over, so... I'm happy to notice these things. Cross an empty field down a dark alleyway from his backyard sitting in the jacuzzi. <laughs> It's the noticer. You never you do notice. You never stop noticing. You never know. That's where I saw the thing in the sky on uh, some Friday and I was sitting in the hot tub. You notice like a mofo. I do. Uh, I notice this. Today is uh, the second National Pancake Day of the year. Th thank you for clarifying mm. that there are multiple pancake days because uh, yes. it always seemed weird. Every time we turned around, it was National Pancake Day. Right. <laughs> so today is National Pancake Day. What I don't remember is which one. This is the Gregorian calendar. Well, which one is the one that yielded us uh, the nickname for uh, Pancake? Uh -huh. Pierre's producer... Um, I'm thinking this one. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Are you feeling this one? Or I thought you... it was... I, I remember it being summertime, I thought. Was the living easy? It was. Yeah. No, it was. Uh, but I'm not really sure. But uh, yes, uh, Pancake Chris, who is uh, <clears throat> Pierre's producer, uh, gained his nickname because he stopped off and picked us up pancakes without us asking. <laughs> yeah. It's still... It, it, that was a great day. It was a great yeah. day. Pancakes and, um, are good. Uh, pancakes, by the way, are an old staple dating back to ancient Greece. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Uh, oh. So they that was actually, they had two options. They could make a discus or pancake. <laughs> okay. And they went with pancake. Yeah. Steve, you and I, uh, I think, suffer from the same affliction, which is that we love them, but we don't order them very often. No, exactly right. Because they're very filling and um, often w a little too sweet for our breakfast tastes. And it's just hard to wrap my mind around cake for breakfast. All right, so here's what I did at a table recently. We're actually at uh, Uncle Bill's down the shore. Did you get a table pancake? We got a table pancake, Kathy. <laughs> and it was fan freaking tastic We got a little bit of chocolate chip pancake action. Uh, and, I uh, love that chocolate chip pancake. Oh, my God. Yeah. So there yeah. were... There yeah. were 
Oh, yeah, hey, it's my order. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> it's my story. Just overrated. Wait, yeah, to the table pancake or they the can chocolate go that, chip pancake? Go. Yum, yum. yum. Uh-huh. Uh, go ahead, keep going. So uh-huh. the chocolate chip pancake or the, the no, table pancake? No, they don't pancake. like the chocolate chip. Chocolate, well, uh, both, but okay. really more so chocolate chip they were, pancake. They were two at my table in my story. <laughs> There were, uh, there were two short stacks, one of plain and then one of uh, chocolate chip. And it really made the uh, entire breakfast experience delightful. Mm. Uh, I got pancakes on Friday in L.A. Uh, after Todd Glass's uh, house, he recommended this place called CJ's. I'm telling you. Is that the one with all the whipped cream on it that I saw you diving into? Mm, no, okay, that, was that was probably a else. cake of some sort, right. but not a pancake. No, it was just a regular plain old pancakes. I'm That's telling you guys. Bad. It was uh, it was a top three pancake of my wow. life. Wow. It was That's really, saying really a lot. good. You are an aficionado. Uh-huh. Old. Uh, so anyhow, yeah, they go back to ancient Greece, and since then, uh, many varieties have been created across the globe. In Britain, France, and other parts of Europe, the pancakes, or crepes, are very, very thin and often served with a sweet or savory filling. Didn't Aristotle invent the Pop-Tart? Uh, I don't know. And <laughs> Indonesia, they consume pancakes known as sarabi, Ooh. which are made with rice flour and coconut milk. And in Uganda, pancakes yeah. are made with bananas. I, can oh, I like that. banana pancakes. Yeah. I like banana ca- pancakes, too. I would take a banana pancake over a chocolate chip pancake. I'll tell you what I would yeah. you know what like. Banana and chocolate chip pancakes. Nick, Ooh. you feel me? Yeah, I'm with yeah. you. My kids are making pancakes in bowls in the microwave these days. So I remember it, you telling us about that. Yeah, yeah. so they just... Uh, they're they, doing that with, like, cakes, too. You can make, like, a mini cake. They're doing it with, like, making brownies in, in yeah, cups yeah, yeah. and stuff like can that. You, yeah. Can you do this? Are you a pancake fan? Kathy? I do love pancakes. I it's hard to convince yourself to eat them, though, right? No, no, not hard <laughs> at all. No, you guys said you, you uh, don't order them. I do. I probably shouldn't be, but I For absolutely sure. love pancakes uh, wait but i said yes to banana pancakes but i just want to clarify that would be fresh bananas uh cut up on top if they're cooked yeah, in the pancake <laughs> i'm out okay <laughs> by the way it was bill post uh, who invented the pop tart not aristotle oh, oh damn it so <laughs> um and i guess post post is a uh, that's a brand yes yeah, yeah. Post, like so post toasties post pop tart yes uh so that's him bill post he's 94 years old and is leave from, me uh, alone Grand Rapids, Michigan. I made a pop tart. I did it, but uh, get over it. He made it in 1964. God damn it! Apparently, didn't, didn't you say that like pop tarts are like some of the most unhealthy foods out there? There, there's some of them are hot, very high in calories. I, I think I remember that. I don't think yeah. they're. Are they inherently unhealthy? Are they unhealth more unhealthy than say a pancake? We went through a list of unhealthy stuff one time, and it might have been on there. Yeah, I, I feel remember. like a lot of that stuff is really concentrated into that that little pot. Well, number one was used motor oil. Okay, but, yeah, but no it's one deadly. Yeah. All right, anyhow, enjoy uh, Pancake David. Mm. Go on. I have other things that I noticed I want to get to. Uh, this is from last week. We didn't get a chance to touch on this. A lot of stuff we didn't get to really go to because we were really busy with uh, Casey's Big Adventure. It's a good so reason. I've held on to a couple of things, but uh, Spotify users will now be able to purchase and listen to more than 300,000 different audiobooks they announced last week. Uh, the streaming company's foray into audiobooks marks its latest attempt to make the platform a one-stop shop for all things audio. Uh, Spotify introduced podcasts in 2015. They now, it's now home to more than 4.4 million podcasts. So stop and think about it. That's, That's why insane. it cracks me up when I've got <laughs> all the podcasts you compete with. It's so hard uh-huh. to, to rise uh, to the top. But uh, Preston, so you're an audible guy, as am I. Yes. Uh, I love it. I love the way they, they're delivered. I love the, you know, you like I'll go inside and I can have one of the uh, my uh, the Alexa continue reading what I was listening to in the in the car. Uh, I love that whole thing, that, mm-hmm. that synergy. I, you know, I don't know if Spotify is going to have that. I looked this up uh, the other day because I would, wanted to see if you could get the Harry Potter books because um, Jim Dale, is that his, the name? The, yeah, the, 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 the narrator, yeah. yeah. And uh, so they are available, but it's not cheap. It's like uh, 32 bucks for a book. And, and well, it's about what a um, a regular hard copy book would cost you. All right, so um, but uh, you can go to your library and they have audiobooks at your local library. Yes, for in free. In fact, there is somebody had told me about an app uh, last week, and I think it's called it might be called Libby. Okay. Um, Libby. And, and all you have to do is is you have to have a uh, essentially a. Um, a library card it, yeah. from your local library, and you can use this app. You just log on, and yep. you can download your uh, the books for free, which <laughs> right. is what the library does, mind you. But everyone's ear juices are all over it. Oh, that's true yeah. too. Oh. Um, so I think that's pretty damn cool. Yeah, it's great. Uh, but I, I have a subscription to uh, to Audible. Well, you get a certain amount of credits per month, and then you use a, a credits. You know, usually a book is a credit. 
Uh, it ends up saving you money in the long run of over what you would pay individually for I agree. Purchase. Yeah, because I, I, I get a ton of credits in Preston. It's part of your Prime. Um, it's part of your Prime membership, your Amazon Prime. So the company decided to introduce uh, the audiobooks uh, because they represent a, quote, substantial untapped market, according to Nir Zickerman, who is Spotify's vice president and global head of audiobooks and gated content. Uh, Zickerman said that the segment is growing by about 20%. Uh, year over year, despite uh, making up just six to seven percent share of the current book market, it's I've again I avoided it, I fought it, and then when I finally jumped over to the dark side, I ha I've listened to a ton of books. I, I, I love, love it. it. Yeah. I love it. I have a hard time. There there are certain types of books that I I just can't coloring books. Well, no, no, you can't do you can't do that uh, an audio color. No, I just I can't follow along. I, I just lose. Uh, um, color the apple red. Yeah, I, no, I mind. I lose concentration, and the the dude will be talking for like you know minutes and minutes. And I'm like, oh man, what pick, did pick yeah, something that you so, think will will, uh, and everyone that's what I fall yeah. with. My, well, lack of uh, attention. It 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 uh, my my mind wanders from time mm -hmm. to, if if I'm going somewhere with a purpose like work, and I'm listening to uh, a a book, and all of a sudden I start thinking about work, and I realize. Oh, the last two minutes, I haven't been paying attention. Yeah. I just back it up and, yeah. and, uh, and repeat what and I like missed. Project Hail Mary, I had zero problems following along. But right. then, like, I tried to do On the Road. And, uh, oh, yeah. And that Carowack. one, I kind of lost. Uh, and then also there was uh, the People's History of the United States I completely lost track of. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of ones that I'm like, oh, man, th this 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 one's not for me. It's not going to work for me. So the move also vaults Spotify into more direct competition with Amazon-owned Audible, uh, which is the market leader in 2018 with 41% market share of audiobooks. So uh, they're also going to sell e-books under its own brand. Amazon will sell e-books under its own brand. Other competitors in include Apple, Google, uh, Rakuten, I'm not sure. Is that how you pronounce that? Rakuten. Uh, R-A-Q-U-T-E-N, uh, which has partnered with Walmart. Mm. Uh, so Spotify users interested in listening to audiobooks can find them in their search library and their curated recommendations on their homepage. The audiobooks will feature an icon, a lock icon over the play button to indicate that they need to be purchased. Once a book is purchased, users will be able to bookmark their place in the audiobook, control their listening speed, and download the content <laughs> Uh, for offline listening. I do the speed thing periodically because I I, I have my favorite narrators or mm -hmm. people that are my favorite readers. And, you know, you read a certain type of book and you'll come across those people often. But uh, one, now and then, Preston, you'll get someone who reads at this laconic sort of delivery. I got to speed it up. It's okay. just too much. Uh, so, yeah, look for that. If you're if you're an audiobook person, then um, it, uh, it might be Spotify. Now, what I don't know is what's involved with your subscription you already pay for. Uh, or are you going to need to pay per title? I don't really know yeah. any of that. Is there, stuff, is there yeah. a place where you can borrow written books, like uh, on pages and stuff like that? Yeah, the can... Also the library. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. oh, okay. that. That yeah. But, yeah, for for Harry Potter, um, Preston, I ha you know, I have a Spotify subscription, but I still had to pay, like, the 32 bucks on top. Yeah, okay. So, so I guess some are available uh, with your subscription and, and some are not. By the way, somebody texted in, then I, did I say Perry Hotter the first time around? Uh, <laughs> if you did, I didn't hear it. I would have loved it. I, I, See if it was Perry Harder. Perry Harder. Petey Carey. <laughs> yeah, right? Katie Perry. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see what else I noticed here. Oh, yeah, this is a follow-up uh, to uh, the app that we talked about last week or the, the game Trombone Champ. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it was only released on September 15th and went viral uh, last week after people online playing it began posting recordings of themselves. Uh, but Dan uh, Vecchito, the game's developer, said he never, ever expected that it would turn hmm. into the Internet's newfound source of laughter. Uh, in fact, uh, Vaquito, whose full-time job is a uh, is in web design, expected a much smaller group of enthusiasts. He said, I'm obviously super happy about it and uh, a little relieved. He said, I wasn't quite sure uh, what the response was going to be because it almost always sounds bad. Uh, he develops <laughs> video games as a hobby and doesn't even play the trombone. And he came up with the idea for a trombone champ uh, four years ago, inspired by uh, traditional arcade cabinets. He said that, he imagine a cabinet that, rather than a plastic light gun, had a rubber trombone with a moving slider attached to it. He said, I thought it'd be funny to imagine someone attempting to move the slide on a giant rubber trombone in it, uh, in and out, so that it kind of matched these uh, giant squiggly lines flying on the screen. Uh, and he said developing the game was a pretty smooth process. Uh, he worked on it uh, nights and weekends. 
And uh, the tricky part for Vekito was that uh, he wanted to find songs that would be enjoy uh, that would be enjoyable to the player without having to pay any royalties. So almost all the music right. is classical and in the public domain. That's what you'd have to do to make. And now, now, mind you, as it as it starts to generate money. Uh, maybe they can, you know, uh, get some more music on it. But there's also songs that are appropriate for a trombone. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing so hard at this. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, uh, Vekito said that he was afraid that actual trombone players might be insulted by the game. However, he said most trombone players he's heard from have enjoyed it, and they find it really fun. Uh, he said because of the overwhelming response, uh, he'll continue to update and tweak what he believes is the first ever trombone-centric game. So we got to try it here in the studio. Oh, please, yes. Uh, it costs uh, $14.99 and is available on PC via Steam. He's planning on to release a Mac version and eventually a version for consoles. Um, uh, it's only uh, available in English right now, but he's going to do it for other languages later. But apparently it's really taken off. Oh, my God, of really course, yeah. All right, I noticed another thing or two. Let's bring Kathy into the conversation. Okay. This story is for people with big boobs. <laughs> ah. What do you say? Uh, <laughs> if you are, if you have a boobs that are higher than a C cup, oh, you'll, pro <laughs> you'll probably know the familiar ache across your chest when you have fallen asleep on uh, like a lounge chair, face down. Okay, so like say you're sunning, oh, you're out yeah, sunning. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, trying, that's like yeah. You're trying to get some sun on your back yeah. or something like that. So, or maybe you're just strangled by your gals as soon as you lie face down. So end up giving up bathing with the sun in your eyes. Well, this may be the end of your summer wo woes. Rather than developing the whole lounger out of the usual tough, breast-squishing polyester beach chair brand Ostrich came up with their Ladies Comfort Lounger, okay. hmm. which features a soft, expandable area for the boobs. That makes sense. That, <laughs> that stretches sense. to accommodate all breast sizes comfortably. So there's a, there's a, like a, a strip of a certain width that sits sort of in the chest level yep. where a woman could lay down and not be confined there. Yeah. That makes total and sense. You kind of have all... to, like, move around, like, shimmy around if, if you're on the sand, and you can make, like, little divots, <laughs> divots in the sand. You'll, right. you'll do that in yeah. the sand? Yeah. All right. That I can see, right? Uh, so it's designed exclusively for women to support the breast. Is that strip big enough, do you think, if, for, if, you're, if you're exceptionally busty? Is that... Gonna yeah. get it done. I you mean, yeah. Look, it's like it's pretty much all the way across. Okay. Uh, the lounger also has cutouts on its sides to fit your arms through, and a cushioned faced cavity, oh, kind of like, like a shiatsu chair. Yeah. I'm gonna need one for my dong. Uh, so you can. <laughs> hey. Right, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. So you can read saying. or scroll through your phone without the casual, the usual uh, neck strain that comes with it. All so right. yeah, I think it's great. There, Kathy, your arms your, go yeah, through. Yeah, the those. arms go through. It's brilliant. Yeah. That way, you can have your phone down there, or your book, or whatever you're doing. Or your lunch. Yeah. And, uh, and Bagels, you have your maybe. face <laughs> and such. Well, I think it's a little bit, it's a great idea, but it's about 95% there. That little area of the soft fabric where the, the breasts are supposed to lay. Yeah. Uh, Kathy, you know, listen, I don't, well, I, I mean, I have boobs. But uh, yeah. but <laughs> what if that area, instead of it being a soft area, what if um, it was... You could zipper it out altogether and just let, and just just let, hang, let them hang. 
Would I, it be better for them to hang? Or I would... think that might be funny looking. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Oh, I think this is discreet. <laughs> yeah. Chris? So this has actually been around for a while. My friends have them. Oh, they yeah. They did nice. not offer to buy me one because I didn't need it. Um, it's a great chair. They love it. The only uh, bad design in it is, Kathy, it's one of those chairs that when you're getting out, it tips. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Because right. oh, it yeah. only has like two legs on it, but highly recommend. Okay. All right. Um, and it says if you don't, uh, you don't have to stick to the sea blue color either. It comes in a hot pink if you want to add a touch of glam to your summer picks. Mm. Uh, or if you want to take your sunbathing to the water, lingerie shop Bravissimo came out with a similar Lilo earlier this year that's pretty impressive. What is Lilo? Stitch's know. friend. What is a Lilo? Yeah. Lilo. 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 Uh, um, la, 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 Luke. <laughs> Luke, I am your father. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> it's a pool float with the same thing with the boobs oh, that oh. can kind of rest in uh, inside the float. You know, they're, they're doing a lot with water and pool technology. I got this chair that actually where you sit, a lot of these pool seats that you sit on, will keep you elevated sort of above the water a little a little bit. But yeah. some of them, they're in the you water. You sit in the water mm -hmm. with your armrests. So mm -hmm. You're actually up to, like, your chest in yeah. the water. Yep. And then there are magnetic cup holders. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's some yeah. good stuff. There's some that, uh, that have, like, a mesh in the middle, and all the water comes in, and you can just be in the water right. and not yeah. be up on top of it. Because I don't like the, I don't like the fly, what line. What are you in the pool for? All the way up yeah. on top of the water thing. I'm with you, man. Uh, by the way, with its own cup holders, uh, Bravissimo style, the Flamingo-esque Lilo, Lilo features a hollowed-out section to support your chest when you're lying face down. What about one for uh, large noses? By the way, it says originally an April Fool's joke by the brand. They ended up actually developing the product <laughs> after the positive response from the That's public. Funny. Of course. They had it as a joke. Yeah. And women are like, no, we really need this type of thing. <laughs> so they created it. I thought that was pretty interesting. All right, uh, let me see what else we got here. I did notice another thing or two. Let's go with uh, this one. Keeping your mouth shut. It's not easy, but there's a viral TikTok trend that's out to change your mind about that, known as mouth taping. <laughs> the idea is to literally tape your mouth closed while you sleep to improve snoring, allergies, and bad breath brought on by sleeping with your mouth open. Oh, and suffocate yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, breathing through your nose may have various benefits that breathing through your mouth doesn't have, including lowering blood pressure, filtering allergens, regulating the temperature of your breath, humidifying the air you breathe, and moisturizing your throat, decreasing anxiety. I moisturize my throat before I go to bed. On the flip side, mouth breathing has various side effects, including dry mouth, bad breath, sore throat. <laughs> Sometimes people who are mouth breathers snore, which is a common symptom, along with restlessness and fatigue seen in people with obstructive sleep apnea. We usually breathe through our mouths as a backup for when we can't breathe through our nose. Uh, blockages can be caused by a few different conditions, including ingestion from allergies, sinus infections, a deviated septum, enlarged tonsils, and enlarged adenoids. Do you think you sleep with your mouth open more or closed more? Um, that's a good question. Probably open. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I have to sleep on my side because otherwise I snore and I wake up because I have mild sleep apnea. I sleep probably more often with my mouth closed because I sleep on a slight... Well, actually, like a hospital kind of incline. I right. With the sleep number bed, it's adjustable on that level. And that's what I'm used to now, and I love it. By the way, Casey, Dr. Mike's concerned about your snoring. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. He heard from Jackie Bam Bam on the air. He was listening. Yeah, I think Jackie might have been exaggerating. Oh. I'm, I'm not really sure. Uh, but, I mean, I sleep next to my wife every night, and she's like, yeah, it's the way Jackie was describing it was not like that okay yeah so maybe that night in particular i was super tired and, and went into a super super deep sleep but mm. it's possible yeah. or maybe your wife listens to the ears yeah. of love do you think you, you snore more super tired because i think when i'm super tired i snore less like i i just if i'm in a deep sleep i think that i'm actually not like if i'm snoring i should say i think it messes up my sleep and i don't sleep as well yeah mm. i, don't, Does that I make have sense? no idea okay no clue 
Uh, one small study showed 30 patients snored less after mouth taping, but another study of 36 patients. By the way, don't go taping your mouth shut. You're not supposed don't to. Don't go taping no. your eventually, mouth. I wouldn't don't if go I tried. tried. Uh, eventually, that's what this story gets to. Is it's not a good idea. Don't go, go taping your. Don't go taping your. Don't, don't go, go taping, taping your mouth. mouth. You know. Uh, but another study of 36 patients with asthma showed no signs of change in their condition after using mouth taping. Philadelphia <laughs> mouth taping. <laughs> that was a bit of a stretch. Okay. <laughs> but I'm with you. Right, thank you. <laughs> taping up my mouth. And a... <laughs> mouth. <laughs> it took me a minute. I'm like, all right, what song is that? <laughs> Benny and the Jets. Uh, and... I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Is that supposed to be Crocodile Rock? Yeah. <laughs> I remember when taping was fun. <laughs> it's all there. The whole right, catalog yeah. was always suggesting some level of mouth taping. Come on, guys. He's trying to finish the story here. <laughs> no, I want I want more Elton John. <laughs> now we're all trying to think of songs. That we can can you yeah, yeah. tape my mouth tonight? That could work. That kind of ties in with this. Uh, I'm a mouth taping man. <laughs> mouth taping man. Rocket man. Rocket man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm taping my mouth shut after all these years. Yeah, I'm still standing. Uh, and a 2022 study revealed that 10 patients continued to try mouth breathing even after their mouths had been taped. Mouth tape, you're my brother. A, you are older than me. A phenomenon known as mouth puffing. Uh, so I know this. Uh, the, my, uh, you guys ever do mm. that? Mm -mm. It's kind of like... when you're sleeping. Yeah. Oh, no. I don't know. I've never noticed. I don't notice things I do you while I'm sleeping. I'm though. asleep. Yeah, but notice I'm. It reveals a critical secret. <laughs> I was sleeping. Doesn't notice I, things. I, I was while I'm sleeping. I don't notice things. No. You usually spend from playing with in yourself. an open field down in uh, an, an abandoned alley. I'll notice then you'll things, notice, but not you sleeping. You can't watch yourself while you're asleep. No, it's ridiculous. All right, according to <laughs> Doctor uh, Pena or Bea, most of the evidence is anecdotal. There is not strong enough evidence to support that mouth tape is beneficial. Mouth taping is not part of our current practice to treat any sleep disorder. Nonetheless, in patients with sleep apnea, we may recommend mouth taping or wear a chin strap. <laughs> chin strap, okay. <laughs> to de decrease an, ear le an air leak while you're using a continuous positive How about a football helmet? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. A CPAP at night. Uh, in good times and bad times. Come on, everybody. <laughs> I'll be taping your mouth forevermore. That's what tape is for. <laughs> Rather than rely on mouth taping, Dr. Pena or Bea suggests using alternative methods to Hold address me closer, <laughs> my mouth tape. conditions like <laughs> snoring and sleep apnea. All right, now the text. Come on, yeah. there we go. I do like don't go taping my mouth. Saturday yeah. night's all <laughs> right for taping. <laughs> Get a little sleeping in. It all works. Yeah. It's all meant to work. Don't go tape in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. into something that I did on a Saturday uh, on my trip, but uh, I had to ship some stuff back from, from FedEx, yeah. and uh, and they made me buy tape to yeah. tape the box shut. I was like, oh, God. So then I I, I, I bought this tape. So I, what I ended up doing is I, is I put the tape in the box, okay, and then I taped it shut, uh, and mm -hmm. then I had to go and buy something and then bring it back to tape on the side of the box. And I said to the lady, I'm like, I'm like I taped the tape in the box. She goes, I have tape. And I'm like... Why the F did you make me buy tape if you have tape? Why? Do you know what I mean? I said, don't go tape in my mouth. Well, she taped, I think she was happy. She, you had satisfied the requirements of purchasing tape, so she felt, okay, now I can give you some tape. That's annoying. Yeah. yeah I, I, explain that again. 
Okay, so I had you I had to send I, some stuff back. I, I shipped box. the um, the karaoke machine box back or yeah. the it, it back in a box because uh, I didn't want to check it in my luggage and all that. So anyway, uh, the the karaoke machine has a lithium battery in it, and so I had to put a um, a warning on the side of the box that had said it had lithium batteries in it. Right. They at FedEx don't sell those stickers, so then I had to go to Staples right. where they told me to go. And so, but at this point, I had already taped, uh, I had already put the tape inside the box and then taped the, you know, the box shut. Not thinking you would need tape again. Not thinking that I was going to need tape again. But because Staples didn't sell those stickers, uh, what I ended up doing is I just, I, I uh, printed up a sticker type of thing that needed to be taped on the side of the box. Right. And so when I told the lady that my tape that I bought is in the box, she's like, well, I have tape. And I'm like... Why the f did you make me buy tape if you had tape, mm. bitch? Ugh. You, you could just write. You could just couldn't write on the side of the box. No, it needs a special like sticker with oh, like God. warning stuff around it and all that. And, uh, anyway, I thought uh, tape was a. Uh, I thought it was a good time to bring that up because <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about tape. We were right. talking about tape, but not tape you. and box, not mouth. All right. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> tape your box shut, but don't tape your mouth. Shut. That's right. Yeah, Kathy, tape your box shut. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> ah, that's great. All right, I think I, I think that's all we're gonna do because we got, we got Dane it. Cook coming up at uh, nine ten, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so why don't we take a break? We'll come back in a moment. That's all that I have time to notice for now. Uh, but we're gonna talk to Dane, and we're also gonna get uh, Jackie in here. Yes, because he's filling in for Pierre the rest of the week. Pierre is off this week, uh, and we'll get a little bit more recapage of maybe some things that we missed out on. Uh, during Casey's big adventure. There was and a whole part that we did not get to hear. Yeah, they spent the yeah. weekend in L.A. Yes, they did. Uh, and did some other things. Yeah. So we'll take a break. We'll come back in just a moment. Do I have some more of those movie passes yes. for tonight? Yes, you do. It's tonight. Uh, uh, it's tonight. It is the greatest beer run movie premiere. Jack Efron. Uh, 7 o'clock, UA King of Prussia. Casey is hosting this. And if you would like to go, you know what? We will take... I, I didn't realize I had so many of these to give away. It's tonight at 7, so we'll take 10 callers. That's right, Bill. I said 10, ten. callers. At 215-263-WMMR, you will be able to go to the movie tonight with Casey, 7 o'clock, UA King of Prussia. We'll be back in a moment. Open those things up, and there's all kinds of blue stuff and sticky and oh my gosh. things oh my God, inside. Kathy, where is he, he going to take you? <laughs> where are we going? Sex, Preston, right after the show. Sex? Sex, Sex right after yeah. the show? Wow. Sex after the show with Kathy. Here, here's another one. So it says the packs say on it that you can cut them and empty them down the drain. Oh, I don't read things. Here's somebody says, I'm an owner of, An I'm the owner of Amazon. The fluid is from aborted babies. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, good God. Wow. That's another uh, level. I, okay, I don't know. That's not funny. But what, sir, see, uh, now you may be taking about your service. Yours, is your from Amazon? No. Mine's no. Uh, HelloFresh. Oh, okay. Yeah. I do. Hello, Fresh. Blue Apron. <laughs> uh, I want to go to this call on the line real quick, and then uh, we're, we're going to take a break in just a moment. So I'm going to go to uh, Harry. Hey, Harry, how you doing? Good. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. What's up, bud? Hey, you know, most townships have a thing like once a year or so. They call it, one of the names they use is called Clean Sweep. Yeah. And if you have, like, uh, paint cans or drain cleaner or something like that that you don't want any kind of chemical like that. Household, yeah. household hazardous waste, yeah. Yeah. That you, they, you could take it there, and most of them don't charge you anything for it because they just want you know they just want you to get rid of it safely. I got to look for that because I have a whole bunch of paint, paint cans I'm looking to get rid of. I have all the stuff from my meth lab. I'm looking <laughs> to get rid of. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I have I have a ton of stuff that I need to. Throw and you never out. know, and you don't want to like battery acid or, or or you know what else? I have a lot of those old kerosene, uh, not, not kerosene, those old um the the fuel for the little um oh yeah. Barbecues, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. the um, little containers, propane the, tanks, right? propane, the mini propane tanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, go to your uh, your your uh, trash provider or yeah. trash, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> trash provider, uh, not your trash. I did provider. my trash <laughs> delivery this week. I'm sitting here without any garbage. Everyone looks like they're far more. <laughs> your disposal provider. Where is my trash delivery? <laughs> I put the cans out at the curbside. I'm waiting. Everyone else has their trash. Do you want me to look like an idiot? Sorry, sir. <laughs> do you want general trash, like, or do you want, like, hobo trash? Do you want the classic fish bones and flies, or do you want... <laughs> We'll go with like large, yeah, yeah. You know, um, boxes, styrofoam, yeah. stuff like that would be fine. Yeah, yeah. 
shredded paper, something documents that made me look important. <laughs> All right, sir. <laughs> Sorry for the confusion. Oh. <laughs> we are the nation's number one trash provider. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyhow, if, if you call it your trash service, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, or or go on their website, yeah. it, it will tell you how you can go about uh, disposing of household hazardous waste. I always forget to do that, mm -hmm. so you end up with forty-five cans of old paint in your house. <laughs> yeah, that's true. If you're just tuning in. It's Michael Cutlets who is here with us. The, the earlier roles you, you have nine zero two one zero. You're also in. Um, Dragging the Bruce Lee story, mm -hmm. right? And, hey, Chinaman, yeah. teach us those moves. Wait yeah. a minute. He, you were in that scene? Yeah, he's I'm, one of those. I am that scene. Wait, where, where I'm is it? Bruce Lee. <laughs> no, 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 no. Dude, Where's, you are phenomenal. I'm amazing. You looked Asian. You looked Asian. <laughs> Wait, when he was in the uh, going to college and he's yeah, yeah. Uh, training in the. I'm, I'm you like, the I'm like the, I'm like the guy. I'm like the. I represent. The man. Okay, I, I have to go back and, uh, and I've seen that movie a bunch of times. But you're, you were very forgettable in it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I, 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 <laughs> oh, what's the show again? <laughs> what do you guys do? When is this air? Is this, oh. on, this will be on TV later, right? Yeah. Later. Oh. oh but listen, <laughs> radio. They still do that. <laughs> we're huge in Lakewood. <laughs> I know nobody's there, so I can tell you. When I, I'll, I'll go back and see what's going on. Listen, I got on board uh, with The Walking Dead very, very late. It was uh, I didn't start until the sixth season, then I. I watch every day, it, and in fact, it helped me out. It actually helped me lose some weight because I made a, a decision that I, I got it on Netflix and I'm going to watch. The only time I'm going to watch it is when I'm exercising, so it became my appointment to exercise. I could only exercise when I was watching Walking Dead. I could only watch Walking Dead when I was exercising. It was actually a really cool thing to do, so I became a huge fan of this. I've gotten all the way up to uh, the end of season six. six, and then it stopped on Netflix. It ends, Oh my God. and then I had to wait... <laughs> Because I couldn't go watch the, the you know, the, the current, I, I had to wait until it came back around. So that just recently. And we kept you protected. We kept you in the nobody dark. told me anything. <laughs> and Casey says, listen, before Michael comes in, watch the first episode of season seven. He's a giver. <laughs> he is. I didn't watch it, but I read on my little prep sheet, a little little spoiler alert. Yeah. So I found out today, man. I'm sorry. All right. It's okay. I, my, I may or may not come back. By the end of the season. Ah, okay. oh, okay. there's always what. flashbacks, man. And, uh, and no, maybe... last year she's over here going. <gasps> no, end of season seven. I mean, even yeah. now there's still some people who are not quite sure what happens to your character. I know. Well, yes, yeah. and that's the thing where it's where does that line drawn? Where oh, you can't talk about that. Yeah, like, bro. It's like come on, dude. Ten a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, get to, we get to talk about it. Abraham's dead. Dead, 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 dead. <laughs> yeah, if you're listening in your car and you're driving your kids to school, Abraham. <laughs> Is dead. Uh, <laughs> not only Abraham is dead, then they killed Glenn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and that was You're pretty right. brutal, You're right. There needs to be a, uh, an expiration date. Oh, like a come you know to what? Jesus moment. Yeah. Uh, they, they should, in fact, there should be, like in the Hunger Games, uh, an announcement across on some universal PA system. Yeah. Okay, now we can talk about exactly. it. For some reason, the, the final uh, the final scene in uh, the end of season six stuck with me. For a long, I thought about it every single day, uh, just because it was just it was gripping, and you know, obviously it was a uh, you, you don't know who's who's on the receiving end of the bat, and I just uh, I, I don't know why, but it, every single day, at least once a day, I would just think Negan bat head. And Ooh, that's yeah. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? And it was it wasn't. And we all thought it was gonna be Maggie. You know, let's beat up the sick. Pregnant yeah, lady. yeah, uh, you know, right. Network television. To me, it oh, didn't matter who it was. Uh, you know, I just knew that I that somebody that I had cared about for a few years was was going to be gone, and I had preferred it to be Eugene. But uh, you know, it was. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was hoping for that. That annoying yeah. bastard. It, the reaction. I'm a fan of the show too, yeah. so I, I was kind of like a little part of me was pissed off that they they did us both at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um. But it's kind of brilliant too because it's so brutal, and it and it is that reminder that um, Kirkman always says he wants to constantly remind the audience that it's a dangerous world that we're living in. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not Star Trek, yeah, you know, or Captain Kirk. Oh, he's in danger, but that's okay because he'll be on next week. Exactly, right? like, exactly. Well, he may actually blow Captain Kirk's head off this mm -hmm. week. Yeah, and that changes the whole viewing experience. Mm -hmm. It it does. And I would argue that these two deaths were not actually any more violent than anything we've seen on the show. But you you don't 
care about any of those other characters. That That's we a good care point. About these characters, because other other characters have been ripped apart. Oh, Noah yeah. got it nailed in the in the yeah. revolving door up against the glass, getting ripped apart. We've right. had people hold, literally holding their guts, going, <laughs> "What? I don't. Ah, oh, jeez." <laughs> I mean, there's been some really nasty, awesome visual stuff. I but, think um, for for me, it, I I got to the uh, to the game. A season late. Um, it might have been two seasons late. And for me, it was because I didn't want to watch a zombie show. And mm -hmm. then I realized me too. That, that this is not, it's not a horror show. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize it until I was probably about halfway through the first episode, maybe the second episode. Because I, I kind of watch horror movies with my hands over my eyes. And I, I, I realized that I didn't have to do that. And then I realized that, that the zombies are, are a background almost like the trees are. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and it was really all about... The relationships between these people and you know what that type of what, situation will what people, do to a person yeah turn into when mm -hmm. there's a overwhelming crisis you know well, it's like what if you had a chance to rebuild society what would you do yeah mm -hmm. you know if a you feudal had a, society you had or, a, well yeah and, yeah and how would it fail what, what what are the same mistakes you would make right. you know even though you you well, think oh this time we'll do it different and, you know and you see through the show you know that that absolute power does corrupt absolutely um, and and you see people change, and you see people make mistakes. You know, it's it's the it's the show is very human. I want to ask you, how much does the Talking Dead series um, add to the fandom of this show? Because it's it's the show is a very emotional show. You, you you get very connected to the characters, and and horrible things happen to them. Uh, and then you're left home alone. With yeah, that, and yeah. this is is a way to, I think, share what you're feeling to to sort of know you're not alone. <laughs> Um, and you know, Chris has described it as the the warm hug after the show, and uh -huh. and you know, we we laugh at that, but I, I think it is. You know, it's it's it, you get to process the the show, you get to hear what other people thought about it. If you yeah. were, you know, you know, I, maybe you think, well, I think he or she is feeling this, or they're going through that, and then you hear people talk about it, and you get to sort of bounce your ideas off their ideas. Um, so it is it is an extension in a way of the 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 sort of the social media of it all, and. Um, that I think we like. I mean, we yeah. like that interaction. We like, you know, knowing, knowing we're right or wrong or, or you know, being not, not necessarily corrected, but sort of like, well, what happened there? And if somebody talks about it and that is what happened there, you it's, know. It's brilliant. It's, it's yeah. great, yeah. Michael, I wanted to ask us, I know you've uh, you've voiced uh, some characters in uh, Call of Duty. They have a new World War II game coming out. Uh, Steve and I are massive fans of the World War II. I know they, they've spanned all kinds of different campaigns and so forth, but my favorites have been the one in the World War II. Did you voice any? In that nothing, particular nothing recent. I've okay. been out of town for the last four. Okay. Is is voice acting for a video game a much different uh, animal? Is, yeah. is it? I, we always hear it's sort of weird because you're kind of just freelining it, and yeah. that's you're, it. You're like basically this. This is a, a session, except you do it for two and a half hours. Reload. <laughs> Reload. <laughs> Over here! <laughs> Over there! Mm -hmm. Under there! <laughs> Under here! <laughs> Behind the tank! <laughs> Behind the Jeep! For two days. <laughs> two days. <laughs> two days of that? <laughs> yeah, and that's like, I wish I was kidding. Yeah. I wish I was kidding. Oh, <laughs> so, but the cut scenes, at least, you have a little bit of... Yeah. Reload! Can't use that one. <laughs> Reload! <laughs> Reload? That's great! Yeah. What? No, it wasn't great. <laughs> great to have you here. Thanks, man. Thank you, guys. Michael Cutlets, guys. Yeah. Yeah. From Walking Dead, 93.3 WMMR. Visitor to Oktoberfest noticed a man slumped over at a festival exit with a baby attached to his front on Thursday. As he tore his slowly fell to the side, the anxious man took his baby from him. And Oktoberfest is the largest beer festival in the world, attracting a global audience for its mixture of strong beer, traditional Bavarian food, and fairground rides. You know who went there this year? Mm -mm. Matt Cowper. Oh, yeah? So yeah. It was sick. It was, must have been sick. sick. That's one guy who's there. He's getting so sick, sick all over the place. Uh, his baby was already, he was getting sick. It took a lot. A lot of people got sick because they drank too much and they got sick. Uh, organizers <laughs> expect visitors' numbers to hit six million again this year. That's crazy. Oh, that Cowper said that there are what it basically is is gigantic tents, benches, yeah. and that's it. Yeah, drinking, drinking, drinking. Yeah, yeah. that's how, all it is. And people getting sick. And people yeah. getting sick. Yeah. If how many million? Six, six million. Million <laughs> sick people. <laughs> <laughs> What was that again? Sex. 
million thick people. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds thick. All right, and then we'll do uh, one more story. Man, this is this is wild. Uh, amazing pictures from the Arctic show an army of more than 230 polar bears yeah. feasting on a washed-up whale. We will control the humans. Our time has come. After a bowhead whale became stranded and died on Russia's remote Wrangell Island, uh, the extraordinary sight was witnessed by tourists on an Arctic cruise. Look at all those suckers. Yeah, a source at Wrangell Island Nature Reserve said there were at least 230 polar bears, including single males, single females, Ooh, mothers, with hey. mothers with cubs, mothers with cubs, even. <laughs> Where are you from? Oh, wow. You've got a Russian accent. Yeah, oh, that's great. Uh, do you like whale? Well, let's go over and have a bite. <laughs> You can tell about that time you went to Oktoberfest. Yeah, oh, it was sick. <laughs> everyone got sick. We were eating blubber and drinking beer, and everyone just got sick. <laughs> What's my name? A couple of minutes. Is he on uh, phone or Zoom or what? Phone. Phone? All right, we'll get him uh, in a little bit. In the meantime, I got some chart outs I can pass along. Yep. <clears throat> and um, I've, the thing about chart outs is when, when I do them on the air, uh, that means more of them come in, uh -huh. and it, there's, so sometimes they get a little bit backed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to edit these down. People like to send nice notes and things, uh, but I can't read all of it. It's just going to take up too much. We well, said before, and it's it's good to remind people you keep them very brief, and you have a greater chance of them getting on the air. Uh, so this one says uh, they'd like a shout out for my sister Sarah, her husband George, my brand new niece Lily, who was born on September 22nd. Uh, my sister showed me the podcast once I moved out to Denver, and I still have my old Totally Office calendar from 2011. Wow. Wishing my sister and family all the best. Love your brother, Jared. So that's from Jared uh, Skazinski. So there you go. Shout out for her <clears throat> to the sister. Also, here's another one that is from uh, Chris Carousella. And they says, I'd like to uh, request... A shout-out for my wife, Becca, who's going to be induced on October 2nd with our first baby boy, Salvatore. Mm. Uh, huge fans of the show. Just want her to know that she'll make the best mom in the world, and our child and I are both incredibly lucky to have her. Uh, Casey's Big Adventure was probably one of the best things I've ever followed. Wow. <laughs> and he goes on and on in the uh, in the email. So, uh, shout-out. There you go. Uh, this one says, want to read, Jack? Give a shout out to my former co-workers at the United Rentals in Conshohocken. I recently transferred out of state, but still stream every day down here in Del Mar, Delaware. Shout out to the guys. Lance, Mr. Dr. Professor Patrick, <laughs> Fran, Chris, Little Paul, Bill, PT, Susan, and the rest. Thanks in advance. And just keep effing those chickens, he says. <laughs> so that's from Thomas Moore. So... Uh, there's a shout out, uh, shout out uh, for Thomas, and then another one. Uh, let me see. Is that uh, is that Dane? No, nope. got a minute. Uh, this says they'd like to request a shout out uh, for my 15th anniversary with my boyfriend Adam, and uh, it, it's a lengthy email. Her name is Kim Kane sent, and the the T Rex sound effect is important to her. Okay, all right. So is there a chance we could do yep. that along with a shart? Yep. Uh, she's asking. So. Yep. Uh, she is in uh, Wilmington, uh, Kim Kane. Uh, so this is for her 15th anniversary. Adam. And there is your T-Rex shirt <laughs> as requested by you. Uh, let me see. We got another minute here. Uh, this says, hey, guys, huge fan of the show. My birthday is Saturday, November, or Saturday, uh, September 24th. I'd love a shirt out anytime this month. And that is from Deb Curie. See? Short and sweet. Got right to it. Um, then another one that says, uh, my, this is from, uh, Bob, just a guy named Bob. Uh, my fiance and I get married on September 24th, this Saturday. And what well, was last Saturday? I want to give a very special shout out to love my life, Jackie. She always pushes me to be the best version of myself. And we share common ground by listening to your awesome show every day. You guys are awesome. Excellent. Keep doing what you do. So Bob, there you go. We appreciate that. that. Congratulations to you guys. Uh, here's another man. I'm knocking these out. Yeah. Uh, it says, hey, I was wondering if you could send a birthday shout out to my boyfriend, Craig Moore. His birthday is September 24th. He'll be traveling to Vermont on Friday the 23rd. And we'll be listening to your show during the drive. Huge fan. Listen to your podcast every day. Uh, this is for, wait. What? I already did that, didn't I? Maybe not. Colleen Quigney. <laughs> Here you go. Shout out. There you go. And. Bing, bang, boom. Let's see. One more. At least one more. Or nope. We're getting. 
We're getting Dane on the line. All right, never mind. All right, there you go. We'll do those another you, time. You did like 10 of them. I got knocked them out, so I'm happy about that. Um, all right, our next guest has his special called Above It All, uh, which is going to be premiering on October 5th at 9 p.m. And you can get the tickets from moment.co. It says .co. Is that wrong or is it .com? Let's find out. Dude, I don't know. Yeah, I'm it sure. might be. We're it gonna, might be some, yeah. That's why I asked. It is, yeah. It's moment.co slash, slash Dane Cook. Yeah. Oh, I just got to right, make sure I get the, All right, then yeah. the slash Dane Cook yep. you definitely want to do. Been a little while since we talked to him. Yeah. Absolutely. Love having him on the program. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Dane Cook. Yeah. Yay. Dane, good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, you can just go to danecook.com. You don't have to try to hack the internet to get to the show. <laughs> you Thank you to. for simplifying. <laughs> right, right code to get the tickets, yeah. yeah. All right, so, so Dane, this was... This is filmed at your house, is that correct? I did. I, so check this out. I surprised an audience uh, by shuttling people to my home, not knowing that they were coming to my home. They thought they were just going to like a secret surprise Dane Cook show. Yeah. They didn't know that it was filmed. They didn't know it was at my home. So what happened was I hired a company, and they put a certain number of people on your, on your lawn or wherever you want to curate a crowd. The first night, it was about 900 people that we filmed wow. at the show. What? Wow. The Saturday night, 900 people left my yard, and I said, everybody at the end of the show, thanks for coming to my house. Now, you know, get off my lawn. <laughs> yeah. And everybody left. <laughs> about two hours later, I'm getting ready for bed. I get a call from the organizer, and he goes, hey, listen, I just looked at the numbers. We only checked, we only checked 800 and, eight in, and 99 people out of your yard. So somebody is still on your property. <laughs> Oh, oh wow! No. And it, and at like two in the morning, I'm just with a flashlight. I'm you know walking up around opening closets, thinking there's a heckler going to be in my house. Right. And, and so how did it, how did it play out? How did you did you eventually account for the errant individual? Well, I will tell you, I actually kept my camera phone on and filming because I was like, if this is real, this will be great bonus footage for the yes. <laughs> yeah. For the wow. All right, so. No, it, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I do want to hear what ended no, up happening. Say, it, no, no, no worries. It all worked out. And, yeah, two shows up at my home, and we ended up editing it. And now we're throwing it on a big IMAX premiere before it heads over to the Internet. That's amazing. Did you, uh, did you like, blindfold these people when they were coming <laughs> to your house so they wouldn't know where you lived or anything like that? Or do you care? Yeah, no, we. I, I definitely didn't want them to know where I lived. Uh, so the company shuttled them up to the house from an empty parking lot nearby and just said, listen, you're going to be going to the show. They thought they were going to some theater somewhere. Or yeah. something. But but even people said to me later, when I was talking to the crowd and saying goodnight to everybody, some people were like, hey, man, they put us on this shuttle and they just started driving us through the Hollywood Hills. We all thought we were being human traffic. <laughs> 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 but it's a brilliant idea. And, you know, uh, Dane, you, you were at the, at the, the beginning of using social media i remember you were all over like myspace and you were you were y your website was a big thing it was put together really professionally you were you were ahead of the curve and now you have so many comedians who are taking ownership of their of their material and 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 releasing their own specials directly on youtube for you to actually now go the step further and make your own home a venue is 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 brilliant so is this something you can see yourself doing occasionally from here on in yeah, I mean, I loved that I could kind of control the, you know, the IP, as they call it, the, inter the intellectual property. And the whole idea in this whole game is, and I tell young comics all the time, if you can own your material, if you can hold on to it and not just lease it away to somebody, then you actually have a, a better chance at collecting and, and, you know, receiving residuals. That was the, the whole point of this, to make a show for the fans present it the way I wanted them to see it, the kind of comedy I wanted to present to them, and at the end of the day, not have to wonder in 10 years, oh, am I ever going to get paid for the show that I put together? <laughs> yeah, I, I know you're a massive George Carlin fan, and this I, I could imagine George Carlin doing a show from his from his house and doing it in, in a very organic way. It seems very linear to, you know, not, um, not having too many cooks in the kitchen and taking complete ownership, and hopefully benefiting from that at the end of this i i think this is going to be i mean you know during the pandemic a lot of people were doing um you know zoom shows and stuff and and shows on the roofs of their building or wh whatever uh i think this is a logical progression well i gotta tell you when you guys see it the shows are unbelievable 
and they and they not only were the crowds great and just having a blast, you know, it's like a it was like Red Rocks at my house, like a little out outside festival here. But I got Marty Colner to direct it. Marty directed Carlin back in '78. Uh, Marty directed my Vicious Circle special. Then he came back and we did Isolated Incident. So if you love those shows, then uh, get ready because we're about to do it again. Let me ask you, is there, I would assume, I mean, obviously you're a professional, you've been doing this for years. You've worked every sort of venue from, you know, the Madison Square Garden and, and on in the spectrum here when it existed. Um, is there a percentage more comfortability with the simple fact that you're at home? You know, that's a great question. It wasn't even that it was there was more comfortability. There was just more moments during the the show where I felt that feeling of like, man, this reminds me of being, you know, a kid and, and when the neighbors would gather on somebody's stoop, mm. you know, everybody would have a few drinks and people would kind of like start ribbing each other and it would turn almost into like a neighborhood comedy show. And that didn't occur to me until I had people there and I was kind of coming in and out of the material and having a little banter with the crowd. So, I mean, what you're going to see is something I'm actually also discovering in real time. And it made for some really hilarious moments off the cuff because there was a couple of interesting characters who ended up on my lawn. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> no Did doubt. Anybody have to use your bathroom inside or anything during this event? <laughs> no, but weirdly enough, one guy actually asked me if he could take a picture with my, with my refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't even want one with me. He was like, can I just go and take a picture with your fridge so people will believe I was in your house? <laughs> you know what's, what's interesting, and the, the special is, is definitely uh, very exciting, but I was thinking, and obviously, you know, doing research on you and and, and how your career has has, uh, has uh, changed over the years. And, and, you know, there was a time where, um, obviously, you know, when, when you're on that first initial run where everything is just blowing out big time, um, and, and you were obviously in the moment and you were, you were enjoying it, but... I, I, Every time I see you now, you seem to be in, in such a better place and, and really able to enjoy things that much more. Is, is that a correct assessment? Oh, man, I would absolutely 100 per se. You know, it's like being the old bull on the hill moment, looking back at, you know, everything that I experienced through those, like, that was like an eight-year epic living out of my duffel bag run. You know, I yeah. never stopped. And so it was a blast. It was there was nothing else like it. But it was also like, man, after that run, I was like, I'm beat. I think I need like a decade off <laughs> after that. <laughs> right after that. It, but but I will say, it, I I got to stand on every stage that I'd ever hoped to perform on. It really was like dream come true moments. Doing Saturday Night Live, working with some of my comedy heroes. You know, I've met them. I got to meet really all the comics that. I used to listen to their albums or, or love growing up. So to be a part of this 31 years in and sharing what I think is my best show yet, um, it's just exciting to be celebrating this victory lap. Nice, nice. Good for you, man. Well, the tickets are available, and it's the digital premiere of this, uh, which is called Above It All, and uh, October 5th is when you can start to get that. But like Dane was saying, just go to danecook.com and you get all the info. I think it's really cool, man. I'm intrigued. I want to I want to check this out and see what this looks and feels like because that's uh, I've never heard of anybody doing this type of right, thing before. Right, right. Yeah. Next next time we chat, I want to talk about the stalker bit. I just want you guys to <laughs> to key key in on the stalker bit. Okay. okay. I promise next time you guys have me through, I'm going to tell you some wild side stories to that bit. So right. Ooh, we good. Right. We'll hold you yeah. to that. Yes, absolutely. To be continued. I love it. All right, Dane, take right, care, bye. man. Good luck with everything. All right, brother. Okay. All right, we'll see you, Dane Cook. Yay! And DaneCook.com to get that. So that's, uh, we were watching a, a quick little uh, video uh, here of it, and they, of course, they lit it and made it look really yes. nice and, and cool. And he's up on the hills. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, he's... you can see L.A. down below looks really, really cool. So speaking of Los Angeles, uh, we had a couple of fellas here in the studio that uh, just got back from L.A., Spending a couple of days on the road and eventually making it all the way to Hollywood and so on. Jackie Bam Bam's in the yeah. studio. Yeah! Oh, Retired from Case Big Adventure. Welcome back home! We are, is that where we're at? Are we here today? Here. Yeah. What yes. day is it? What time is it? <laughs> oh my God. So can we talk about the time change and how that messed Ooh. with Jackie so much? He had such a hard time figuring out what time it actually was. So he left his watch <laughs> on Philadelphia time the whole time. So okay. when, when he woke up from, you know, he took a big old nap on Friday uh, when we got to L.A. and took another big old nap on Saturday. And both times, like, you you woke up and you were, like, afraid. And you had to call 
your room girlfriend. service yeah. too yeah, and the damn it. phone sometimes was not rigged up and i'm like case knock on my door before you shower so <laughs> captain casey keeping me on time well you know what you from on our end of things mm -hmm. and you guys were, were just seemed to be like timing wise spot on and and you were out and going and um, you know, there, there seemed to be no, no, uh, mishap or late, or, or, or was there no, stuff we were that we in missed? good shape. I was, you know, the only thing that like really disappointed me was, was getting into LA 15 minutes later than I had anticipated. Uh, and that was just because of the, the LA traffic that's and, still and there was not, an accident, but it's nothing bad that it was, we were amazed you got there as quickly as you did. Well, so Jackie had said to his girlfriend, he's like, oh, Casey's a drill sergeant. She goes, <laughs> no, no. Wait, who said that? Jackie to, to Brittany, his girlfriend. Really? She and yelled she, at me. And she yelled at him. She goes, no, he's just on time. And you're always late. <laughs> I'm not as bad as Pierre, but I am a, you know, pubic hair late once in a while. But Casey boy's like. Yo, this is the Preston Steve show. You're two minutes late to the car. Hurry up. <laughs> wow. Like, all right, By the way, if we, if we really want to make this a challenge, <laughs> next time we send Casey with Pierre. Oh, my uh, God. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. that, trying to achieve those goals would be a real challenge. But the cool part is that as Pierre is on the trip with um, you, he'll actually still be here in the studio yeah, yes. able to comment on what's going on. No, yeah. we would not. I don't think we would be able to accomplish what we accomplished in a week with Pierre. No way. No, we would we Absolutely would miss a not. lot of different things. No, you would, but he would forget his wallet. He'd forget his watch, his passport. I would, a, I would have a checklist before we ever left the parking lot. I would say, okay, do you have A, B, and C? All right, now we can go. Yeah. Right. So we we followed you guys, you know, Monday through Friday, but you know, we ended uh, when, when the show was done. But there was a whole another well, almost two days left because mm -hmm. you guys were leaving, taking a late flight on Saturday. What'd you guys end up doing uh, while you're in California? Well, we. Uh, we went back to the beach, but a different beach, correct? Yeah, so after after we left T Todd's place, we went and grabbed a bite to eat real quick um, yeah. at this little diner uh, around the corner from his house. And then I said, let's go to Malibu, right? So we, we drove uh, the about PCH. how far was that, you think? It was about... 30 to 45 minutes away. Yeah, uh, nothing's yeah. close. That was no, nothing, no. Prespo, on the uh, rides we were taking. 30 to 40 minutes was nothing. Sure. No. Yep. So, we, um, was, so we hopped on the Pacific Coast Highway and, and drove up to Malibu. And, you know, it was just, uh, for, for as far as Malibu is concerned, it was tough for us to find parking uh, and then to find, like, an actual beach to, to right. chill on that was, like, public. Because there's a lot of how it's just such a um, it's real tight. It's really really tight, and mm -hmm. you know there's it's a prime highway. real estate. Yeah, yeah and prime real yep. estate, and there's a highway that goes down the middle of the you know like right before you get to the beach. Where is it like you know any of our shore towns? There, it, it's it's it, it's not like that. It's not to, it's not designed like that. But uh, we did end up finding a cool little spot that where where people were um, surfing and scuba diving as we were walking. Uh, yeah. Towards the beach, we see a guy walking in a parking lot, press in like full scuba gear. Like he still had the tank on his back and everything. And yeah. and then so we ended up walking to this uh, to the beach, and there were two beach chairs just sitting there. I was like, I was like, as I'm walking up, I'm like, I hope they have a place where we can rent beach chairs or something <laughs> like that. And there wasn't, but there were two full on chairs that we were just able to sitting sit there. And just no one had claim to. No, and it was uh, like an IKEA recliner or something, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They yeah. kind of like had like a, you a know, little like, rocking. Were like rocking chairs, like mm -hmm. beach what, rocking chairs. What, what was the temp like? It was sorry, perfect. Dick. It was absolutely perfect. It was probably about 75 to 80 degrees. Yeah, I was far. wearing my long sleeve Iron Maiden shirt, one so I don't <laughs> melt, but I was like, Case, uh, I'm going to melt out here, but it, the temperature was beautiful. Ah, which, nice. which band was on the front of that? Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Casey, so um, there's so much adrenaline going. You guys are up early every day. When you got to the beach and you're sitting in the lounge chairs, w w were you able to, like, exhale? Did, did you feel like you were about to crash, or was it, like, what was your... What was your body telling you when you guys like were actually able to be on the beach? Um, it, I was relaxed. Okay. I was not not tired, not ready to crash. But I was like, okay, breathe a sigh of relief. Let's just sit here and enjoy the moment. We don't have to be anywhere for two days. Right. Like, like I don't have to be anywhere until I have to drop the the uh, Subaru, Subaru off yeah. at the, yeah. this dealership in in like Hawthorne. But uh, was Kyle with you in Malibu? Kyle was with us in Malibu. Okay. Kyle, we we got to the beach and there was a bathroom right there. Kyle went and. Uh, uh, went big potties, so he was so it was just me and Jackie Bam Bam on the beach for for a hot minute. But we hung there. We watched the surfers. I watched a guy. We we ended up doing a, an Instagram live. We met a surfer named Hillary who was like super nice. That uh, we're watching a video right now of Jackie interacting with uh, with Hillary the surfer. 
who was really nice. And then um, and we watched a guy get on a paddleboard with his dog. You know, just it was just it was great. And so we kind of hung there for maybe about half hour to, to an hour or something like that. Go back to when we were parking. Um, you mentioned the guy in the scuba suit. You forgot he recognized you. You were wearing your seventy six or shirt. And of course, everywhere we go, with Casey in an elevator, he sees a guy in an Oakland Raiders hat <laughs> or a Forty uh, Nine ers hat. He starts talking sports. This guy was not wearing any sports with full scuba gear, and he saw Casey Boy seventy six or shirt. <laughs> And, uh, yeah. yeah, he knew it. Well, so, like, sports is this international language that, right. you know, you can, you know. It's, it's like love. Right, right. Yeah, it's like love. But, uh, but <laughs> so we hung there for a little bit, and Jackie started melting. He was wearing, like, he was, it was well, like he was dressed for the ski mountain. So we My nose up, is all, look, I look like Rudolph. <laughs> Got a little sunburn. But we were trying to kill time because we weren't really able to get into our hotel till a little bit later on. And where so was your hotel? Our hotel was um, really close to the airport. It was okay. a, it was a Westin, uh, you know, it was a Marriott resort. Uh, but, yeah, the airport. Uh, mm, welcome. So. <laughs> We Are have, you a famous rock star? You look like one. Once we had a little <laughs> bit of time under our belts, I said, okay, we might be able to get to an early check-in. By the way, just a heads up, all the stools in your room have three legs. <laughs> <laughs> I did see a three... Uh, did you know that pig, the three-legged pig is a good luck thing? Did you, are you guys yeah, aware you have of this to, at all? You pluck one of the legs off. It's, no, it's uh, something I saw when I have not, Bam, no. Bam Bam and I were, were at the top of uh, Sundia Mountain. You in, saw in a Albuquerque. three-legged pig? They were <laughs> selling them in the, in the gift shop there. <laughs> oh, okay. So we checked into the hotel. They, we were able to get in early. Kyle didn't have a room because he was, um, uh, he was leaving on Friday night, and he wanted to take a nap. So... I left Kyle in the room uh, to, to nap, and then Jackie went to his room, and then I just went down and hung out in the pool um, That's what hot I tub area. You. I was talking to you when uh, he was taking a nap, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So And then so Bam Bam was – and so the, the plan was uh, everybody get up, go watch the sunset, um, and then take Kyle to the airport. Bam Bam slept through that. But I didn't get that text. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You can explain things to him a, a thousand times, but you don't know if he's ever listening. <laughs> so Kyle gets off. Uh, what I'm really interested in hearing about is, I mean, you made it. I mean, you you have Jackie who knows all things rock, and you're down. You're like rock central with the whiskey. And, and Oh, yeah. And well, that was, that was Friday night. But so uh, while Bam Bam was sleeping, uh, me and Kyle, we went to In-N-Out Burger. I had to get an In-N-Out Burger. And then I took him to Randy's Donuts, which is uh, f really popular. That's where Iron Man. Yeah. I'm sorry. Iron Man. <laughs> was hanging out uh, on in Iron Iron Man too. I thought you went to where the Simpsons get them big pink donuts, but you said no, different place. But th dude, Steve, there was oh my god, this guy, uh, the homeless guy, was was scaring me. He was like hanging out by our car when right. we got done getting our donuts, and I was like, I just I can't interact with this guy because I just don't know. I don't know what I'm going to get back. Uh, it was <laughs> just he had like a half of a pant leg, like. Uh, and like shoot, I, I, it was just like real sketchy looking. So we were just kind of like hanging out in the in the parking lot eating our donuts. Right. And it turned out it was Mike Reno from Love <laughs> 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 without his red leather pants. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, but you, so you go there, and and the the day progresses. Yeah, and and so we ended up, you know, I, I dropped Kyle at the airport, uh, and then I left, and then I finally was able to pick up Jackie, and that's when we hit the Sunset Strip. So Jackie, you know, you've obviously you've been there before, right? On the Strip, yeah. yeah. My band played there, right. so it was like going back to like, where's Gazari's now? And I was calling up all my old friends and old bands. It's like it's not there anymore. Where's the Coconut Teaser? That's not there anymore. The Viper Room is this room now, and had, had, so it's changed a lot. But was there a lot that you recognize? And that it, 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 well, the, the whistle. Whiskey, yeah. legendary, that's still right there on the corner. I remember and the you, coconut teaser. Right, with that, the yeah. sand all over, like the hay on the floor. My yeah. band played there. And, um, of course, we went to the Rainbow a couple doors down from the whiskey. And um, I love taking Casey Boy there because, you know, he's wearing his sandals and shorts. <laughs> and these kids are, like, lost in the 80s, like I was just telling Chucky D'Amico. It's like everybody was, was dressed like Jackie Bam Bam. No, no. <laughs> yes. They were like bad haircuts and like leather vest, no shirts. Like, dude, if I can only go back in time saying it's not going to happen, get a job. <laughs> but, <laughs> at one point, we, we saw these two guys. Take, the, the, these guys were taking a picture with these two guys who looked like they were in Skid Row. And, um, and I was like, dude, are these? He's like, no. He's like, but these people think that they're somebody. Yeah, all out of towners, yeah, you know. Yeah. Tourists come in there and they see anybody with, you know, Aquanet hair and eyeliner, like in spandex. They're a rock star, so they're getting their pictures taken. And Casey's like, "Who's that? Who's that?" I'm like, "I don't know, dude." So is that the equivalent of like, like dressing up as Elmo and just going down? <laughs> like, yes, like people dress like exactly what I said when we yeah. were there. I swear to God, it's right, right. like this is this is like being at Times Square, right? Where you're you're not actually taking a picture with the actual Elmo, but somebody 
dress like Elmo. These right. aren't actual rock stars, right, right, but right. they're just guys that dress like rock stars. Was the vibe was the vibe still cool? Was I mean, was, was oh, it was yeah. fun? And, and, and Casey, did you? What was your reaction? I to it? loved it. As yeah. a matter of fact, he was trying to leave because I guess he thought maybe I wanted to. I'm like, I'm like no. I know we need to walk around a little bit more. I need to go upstairs and downstairs. I need to check out this place. We and, went everywhere in the yeah. Rainbow Bar and Grill. Of course, you have the Lemmy statue there. I'm like, Casey, get a picture. He's like, no, you get a picture. I'm like, no, I want you to stand next to Lemmy. And I love Casey, boy. He pointed this out in my picture. Everyone puts a lit cigarette in Lemmy's mouth. And he goes, because we went upstairs, then we came back to the statue. He goes, that cigarette was not there. Everyone uh, feeds him a lit cigarette in the statue. That's pretty oh, wild. Yeah. 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 Oh, so yeah. the Viper Room, is is that still? Is it's that there. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's that, there. That in front of the Viper Room is where Joaquin Phoenix River. River right, Phoenix, right, I mean, right, yeah. right. Yeah. But Gazzari's isn't there anymore, the Coconut Teaser, but the Rainbow, legendary, We I sh was showing Casey in the dining room area. It's like two or three floors. Uh, the back table on the far left is Slash's table. They have the, uh, you know, picture of Slash, but there's so many pictures. I mean, Casey Boy was going, there's Vince Neil, there's Ron Jeremy, there's uh, oh, David Sam, Ross, Kinison. Sam Kinison. Yeah. There's pictures everywhere. So uh, it, 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 you could spend a whole week in there looking at the pictures. Is that place, because it's legendary. I don't know if it yeah. still exists, but Barney's Beanery, the... Uh, That's there, but we didn't make it there. Didn't make it there, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't that, know where that was. That's like a rock star. It's, they're known for their chili. Yeah. Oh. And it's, it was yeah. the a big rock star place. Oh yeah, just yeah. like the old Denny's there on the Sunset Strip. So. That's why, that's yeah, why. and then we ended up. Uh, so we we passed by the Comedy Store, and I was like, oh, I wonder who's playing the Comedy Store because like that's the thing about the Comedy Store. It's that's like it. every single night is yeah. like headliner night, right? And you know they have like seven comedians that are that are, all of them could either sell out either helium or or even you know small theaters. But um, there were only just a couple of names on the bill that night. But we ended up turning and going up a hill. It was the steepest hill I'd ever seen. It was like I was in the Edward Scissorhand movie. I'm like, look at this little... I can't believe we got the car through. These streets are so tight. And back in the 80s, I'm like, man, I want to move to L.A. with my band. But now I'm like, different story. I could never live there. No, yeah. no. But uh, but we, we ended up hanging out on, on the strip until, well... Uh, local time, it was after midnight, uh, and I'm like, oh my god, it feels like three o'clock in the morning right now because we had no sense of time mm -hmm. or what day it was at all. But uh, yeah, that was great just to walk on the uh, up and down the strip. Sure, yeah. and with Casey again in his shorts and his sandals and wearing the Sunset <laughs> Strip. But um, what was the uh, the Roxy? I wanted a picture of you with the Roxy, so we got that too. Yeah, so of of the whole Sunset Strip, it was the Roxy that had the most. Yeah. Uh, going on outside, like everybody was hanging out outside. I know the the Rainbow Room. Oh, did you what, what art? Did you see any bands that you knew that were playing? Or? Yeah, Pretty Boy Floyd was up on the whiskey. I remember them, <laughs> and then I even called them. I'm like Steve Sex Summers. Uh, we're outside. Come out and get a picture with us. Of course, he didn't call us back. I called Gilby Clark. I'm like, we're in L. A. A couple guys called us back uh, the next day as we had the board, but it was too late. But as we're walking down the street, I'm like. You just see these people, you're like, okay, that looks like that could be somebody. Right. Yes. But I don't know who it is. Your radar goes up when uh -huh. you're out there because you're like, yeah, you could actually run into somebody. Yeah. Like, yeah. if you, like, people don't wear leather pants around here, right? Right. But, like, everybody was in leather pants, and yeah. I'm like, this guy. You know, as they, we were walking past... Is that the, Pat CJ? Uh, I go, Case, <laughs> turn around. This guy had, uh, it was like Halloween. Ghost white face, yeah. black makeup, cowboy yeah. hat, leather pants, big Marilyn Manson boots. Some cases Mr. Like Sage. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who that is. It could be somebody. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's... But they all used to hang out in front of, um, you know, the whiskey and then, like you said, the rainbow. But you said now the Roxy. You're absolutely correct. I was like, Case, go stand in line. Let's get a picture. <laughs> so how did the date end? So the date ended with uh, Friday. Night. Yeah, with Bam Bam and I uh, heading back to uh, the hotel. He came up to my room. You want to take this upstairs? And, well, he did. <laughs> he, he came up to my room and I gave him a little gift. Uh, I gave him a donut that I got <laughs> from <laughs> Randy's Donuts. <laughs> Uh, when when it was the, like my Dunkin' Donut, you're like, you like the chocolate. I'm like, yes, with the white cream, not the yellow cream. They always screw me. They say cream in the middle, but I want the white cream. That's is right. there a name for that? Yeah, white cream. Yeah, <laughs> but Boston cream is the yellow cream. I want the white cream. In my yeah, donut. I think it's more like custard in yeah. the, with the yellow cream. And What are we talking donuts here? <laughs> All right. So uh, that was Friday night. Did you guys have any plans for Saturday? Is there anything you wanted to do before you got out of there? Because your flight was later in the day to come back. Yeah, and we, we actually had a 4 p.m. checkout as well. So our flight was 1030. Oh. Uh, we didn't have to have the Subaru back until close to seven, so we kind of had the whole day to play with. And so, but we were just we were just fried, right? Yeah, yeah. So, sure. Yeah. It, it, so he really wanted to know like what time, what time, what time. And he's like, give me a ballpark. I'm like, well, was he, was was he staying on fussy? top of things. Well, he wanted to, you know, he, we wanted to spend the day together. But so my ballpark to him was like, I'm like, all right, I, I could be up as early as seven. 
uh, and and as late as ten, right? And he's like, okay, well, just tell me what time. And I'm like, yeah. I just, I just, I just that's all I want to know is what time meet you in a lobby. Uh -huh. That's how we operate it. And I didn't want to, like you said, sit down or lay down because once I turn off, I'm done. And yeah, yeah. so Saturday for me, most of the day was spent by myself because he was sleeping. And uh, and I needed to return. I needed to get to a FedEx store, and so right, all that stuff we heard earlier. But for the most part, Friday was cool. Yeah. And then you wrapped up. You got and what, what, was it good to get back? It was. It yeah. was. And and so we ended up, uh, you know, just sort of looking at the map, and I'm like, okay, this is where the super dealership is, which really is close to the airport, which Excellent. is also close to our hotel. So uh, when he came up to my room a little bit before four, uh, we hopped in the car, and I and I'm like, I I kind of eyed up this this little beach area. So it was like Manhattan Beach, El Porto is. Uh, we went there, and that's where we spent the last two hours of our trip, just kind of sitting on the beach, just watching the sunset. Okay. It, the, the temperature was super comfortable. It was like 75 degrees, yeah. a nice breeze. We hung out, and when we I, we didn't know what to expect when we got to this beach, but when we got down there, he just wanted to see chicks roller skating in their yeah. Uh, I was like, bikinis. is this the beach in all the movies where the chicks go roller skating and like the Y and T summertime girls? <laughs> Video. Oh my God! <laughs> yes. So, hey, uh, Kyle so, Max here. Kyle. Kyle. But real quick, as we were getting ready to leave, these two chicks go uh, rollerblading by. I'm like, Yo, Bam Bam, look! He's like, Oh, I saw it. He, so he wanted to see that, and he wanted to see cactus. And, like, the kind of cactus with, like, the two arms yeah, that go yeah, yeah, up, yeah, yeah. you know? Did and you ever see it? We finally saw him. Right. Uh, and, and it was basically, like, right by the uh, the Subaru dealership where we saw the cactus. <laughs> Yay! And here's your cactus that you wanted and to see. And palm trees and everything. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So Kyle just came into the studio. Hey, man. Hey, what's up? I didn't know you were coming by this morning. I have uh, Casey's headphones. I need to bring them I back. your headphones. Oh. Yes. Swap. Yeah. How yeah. was, uh, we recapped uh, L.A., that's what we were talking about. Your time was very, very short there. Yeah, I think you... I spent most of it asleep. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah, I had to, I had to leave a little, bit, uh, a little bit early because I had a gig. Yeah, had a uh, gig. What was that like, playing a gig after a, a, a cross-country trip? Well, no, it, I, I slept the entire flight. I slept, I got home on this side of the country at like 8.30 in the morning, immediately passed out, woke up at 1.30. I spent... The, la the whole weekend to sleep. Okay. <laughs> so uh, by the time my gig came, I was very well rested. All right, Do you guys cool. have, I wanted to ask a couple of uh, favorite moments from the entire trip. Anything that kind of stands out as like, yeah, that was probably my favorite moment. I mean, looking at the pictures of you guys at the Grand Canyon, oh. that looked, that looked incredible. And it made me realize I have to get back. You got to get back there. I got to take my family. My family has not been. You I can't spend been. too much time at the Grand Canyon. It's, mm -hmm. it's, there's so much to see and re-experience. I think the Grand Canyon for me was the my favorite visage, my favorite thing that I saw. Okay. Um, I think my favorite place to eat was Bobo's Drive-In. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because um, Casey was a huge fan of the burger. I was, a, I think, a more of a fan of the apple pie. Apple oh, pie. Was I mean, amazing. everything there is At just Bobo's? Made, yeah. yeah. Everything right. was made from scratch. What time was that in Bobo's? Uh, Topeka, Topeka, Kansas. Gotcha. All right, so so uh, favorite uh, visual was Grand Canyon. Favorite Absolutely. food was Bobo. What about favorite funnest moment? Uh, well, I think actually the carpool karaoke yeah, was my favorite. Dude, it was, was so much fun. Uh, I can't believe I got Gary Lauer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have, if you didn't hear, we had a guy on the phone, and, and he's, he's a contestant, and he's a bizarrely cogent, and then he starts talking. I think we all at the same time said, you know, you sound like Gary Lauer. It was Gary Lauer. It was Gary. That was crazy. It, my, uh, my mom was like, I've never heard Gary so coherent on the front end. <laughs> yeah. He fooled us all. Yeah. All right, well, Jackie, how about you? Favorite, favorite thing you saw, favorite food you ate, and uh, just favorite moment overall? My favorite food was um, the broccoli at the Texan, what was it called? The, the big, big Texans. Yeah. The big Texans. Because I don't do meat. And I'm like, what do you have for me? She's like, I'll get you a serving of broccoli. But the seasoning we were talking about, I really enjoyed that. Okay. Um, I mean, living that song, Cadillac Ranch from Bruce Springsteen, that was really a highlight for me. I'm like, this is amazing to be here. Okay. Um, and just favorite moment uh, overall sharing with What about the, the surprise? Uh, wa watching and hearing Casey while he's driving behind me like he licks his fingers after he eats. So I, I will never forget that. <laughs> is he is a finger licker. Uh, and it was after no, these was peanut butter. in particular. I was eating peanut butter. Yeah, yeah. And I was really going for it. It's, it's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I just look right in the rear view mirror. I know what you're doing. And he stops and smiles at me. Uh, what about when, when Colleen surprised you in, in Winslow, Arizona? Yo, I have to bring that up. We see a mummer and real Romano, you got yeah. points. Bucks go uptown <laughs> string band and uh, Alan Yvonne Del Bono who made the mummer suit. I see a mummer coming out, uh, you know, 
Where the hell did a mummer come through? Where am I at here? And it was the Uptown String Band suit. I recognized that suit, and she told me her father was part of the Uptown String Band, and she wanted me to have that. And it was just, I was mind-blown. We're strutting with Take It Easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I got to tell you, the one of the best moments was uh, when we got to Palm Springs, we went out to dinner, we went to uh, the Italian restaurant, and, and, and by the way, like this area of Palm Springs, like they shut the street down, and there oh, were a ton yeah. of, yeah, there was a girl singing on the street. Yeah. I walked through a huge cloud of marijuana, smoke uh but when we got to this restaurant preston the guy and he wasn't even our server but this guy was convinced that jackie was a rock star of some sort and he and he like i like i said he he wasn't our server or anything but he spent almost our entire meal over there talking to bam bam about drums and music and press you would have yeah. loved this guy steve gad he's talking about oh, okay. warren uh, you know from zappa's band and missing person serious drummer and you'll okay. hear i mean he was coming at me wow yeah you would have loved it he thought you were a share <laughs> uh so casey food thing you saw and uh just a favorite moment overall all right well okay so i gotta go the, the the Bobo drive-in, the, the chili cheese fries wow. at Bobo's drive-in were it was fantastic. Did you ever have Emo's pizza? Did you ever get one? We never you ended up. You did it! You were in. I know. Well, listen, in my defense, in my defense, when we got to the hotel, wow. I wanted to go on Monday night. But when we got to the hotel, everybody was like, it, it was 14 hours of driving. Yeah. And uh, we were like, all right, let's just chill. Uh, so, And then right. by the time everything was over on on Tuesday morning, yep. we were in St. Louis and we needed to be in Oklahoma City. I'm like, we 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 can't. You know, we 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 already went to, to Duncan, so we had a, a whole bunch of food and coffee. And at that point, and, and I've already had Emos. I just haven't had it fresh out of the oven. I know it's not so the same. Different. Thing. Bobo's yeah, wins with the food. Bobo's right. wins with the food. What for the the site? What was the most? I, hey, listen, and, and I've been to the Grand Canyon yeah. uh, a, a few times in my life, but I was so excited for these guys to see it. And as we're and what's great is like we're where we walked up like. It's not like you just drive up and, and there's the yeah. canyon. Like you drive up, you park, and there's still a whole bunch of trees, and you have to right. walk a little while before yeah. it's in your face. And and even Kyle was videotaping us as we were walking up, and I'm like, dude, stop! Like yeah. you don't have to capture this. Just I want Take I, I want you I, I want you to yeah. see this for yourself. And 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 sure enough, like these guys were just it's like the curtain rose, dropped, and I'm yeah. like, wow! Now it wasn't K, uh, who dug that? <laughs> Jackie was yeah. Jackie was curious about how it was formed. Yeah, he, Jackie. It, he asked if uh, this was just natural or if like the, the, like a bomb or something like that <laughs> land. <laughs> <laughs> but so many layers, and like he, he said, so it many, magical. Yeah. Everywhere you look, you can take a picture, you know, and move three steps aside, and the picture will be different. It's absolutely. amazing. Yeah. It yeah. is uh, uh, just absolutely incredible. Yeah. And, yeah, and there's so many different places to come in on the canyon and and see a whole different sort of look yeah you, you yeah. know what was weird though i thought there would be railing all around and somebody wants to jump if you have a couple of drinks nope. there's no railing there people in some places die, yeah people die almost every year falling off of this i was stuff. asking casey that i'm yeah. like so yeah so we're looking at a picture now of careful. us kind of standing on on a rock cliff and and so we were walking and there was scariest there, selfie <laughs> ever by the way <laughs> there was um there was railing and then at a certain point That's there true. wasn't any railing we were able to step down and you know, listen, the, the picture itself maybe looks a little bit more treacherous than it was, but <laughs> these guys, I don't have a fear of heights. You know, I have a respect, right? So, like, I'm not going to be doing cartwheels on And I, that's why I said that these yeah. guys, these guys were deliberate with every single step that they took. And I'm like, guys, you, you have... You have five yards on either side. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're, not, you're not going anywhere. And a couple but... hundred feet off that <laughs> side. <laughs> uh, wow. But that was, that was, I loved these guys seeing that like that oh, of course. You know, and, and like i said that that day in particular i had to make a choice uh whether or not to see that in all its glory or to watch the sunset in joshua tree and that's the one that i chose so okay i think that was a wise choice mm -hmm. all right then how about just overall moment that was like wow this is so much fun. This is uh, I'm I'm really loving this part of and it. And this is no offense to to Kyle, but it was it was the last two hours that I'd spent with Jackie on the beach in in uh, Manhattan Beach. Like that was for it was uh, I felt like Thanos at the end of Infinity War. Yes. You know uh, when uh, he's just sitting there on his home planet and and he's just kind of like hanging out there. And he gets and, his head cut off. <laughs> yeah. Now, well, that was the beginning of the next right, movie, well, but at the end of Infinity War, he just. Yeah. He just breathes in, and he looks over the horizon, and, you know, he's like, ah. I it's like it. the end of the Camp Alpha Hunger when we're done. Yeah. When oh. we're finished, you know what I mean? Yep, yeah, and we all sit we're on like, the... Look at what all we did this week. Yeah. You know, so I, I could see that. Yeah, we, um, I mean, we, we did a lot. We, we covered a lot of area, and it's like, 
when you ask it, like, so for instance, uh, today's Daily Rush, which is uh, the carpool karaoke, I'm yeah, like, okay. Day three. I'm like, okay, wh what are we doing day three? <laughs> you know, like, wh what day was that? And then you kind of have to go back, okay, we were, we left Oklahoma City on day three. Well, you have it chronicled in, yeah. in, in, in very specific order with lots of video and all sorts of audio. You have a, a great travelogue. It was uh, really magical for us, too. I mean, we had fun following along with you guys all week. I, I enjoyed every day. Every morning was was a blast. Uh, two quick shout-outs. Um, uh, Matt Ritter from Subaru. Like, yeah. Everything that Matt yeah. did to make it easy and great. Thank you so much to, to Matt for all of his help. And then Danielle uh, Yingling from Marriott. Uh, she, everything that we yeah. have uh, asked of her all week, um, she made sure that we could get it done. And so Marriott and Subaru, thank you so much for everything that they provided the Her entire name is week. Danielle Yingling? Yes, it is. Is she uh, related to the Not family? Spelled nope, that. spelled oh, differently, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah, and I had to call Danielle late on, on Thursday night for something, and she picked up right away, so, yeah. so that was a huge help. <laughs> uh, also, Duncan. Uh, Duncan was a huge, huge help for us, and, and uh, another really great moment for me was uh, watching Bam Bam use his Duncan app right. for the very first time. Ah. It was, uh, and we captured it on video. It, it's part Green of muchacho. It's part of the highlight reel, but really you have to see it all by itself. Just give the guy your phone. Tell him what you want, okay? The second the transaction was completed, it's like magic. The, the way he looks over at me and Kyle, like, I did it. He's like, I, I did it. I did it. <laughs> and, I, and I said this in my post. I, I did like a, a, a final blog post, but I just want to talk about how special of a person Jackie Bam Bam is because, you know, here's a guy who who he, he just, wherever he goes, he sticks out like a sore thumb, right? And you, and you can't help but notice him. But there's, there isn't a guy who sticks out like that but also blends in any more than Jackie Bam Bam. He is the neatest person that you will ever come in contact with. And he loved, like, people love him, but he loves people way more. And, and, and I Stop, listen, I'm going to cry. Well, good, because, <laughs> you know, you, you need to hear this. And, you know, he, he doesn't know this about himself. He just, it's because who he is as a, as in the core of his being. But, like, he's been to my house with my mom, right? My mom who goes to church every single day. Yeah, and love she her. loves Jackie Bam Bam. Oh, Jackie Bam Bam, like, prays all the time. Every time. Like, I saw him bless himself a thousand Aww. times this week. And wow. he's just always saying a prayer. And, and also, whenever you guys get, like, a random picture, it's because he's always thinking of other people, right? When we were, we were driving, Fogo to show, all right? Aww. We drove past the Fogo to show in, like, freaking, I don't know, it was California, or I don't know. But he's like, dude, take it, because he's driving. He's like, take a picture of that and send it to Jackson. And I'm like, why? He's like, because he does live reads for so Fogo. And I'm like, okay, I will do that. And so I took a picture of it. I said, I go, hey, um, I am now sending you random pictures for Jackie Pan. Then the Bimbo Breakery we passed, the big truck. For yeah, Pan every yeah, mountain, he's like, oh, Nick. Every <laughs> well, I was thinking of Nick on that date night we went on that mountain. What was the name of that mountain, Case? Uh, Sandia I'm like, mountain. does Nick walk this mountain? Is this the biggest mountain? Kilimanjaro? Did I start yeah. I think I got it. I think yeah. Close enough. Close enough. Yeah. getting used to it. Good yeah. work. I nice. got a special little tribute um, as well, but I think we're not going to talk about that on air. But just don't, uh, Jackie didn't forget about me when he was on the trip either. Oh, oh. never. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, this has been great. We do have to wrap it up, though, because we've got to stay on time for yep. you who loot. So I want to make sure that we do that. But, uh, Jackie, you're in for uh, Pierre this week. Yes. So uh, you'll be heading straight over to uh, the studio here in just a moment. And I'll be back to give you your letter. Yeah, we nice. got to do that in a second. So, But, Kyle, it was great to see you. It was yeah. happy to see you this morning. Yeah, I was very happy to be able to show up here. Dude, thanks for going along. Uh, you're a great addition to this. And obviously the footage you take is is huge. And, and we got to use your singing voice. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. so much fun. It, it was wonderful. Uh, was so, amazing. Kyle Mack, we appreciate it. The name of your podcast again. It's called the Tri-Jam Podcast. The Tri-Jam Podcast. He does a great job on this show. It's awesome. And also, you sing? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to shout out my yes. band real quick, who was very, very uh, uh, understanding when I went to take the trip. They did a gig on Friday without me, but my band is called the FM Band, and go to fmbandmusic.com to find out where we're going to be. We're all over the place. Yeah. Nice. It's funk and soul and fantastic. They're an excellent band, and Kyle is the lead singer. He's a badass, so thank you, man. Thanks. Thank you, guys. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll come back in a second. We did it! And we'll get to the you who loot word. Stay with us. It's a big polar bear singles yeah, yeah. mixer. Are you kidding me? It was, uh, yeah, there were single males, single females, mothers with cubs, and even two mothers with four cubs uh, each. No bears. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. <laughs> Calfer bear. <laughs> Calfer bear. Experts called the this site. This is going to be a new thing that kids are going to, where's my Calfer bear? <laughs> Experts you can't go to sleep unless you give him his Calfer bear. Called the site of so many uh, polar bears together <laughs> unique. You pull the string. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Pull it again. Thick. <laughs> Everyone oh. loves cowboy bear. Oh. Thick. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my God. Okay. So, anyhow, the huge number could, in fact, amount as much of 1% of the entire world's population oh, of really? the creatures. Yeah, tourists initially thought the bears were a flock of sheep. 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 Uh, sheep are al- sick. Although, viewing them, uh, after viewing them from a distance, but as a boat drew closer, uh, the lucky... Those vac- aren't sheep eating that whale. Uh, vacationers realized <laughs> that they were what they were witnessing. The mainly Russian tourists had Just some to... some sheep eating a whale. <laughs> Depart from a stopover on the island <laughs> when they spotted the bears. That seems normal. Just seems like a flock of sheep eating a whale, the way sheep do. I think they just saw them on the hillside, yeah. oh. and they, they thought they were sheep. One of the things that, that I've been wanting to do for a little while, I have uh, Kathy and I both share a, a common ailment. We have lower back pain. We have, you know... A, mildly herniated discs which causes pressure on the nerves in your back and all this stuff and we just our backs hurt all the time but my neighbor has has the same issue and uh he's he's gotten past his problems and so my neighbor Jaime had you know he had done all these things and he, and he also goes oh yeah and I get acupuncture and so it's all of this together has helped completely alleviate it from his life and I'm like well I'm game oh, yeah I'll do whatever I can to, to help <laughs> get rid of this pain so I've never had acupuncture before, and we're going to stick me with these little needles. Today! From Virtua Acupuncture, we want to welcome Heather Schultz uh, to the show this morning. Hey, Heather. Thank you. Hello. Hello. And uh, how long have you been doing this, by the way? I've been practicing acupuncture for seven years. Seven, seven years? Mm-hmm. Okay. And let me ask you this about acupuncture. Now, this has to do with the, the body's nervous system? Or that's what I've always been led to believe? We, the acupuncture's effects do have positive effects on the nervous system. It also deals with the muscular skeletal system. Okay. Um, And when we put acupuncture needles in you today for pain, uh, it releases your endogenous opioids. Um, So you're... you're, Natural painkillers. Okay. In your body. Well, also, we've had some really exciting research lately. It it, um, affects brain neuroplasticity. Um, So your brain changes in response to... Um, stimulus. Okay. And so acupuncture over time can have positive brain changes that help you manage pain better. Okay. And with that, and with doing it over time, how often should someone get treated? You know, say somebody like me who has described what what my issues are. So generally we recommend with chronic injuries, you are going to come in um, once or twice a week in the Mm -hmm. beginning for a couple of weeks and see what happens. And then you start spacing them out more until you don't need to come in that much. Okay. All right, so uh, so you're gonna get in my back and where else? Hands and feet. And Casey, can I get some appropriate music for Absolutely. Preston? Are you are you encouraged by this? I think because you know, yeah, this could be. I know a number of people have had very good um, results this with this. Chinese music, by the way, because it's a Chinese art, I believe, or Chinese uh, medicine. Um, yeah, well, you know, especially my, my neighbor, because uh, I believe him. He's, he's a smart guy, and uh, and he's had pain for years, and and he believes this has worked for him. So I'm like, you know what? Uh, I I will definitely give it a shot. So he's like the neighborhood Fonzie too. Right? He's, he's so cool. Acupuncture school. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, so I got my I got my shoes off. I can just head over there now. All right, Preston's gonna over. walk over. We're watching the process, and Preston soon will be pricked all over his body. All right, and then a question: Can I see one of the needles first, please? Yeah. Oh. Let me see the needle. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! How far I, does that go in? I can almost I can almost not, not even see it. It's so thin. How far in does it go in, uh, Heather? It depends where you're putting it. All right. Okay. Where are you putting it on me? I'm putting it in your low back. Yeah. And how far in will that go? Mm, maybe halfway. So. Oh dear God. Oh, that's my. That's, that's fine. pretty deep. God. That's fine. All right. All right. Wait, 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 Heather. Does it help to have someone in <laughs> Oh my God. Oh, just relax. Oh dear Jesus. You're gonna kill him. <laughs> now I think it has to be a little bit more. This is, supportive, this is Kathy. Be challenging for you. I it will. I You're know. gonna bleed him out. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I tuned we, those guys out years ago. The, should we dim the lights? You want to dim the lights? Let's dim the lights. All right. Just a little bit. All right. All right. Here so we'll dim the lights. I'm trying. I want this to work for Preston. Me so, too. What? All right. So I'm just lying here and I'm waiting for this to happen. All right, Kathy cannot Chair. watch. This is why Kathy was screaming and begging for mercy and okay. telling Preston he was The first die. one's in, and uh, I, I did feel a little, little pinprick, but it didn't feel like it went in very far. How long do uh, sessions usually last? 
So it's going to take me just a couple minutes to put the needles in. Okay. Um, and then I would usually let him hang out for about 25 minutes to let them kind of do their work. We'll try to give him a good run. You know, we can we can run the show. Preston can do most of the show. He, 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 a lot of people don't know most of us do the show completely on our stomachs anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy. What? How much, um... How, how horny how, are you right now? <laughs> how much <laughs> would it take for me to pay you to get one needle? Well, listen, if, if she put it in my back and I couldn't see it, mm -hmm. I, th it it's having to look at it. <laughs> you you yeah, offer 500 bucks? Uh, yeah, yeah. 500. Yeah. I, I, so, Preston, you have a few in your lower back right now. I can't. I didn't even notice. See, um, and Heather, this is, um, I, as it's done, I've seen people do it. There's a little bit of twisting back and forth to, to, to move them in slowly, or how is it? How do you manage to do that without him feeling it at all? The needles are so tiny. So tiny, okay. You can fit... 20 to 30 of these needles in the head of a injection needle like you had earlier oh, okay today. all yeah. right so heather should i just relax and try to center or Preston, i would think of things that you enjoy think of your family uh, think of um um i don't know bukkake your, videos your, your, your favorite bong <laughs> bukkake videos your favorite bong <laughs> I would think of <laughs> I, I, would, I would think of MILFs. Oh, K oh. Parker Preston. That's old school. Yeah. <laughs> I would think of a cup and two girls. Oh, dude. <laughs> uh, all right, so how many needles are in now? Nine needles. Nine total so far, yeah. Are you done putting needles in them? I was going to put one on the top of his head. Please do it. Um... Yeah. Do it. He, he cut his okay. hair extra short. Yep. Oh, there we go. Now, this is the one, Heather, you said has to be driven in with a hammer, correct? <laughs> <laughs> wow, on the top wow. of my head. Yeah. You feel that one, Preston? No. Okay. Is it already in? It's yeah. In. No, I didn't feel that at all. I'll, I'll <laughs> say this. Uh, do you, you you seem at peace, Preston? I know you, you usually yeah. come in here screaming and throwing things around, and here you're at peace. I'm enjoying your this. Do you feel? You, do you feel anything? Uh, no, I'm. I'm just trying to relax, not move, and you know, accidentally roll over and jam these uh, needles all the way into my skin. Well, as Heather said, this is not. This isn't the optimum condition. But if you were to um, follow up and stay at it, do you have every confidence he, he would start to experience the benefits of it? Yes, certainly. Okay. He would start to see oh. benefits within a treatment or two. Within a treatment or yeah. two, Preston. Yeah, and I, I, I plan on it. You remember I uh, said earlier in the week that I think it would be nice if, if everybody uh, tried to do one nice thing. I want to thank my buddy Casey here. Ah, what'd he do? Well, the past few days, I have come into the studio after doing my prep work yeah. uh, in the other room here, and then I come in, you know, about five minutes before the show starts to get ready to begin, and there has been a nice, piping hot mug of coffee sitting Wow. There. Isn't yeah. that... Wow. Isn't that has... That's made my week, week, dude. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and it might know. make my wake, too. <laughs> it made your wake. Hopefully not. We're just planning ahead because, yeah. obviously, the whole Alabama thing. I mean, you, <laughs> know. you never know. You're what flying it? into a hurricane. But it made my week. Thank yeah. you. Simple little gesture now, like that. Today, I was only paying it forward because Steve brought me a nice... Uh, piping hot cup of coffee as well. You see? It's yeah. Spread. The movement it's like, is uh -huh. spreading. It's like cancer. <laughs> yes. No, I mean, it's no. uh, that's not good. It's like, no. it's, like it's a wonderful thing. Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's awesome. So, so do that. Have a cup of coffee ready for somebody when they come in today. They'll be so delighted and happy. Spit in it. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Don't, don't spit in it. Don't no, spit it's, it. it's, it's a wonderful, and you, you feel good when you pay it and, forward. And you know what else has been nice? What? Kathy's been extra gussied up the past couple of days. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. 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 I think it's the glasses. Yeah, maybe it's you a different look. look, really, look for that's you. a sexy look on you. Thanks. <laughs> Jesus. You look, <laughs> you looked much you. better until, yesterday. <laughs> until you just made that face. Yeah, you well, ruined it. Dear God. Oh. Well, thank, right, you. thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she, I just, I'm having issues with my contacts. That's why I wear my glasses. She smushed her face when she said, "Thank you." <laughs> you do look great in glasses, though. You do. If you have uh, people with express, you have large, you have beautiful. Eyes. <laughs> Um, well, oh, thank you. The glasses look. Uh, I think it, uh, girls with glasses. That old thing is it's BS. Hot. I think it's. I, I think they look. You know, it's, it's a great. When my wife got these great frames, I'm like, keep wearing. They look awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know, I wear glasses every day, but at night, right before bed. You know, where I'm in my house, I yeah. don't usually go out in them. But the past couple of days, so I've been wearing them. Why, why not the contacts? Sometimes do they irritate after a while. Uh, no, it's called pink eye. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, okay. So now we're gonna move on to something that uh, that I. Uh, 
I, I've had in mind for a long time, and now it's the dream is coming true. I actually have sitting next to me a bag full of vibrators. Yes. Uh, so th- if that gives you because it's Friday, it's Friday, yeah. and <laughs> sometimes someone likes their butt tickled a little. Well, the best thing was Marissa comes in today and she just walks up next to you. her desk is directly next to mine. She t- uh, turns this bag upside down and just dumps five vibrators out on the table. But it's for there's a, a reason for this madness. There and it's is something that has caught your fancy. You saw a video. I did, and, and you said we got to try this. Probably a couple of years ago, and I'm like, why? Do, why have we never done this? So we've created. Actually, Casey created this. I, I said, dude, can you build me this? He said, well, let me look into it. And sure enough, he has done it. We have in our studio a vibrator race track. So we're gonna do we're gonna do a live test of this track here in our studio. And if this works, then we, we'll have an idea of something that we can expand on okay. this. And I'll, I'll get you that in a moment. So we'll expand you, on dildos. Do you want to try this out? I do yeah. very All much. Right, so I'm gonna reach in and just randomly grab one. Now you've never met these dildos. I've never met this. So I've, I grabbed a. <sighs> you picked a good. Is this a pink one? Yeah. Yeah. So that's kinda, yours. Yeah. So this will be me. Okay. And then here. <laughs> I'm rubbing it on the microphone. The force is strong with this one. And, and we'll do a couple. We'll, we'll try a couple of these and see um, if it's if it's. I the, don't want that one. <laughs> the, just grab one. Preston, at the adult oh. store, is this the way most people select their stuff? Yeah. <laughs> they reach they into a, a big bag. bag. You reach in here. You go. All right, thank you. I went with this one. You can see it vibrate. Wow, that, oh one my God. Is, that one's much louder than mine. Hang on. Big. Take it away. This is mine. And then yours. Okay. Casey has what I would call the hot rod. <laughs> what color is this? Copper? Uh, like a maroon. No, nah, like a burgundy. Burgundy, yeah. Burgundy. I'm okay. gonna like. On, Mine Kathy. is sort of a happy medium. All right, Kathy. There are two remaining. Well, I, I, feel good, I feel bad that Marissa can't take part. Kathy's reaching in. First time ever, her hand has been on a on a vibrator. Oh, she oh. got one. You who loot. Now listen up. Here's your keyword. The word is hope, H-O-P-E, as in, I hope I win this money. Hope is the word, H-O-P-E. You have until 15 minutes after the hour to enter it. Three ways for you to do it. You can text it to the special contest short code number, which is 45911, or enter it via the MMR app or at WMMR.com, and one random entry wins $1,000 in this company-wide contest. Each winner gets a call from Beasley. Make sure that you do answer your phone. Contest rules available at WMMR.com. It is sponsored by Horizon Services. And if you don't win now, don't forget, noon, three, and five. Again, today alone. But let's focus on now. The word is hope. H-O-P-E. We wish you good luck. We have a final look at traffic. Let's go ahead and get that now, Kathy. What's going on? 95 southbound in Christiana, Delaware, 273. The off-ramp closed. Uh, They're mowing until 1030. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre Final. All right, let's pick up where we left off. I've got some great stories to share with you. We'll start with this uh, sort of local. What began as an unaccounted welfare check turned into an unsuccessful chase after a naked man with a white cloth wrapped around his head. Uh, Yesterday morning, police said. Well, my head was cold. Northern Lancaster County Regional Police arrived in Lancaster County at around 2.20 a.m. Friday morning for a welfare check on an unidentified man. And the officers checked the area. They spotted a nude Caucasian man about six feet tall with a white cloth around his head walking in the distance (laughs) and gave chase. The police report We're pursuing said, a cotton Q-tip. The police report said this incident might be related to other investigations involving similar reports of quote nude male <laughs> nightwalkers. Wow. 
Police were unable to locate the man, but encourage anyone with information on the incident to submit an anonymous tip. A Scottish man shared the moment that he had to rescue a squirrel from his house after it got stuck in his toilet. Glasgow man Mark Thorburn found the rodent in his bedroom on September 12th, and while attempting to chase it out of his house, the squirrel accidentally fell down the loo. The little best is in my toilet. He said, I had been out of the house rushing for a few hours, and when I came back, I could hear a rustling in my bedroom. Mark said that he was trying to get the squirrel to go out of his bedroom window when it <laughs> ran into the bathroom instead. He said, he fell down the toilet, Aww. and I couldn't get, and he couldn't get out. I was about to lift him, and then I panicked that maybe I shouldn't. I Googled, and it said that you shouldn't because they can spread diseases and bite, so I didn't want to take any chances. My flatmate, Ewan, came home just after that, and we decided that we'd call the SPCA. When I told them what was happening, they said that they could come and get it out, but they would have to kill it because it is too dangerous to put back into the wildlife. Aww. I was looking, he said, I was looking at his wee face and felt so guilty. Please don't kill me. At the thought of it being killed. I didn't mean to fall into your toilet. Uh, so me and Ewan decided that we'd try to save it Aww. ourselves. There we go. And Operation Save the Squirrel began. In the video, Mark can be heard shouting at the squirrel saying, Come on, pal, let's go. Bath time is over. <laughs> Why are you in here? Oh, no, that's such a shame. We need to get it out. Uh, Mark and Ewan came up with a plan to help usher the rodent out. They put a broom down the toilet, and the squirrel climbed up the pole. But first, I'll give you a flotation device. Uh, after another adventure scurrying around the house, the squirrel finally made it outside. That's and miraculous. Mark said he sat at the front door a good 10 minutes before he hopped off. He must have been knackered, the poor wee thing. I'm so knackered. Thankfully, uh, he's not made his way back to our house yet, but he has appeared at the window uh, another few times. So they got him out of there, which is nice. <laughs> Squirrel out of the toilet. Mm. A Denver man has been found guilty of murder for using an AK-47 to shoot and kill a 21-year-old woman because her dog defecated outside his apartment. Wow, that's a little overly aggressive. Uh, yes, Michael Close had pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity, but a jury on Thursday convicted him in the shooting after concluding that he knew what he was doing when he gunned down Isabella Thales and wounded her boyfriend, Darian Simon. Uh, pr prosecutors allege that uh, Close had gotten into a verbal exchange with Thales and Simon as they encouraged their dog, Rocco, to relieve itself in a rock garden outside Close's apartment. Uh, Close yelled out the window at the couple as they urged the pop to uh, the pup to go potty. He said, "Are you going to train that effing dog or just yell at it?" Um, and sounds nice. Close then grabbed an AK-47, which he had taken oh. from a friend who uh, was a Denver police sergeant, and fired 24 shots. Mm. Thales was struck in the back and died at the scene just two days after celebrating her birthday. Her boyfriend was wounded in the leg and buttocks. After the shooting, Close got into his Mercedes with the AK-47 and a handgun and fled, but he was busted during a traffic stop later that day. Uh, Close cried as the verdict was announced after less than a day of deliberations, as did the members of Thales' family who attended the hearing. Uh, he faces mandatory life term yeah. when he is sentenced on November 4th. Henry Clay High School uh, English teacher Nathan Spaulding said that he was logging into his computer in his classroom on Wednesday when he noticed what looked like a scrunchie on the phone. He said, I got closer and realized it was a snake. Oh, God. <laughs> Spaulding said the incidents are indicative of infestations and the school uh, uh, in the school that include mice, roaches, and spiders. On Thursday, Spaulding said a mouse fell from the ceiling in a different classroom. You think that's bad? I had a squirrel in the toilet. While a colleague was teaching, and it landed on a student's desk oh, and man. caused quite a commotion. Yet another co-worker has had three mice fall from her ceiling this school year, though not when students were in the classroom. The custodian, she said, uh, have been using glue traps to catch them. However, some mice will chew off their limbs to escape the glue. A custodian removed the snake with tongs and took it outside. Spalding said the incident on Thursday was the first that he had heard of a mouse falling from the ceiling with students in the classroom. That's horrifying. He said, we also got back at the, uh, got, we also had a mouse run through the cafeteria during our back-to-school faculty meeting. Yay. Okay. Fellow teacher Jenny Ward said that mice have run through her classroom. She said everyone in the building, including administrators, is doing everything they can to help with the problem. But she said district officials should match that energy if they could. So they got things crawling all over the place. And then finally, one last story. A decomposed body 
fell out of a trash bin during a garbage truck pickup in Detroit, Michigan. A body was found by a garbage truck worker who was picking up trash on Wednesday afternoon. Police said that the worker was uh, emptying cans in front of houses when he allegedly saw a body fall into the truck. What day do you put out the bodies in your neighborhood? Uh, it's usually a Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the body was badly decomposed. Officials have not determined the identity of the person or the cause of death. Investigators are waiting to uh, check the medical examiner's report. Uh, no suspects have been identified, and no further information has been released as of yet. And there you go. That's what I have in the bizarre file for you right now. All right, we got a um, little under five minutes left for you to enter the word hope. That is our you who word for this point in time. A chance for you to win $1,000 sponsored by Horizon Services. So the word to enter is hope. H-O-P-E. Get on it now. If you miss now, we have a couple more times today, but let's get this in the books and you winning $1,000. All right, good luck to you. We'll come back. We'll get the lesson question, the trash, the music news when we come back. Yeah. All right, stop. Hold on. Ready? Play up. <laughs> what is it? That's very cool. All right, Nick. Pull yours up. All right, so in uh, typical McElwain fashion, I got the skinny pink one. Yeah, you yeah. did. You got the littlest one. <laughs> this one gets job done fast. Hey, let's go racing, fellas. Yeah! yeah! Boogity, boogity, boogity. <laughs> All right, so take your take your chosen vibrator over to the tracks. We have to turn them all on. All right, they're placing them on the track. I'll call the race. Ready and three. Two, one, begin. And they're all. Oh, Steve's is taking off yes, down the middle. Yes, Steve's yes, already crossed the finish yes. line. Yes! In second place is. Who was that? The blue one. Who, Casey! Casey came in second, followed by Nick McElwain, Ooh. third. Oh. Look at me. I'm uh, Kathy Romano is fourth, and mine is not even halfway down yet. Oh my god. That a despicable is, display. It's still just taking its time. Where's Kathy? Kathy's finished. Wow. Here comes mine rattling down. Still not across the finish line yet in three, two, one, and there it is. Oh, wow. Preston, does yours have the most girth? No. <laughs> Casey's does. <laughs> Surprisingly. Let's put him back up on the on the track again, and we'll try. I'll turn the mic back up on there. You're out! Yeah, it's <laughs> too fast. It's too fast. It's too fast. Man, do All I right. know how to pick a fast dildo, though? Get him in place. Oh, Let's my God. It. Preston, uh, we've been to both the Poconos and Daytona. And Dover. That same sense, I mean, Dover, that same sense of excitement. All right, we got them lined up. You ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Let's go race it. And here we go. Now we got to race. Oh, man. Now, Casey's is off to the lead, but it's neck and neck. Nick McElwain is pulling ahead. Come on! And it's taken a full length lead at this point, but you never know what might happen towards the end. Nick is still headed towards the finish line. He's hey. just about there. Casey's slowed down considerably. Nick, our winner. Woo! All right, now it's uh, it's neck and neck for uh -oh. third head and, and head. fourth. It's head and head. Kathy is making way here. Casey's is coming up. And Ooh. Kathy's is slowly catching mine, which has now trailed the third place. All right, Casey came in second. Kathy looks like she's going to take... I'm going to come in last place again. Again! Man. Look at this. And Kathy in fourth. All right. Me in last place. Son of a bitch. Now, I want a new dildo. All right, our next guest is ready to go. Man, we've had so many people here in the studio. And we saved the rock and roll for last uh, because it's rock and roll time late in the show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we're happy to have him here this morning performing at the TLA tonight. Party, we uh, please welcome Andrew W.K. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Hey. Thank you very much. Good morning, sir. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Here. Yes, thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, you know, as, as I said, rock and roll time early in the morning. Difficult. You build up to it. Yeah, you build up. <laughs> it's sort of a way of calibrating your system. And it has been quite a lineup. I've been enjoying the uh, preview. <laughs> Uh, tweets and posts that you guys have been putting up. So I feel very privileged to be included in such an illustrious group of folks. It well, is pretty you. amazing. But, uh, yeah, there has been a, a great deal of excitement about you, and uh, you have a very loyal fan base, and that's got to be very rewarding, right? 
Well, uh, we're all in this party together, and I certainly don't take it for granted that there are other folks that identify with this celebratory attitude, and uh, we're all looking for the same thing, that kind of enthusiasm, that kind of joy, that kind of party fuel that helps you get through each day and make the most of it. Well, listen, I think it's, uh, it, it is a huge badge of honor when you have uh, reached a point in your career when you've actually become a, a Halloween costume. <laughs> yes, and, and I designed it that way to make it very easy. <laughs> As you can see, anyone uh, can find a white T-shirt. The white jeans can be a little harder to find, yes. but uh, they're not always that hard. Even painter's pants will do if you don't have anything else. And, uh, yeah, you throw on a wig and a bloody nose, and you're good to go. <laughs> but generally, you go with denim for the, the pants? I white do. denim? Yes, the denim is durable, um, and I need durability. <laughs> I need support. I need uh, yeah. that hard Harder, thicker fabric. Uh, and denim is absolutely serves that bill. So. It does. It and really it, does. The costume is cool enough that people in the know, you can kind of say, okay, they, they know. And other people like have no clue. So you, you can break up the crowd immediately. Yes. Uh -huh. It's a litmus test for partiers. <laughs> right. yeah. I used to wear white pants all the time when I was Did a you? Kid. Yes. <laughs> you and now, Mr. Rourke. They weren't denim. They were just like, you know, whatever kind of fabric of cotton or something like that. But I can't. I can't because like nine times out of ten, I'm walking around with skid marks. And I no, just that's can't the point. Them. Oh. It's, <laughs> that's the whole point. Those are the hard-earned party stains. you got to showcase those yeah. proudly. They're like bruises, man. Exactly. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, we, we wanted to welcome uh, somebody else here into the studio because she's a massive fan. She produces our afternoon show, so she came in very, very early for this. Uh, Sarah Parker is yeah. here. Yeah. Hi. 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 And Sarah made it a point to be here uh, nice and early in the morning. What is it you love about uh, Andrew W.K.? Oh, my gosh. The fact that he is so very positive, you know, especially nowadays. So many crappy things are happening in this world, right? You look at the news and you just get upset. But Andrew is the shining light of positivity. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm thinking that perhaps you should explain what partying means to you. Because someone who's ah. not familiar with Andrew WK might think that's just drinking all the time. So what does partying mean to you? Well, it certainly could mean drinking all the time for someone. I'm not really here to tell someone what it is. I guess I chose that word because I thought it was actually something that everyone did understand, that everyone was familiar with that. It didn't take a lot of uh, explanation or elaboration that a four-year-old or a 94-year-old, I should say a 93-year-old or a 33-year-old, they all understand in some way how to enjoy the fact that they're not dead. And that's really the beginning and the end of the party mindset. Um, you can apply it as vastly or as simply Simply as possible. Uh, there's a great video of Andrew. If you haven't seen it on uh, on YouTube, you can find it. He's being interviewed, and uh, the interview is asking a pretty long, drawn out question. <laughs> and in that time, Andrew's face contorts into um, a, a scowl of sorts. And then you answer the question very quickly, and uh, it's hilarious. It's got over like three million views. But are, are you, uh, faces? Is that something you were always good at as a kid? Were you making, uh, you know, earning? You know, yeah. Yeah, hamming it up. I yeah. mean, the, the face is uh, a very fun thing if you can control it. Uh, I don't have complete control. I think in that uh, s video you're talking about, maybe some kind of demon took control yes. of my face. But <laughs> very much so. Let them let them have have at it. Let I mean, them out. Yeah, let them have their fun with my my face. <laughs> you seem to be obsessed with pizza. Well, uh, who isn't, really? I mean, even That's the person true. who hates pizza the most, they still are engaged in the phenomenon. You have a, a, a guitar? Uh, sh uh, look like a pizza slice. I have a pizza slice guitar. Which is pretty badass. Well, thank you very much. Thank you to the great folks at ESP Guitars for making it for me. Yeah, very nice. And we um, just made another one, too. Yeah, a taco I, guitar, right? That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Literally, it's just days old. It's that. It's still oh, a very oh, fresh. Really? Yeah, I've only played it, I think, maybe five times now on stage. We just got it during this tour. Okay. Hey, Andrew, with the, with your signature look, the uh, uh, the whites and, and the, the bloody nose, did the bloody nose happen by accident at some point? And then you were like, hey, that's that looks kind of cool. That was part of the initial vision I was presented with, so I executed huh. that um, in a rather painful way. But I have gotten bloody noses on stage by accident, much to my dismay. Uh, right. Most of them were um, accidentally self-inflicted, meaning I kicked myself in my own face. When I was trying to do a very impressive high kick um, in New Orleans, for example, I saw a friend in the, the crowd I hadn't seen in years. I said, I'm going to really blow his mind. I'm going to do the highest kick of all. And it was so high that I almost kicked through my own head. Wow. And, but I got a bloody nose. I did break my nose that night as well, which, as you can imagine, is, is rather painful. But the uh, adrenaline got going and the blood started flowing and people thought it was all just part of the show. Hey, listen, man, thanks for getting up early and stopping by. We yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about partying. Of course. Have a great time <laughs> in Philadelphia. Andrew WK, yeah. friend. We love this guy who's in our studio. He's, uh, he's a great guest. He's a great star. And uh, he's got a film that he is promoting. Uh, it's coming up on Netflix, and it is called Wheel Man. Let's welcome him back to our studio, Frank Grimm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome.
How you doing, man? I'm doing great. It's good to see you again. Yeah, I miss you guys. We miss yeah. you as well, buddy. You came in and you, you blew us away the first time we had you in, in the studio. Great stories and full of energy. And we, <laughs> obviously you were attached to something. We were just, you know, the, the, the Purge and obviously the, the Marvel Universe as well. Got to tell you, man, the Wheelman is a solid movie. Yeah, you saw Shamu it? I did see it. Yeah. On, uh, uh, the, we got the advance. Uh, uh, it's going to be on Netflix, yep. which is turning out to be Valhalla for these kind of films. It's amazing. I mean, this film, you know, cost five million bucks. Me, my, my buddy Joe Carnahan and I. Joe Carnahan uh, is the the gray. Yeah, the gray uh, and and uh, smoking aces and and narc and uh, love his stuff. Yeah, he's great. So we're partners with this company War Party, and we we made this movie for like five and a half million bucks, which which is insane because you know, but you that's the that's the deal. You're producing this movie. Yeah, is your first pro- and really we you know boots on the ground like we produced the movie. Yeah, so yeah. you did it in in, uh, in Boston. In Boston. Okay, yeah, at night. So that's a, a point I want to make about this movie, which makes it so unique. You have the first a first time director Jeremy. Rush, who yeah. wrote the, the screenplay. By the way, the guy was a PA for 13 years. Right. right. Never, Never directed anything. This this yeah. idea that he has, which is very cool. That so you get the you get you're in this car and you're you're a wheel man. You're a, a, a driver for hire for for criminals. Right. You're gonna go on this. Uh, you take these guys out. They're gonna rob a bank. But you get this call. The guys when they get back in the car are gonna kill you. And now there's this stuff, and you're off and running, and it's all, it has everything I love about a period of time in Hollywood, 70s movies. That's it. High, like a high yeah, concept. Wait a minute. Did you talk to somebody? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're, you're, you, when you turn badass, <laughs> there's a scene where you grab a guy, you know, you pull up. But the, to get back to my original point, there's angles from the car. When you leave the car, a lot of times you're seeing you through the windshield, and you're hearing... And you bring the guy back. And so yeah. the car itself is a character it is. In, it is. in the thing. And so you have your claustrophobia, but it's also your one way of getting away from the crap. Yeah. And I and there are angles and stuff uh, that I thought were just really brilliant for a first-time director. Like yeah. yeah. October 8th. Tickets on sale at LiveCasinoPhilly.com. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. What's going on this morning, Steve? Well, Anthony Anderson, unable to return for season 29 of Law & Order, so producers had to creatively write his character out of the series. Apparently, Detective Bernard will die a hero's death after pushing an old woman out of the way of an attacking velociraptor. Wow. Hey! Jennifer Lopez taking the taken route in a new movie where she plays a former assassin trying to rescue her kidnapped daughter. Teasers for The Mother promise a woman with a, quote, special set of skills and a large fleshy ass. <laughs> oh, my God. And finally, Hilaria Baldwin giving birth to her seventh child with Alec Baldwin. The newborn joins the other kids, Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, Michelangelo, Splinter, and April O'Neil. Yeah. <laughs> and that's your Hollywood track. All right, we're going to go over here to the phones and see if we can get an answer to this question. According to the Space Force anthem, when you're uh, Ralphing in the dark, Connie knows what. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go to Tommy, see if we can get it right. Hey, Tommy, good morning. Hey, what's up, guys? All right, buddy, we're just seeing if you know this. Uh, when you're Ralphing in the dark, Connie knows what? She knows your balls are blue. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Hang on, Tommy, you got it right. <laughs> we're going to give you a Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers prize pack. That includes a soft cooler, T-shirt, koozie, and Raising Cane's gift cards for free. Combo meals and soft drinks. Uh, Raising Cane's is focused on being the best one thing and uh, best at one thing and getting it right every time. Raising Cane's chicken fingers coming soon to Fairless Hills in the court at Oxford Valley. Now, Preston and Steve's music news on 93.3 WMMR. Yeah! Yeah! Brought to you by Family and Company Jewelers. Congratulations to our friends at Family. They were just named SJ Magazine's Best Bridal Jewelry Store for 2022. Route 70 in Marlton, New Jersey, or online at familyjewelers.com. So tomorrow night is Taylor Hawkins' tribute concert. It will be at LA's Kia Forum, boasting a lineup that can stand proudly next to the Wembley Stadium show. So I've got a list of the majority of performers that will be there. And, of course, you can probably add a couple extras that are oh, yeah. uh, going to be surprised. Uh, shows. But these are in alphabetical order, by the way. So uh, Sebastian Bach, uh, Travis Barker, Geezer Butler, uh, Matt Cameron from Soundgarden and Pearl Jam, Danny Carey from Tool, Chris Chaney uh, from Jane's Addiction, and he was also in the Taylor Hawkins and the Coattail Riders. Uh, the band Chevy Metal will be there. Phil Collin of Def Leppard. Stuart Copeland will be there. Miley Cyrus. Elliot Easton of The Cars, Joe Elliott of Def Leppard, Violet Grohl, 
Omar Hakim, great drummer, by the way. Uh, Justin Hawkins of The Darkness. Uh, Josh Homme from uh, Queens of the Stone Age. Uh, the James Gang will be there. Joan Jett, John Paul Jones from Zeppelin and the Crooked Vultures, of course. Kesha will be wow. there. Wow. Huh. Yep. Uh, Getty Lee, Tommy Lee, Alex Lifeson, Brian May, Taylor Momsen, Alanis Morissette, Chris Novoselic, Pink, Rick Savage of Def Leppard, Nikki Six will be there, Chad Smith is going to be playing, Jeez. Luke Spiller of the Struts, Roger Taylor, Kim Thale of Soundgarden, Lars Ulrich, Wolfgang Van Halen, uh, Brad Wilt from Rage Against the Machine, Nancy Wilson from Heart, and Pat Wilson from Weezer, and there will be more on top of that. Wow. Y you know... Mm. Obviously, things play out the way they are, but could you imagine how blown away Taylor himself would be to see that many people yeah. getting together in yeah. tribute? Amazing. Yep. And how long is the concert going to be? I don't know. It's got uh, to be, be long. Yeah, because yeah. the one in, in Wembley was about, really long. Like four hours? Yeah. Right? Yep. Press Larissa, how much was it? It Six? was seven hours. Seven, okay. Six hours, something like that. Oh, my like God. It. Wow. So, Connor is going to this tomorrow night. So, uh, when he gets back, uh, we'll have to get a, uh, you know, firsthand account of how things went at this event. But, yeah, you would hope that he that he knew uh, before he passed it he was well-received and well-liked uh, in this community. And I'm sure he did because he, oh, yeah. he made a ton of friends. He reached out. Do, do you think he could sit for a seven-hour concert? Uh, what? If, like if, 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 if I could, yeah. Oh God, no. Yeah, yeah. no way. <laughs> Not inside like that. Maybe if it was at like the Coachella Music Grounds, and you could I wander had, around. Yeah, I wander around a little bit, sit in a in a lounge chair or something. I could do it that way. All right. Yeah. Not. Uh, and I I passed by the forum on Saturday. Uh, pretty cool looking venue from the outside, but yeah, it's it's definitely smaller than Wembley. Uh. Yeah. Uh, following up his recent uh, re-recordings of Panama and Ain't Talking About Love, David Lee Roth has uh, issued a newly recorded live in-studio take of Van Halen's Dance the Night Away. Uh, like the other recordings, or the other re-recordings, a new track was cut as part of a 14-song session back in May at L.A.'s Henson Studios. It's unclear if all the songs um, are early Van Halen retreats, retreads, or uh, whether... Any new material was also committed to tape. We'll have to wait and find out about that. Elton John was left teary-eyed and flabbergasted after being awarded a surprise National Humanitarian Medal by President Biden following a concert at the White House. This was on Friday night. It wasn't uh, about the tape songs? Not about the tape songs. Oh, tape right. your mouth song. Uh, mouth no, that's song the uh, uh, United Nations presenter. <laughs> right. right. Gotcha. Because tape is uh, a global... Uh, John has uh, championed various charities and humanitarian causes, especially those tackling HIV-AIDS. Uh, flanked by the president and first lady, uh, uh, Elton was uh, wearing his signature red-tinted spectacles, and he looked visibly shocked Aww. as uh, he first spotted the medal, and he covered his face with his hands in disbelief. He said, I am never flabbergasted, but I am flabbergasted and humbled and honored by this incredible award from the United States of America. Uh, he said, overcome uh, overcoming uh, moments of uh, clutching Jill Biden's hand and hugging her husband. He said, I will treasure this so much. Uh, the Grammy Award singer praised America's kindness to me as a musician, calling it second to none, and vowed that his new medal would push him to redouble his efforts to help eradicate... Uh, eradi er <laughs> it should be eradicate. They wrote irradiate? Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Irradiate. Yeah. Eradicate. To soak it in radiation. Yeah, right? uh -huh. uh, the illness that impacts more than 38 million people globally, so good for him. Travis Barker has announced that his wellness company will include a vegan skincare line. Ooh, this is what I've been looking for. The Blink-182 musician will be expanded, expanding with five products infused with CBD. It includes a two-in-one face cleanser and mask, a daily moisturizer, an eye serum, Ooh. a face serum, and a renewal bomb. At first, I thought it said a renewal brain. <laughs> <laughs> the walking dead line of brain enhancements. Renewal bomb. Uh, Barker doesn't just sell vegan products. He also wears them. In a recent interview with People, he said that when you see him wearing leather, it's not real. It's vegan, right down to his Doc Martin boots. Uh, the products that he sells are described on his website as all-natural, vegan, fragrance-free, and none... Uh, comedogenic, comedogenic. I'm not sure what that word means. Neither do I. C O M E D. It's not funny, is what it means. Oh, it's not funny. genic. Not funny or or photographable. Com com Causes blackheads. Kayaki, kayak. 
Blocks yeah. the pores of the skin. Oh, okay. Blocks the pores uh, of the skin. Yes. Yeah. Uh, prices range from eighty-five dollars to one hundred thirty dollars, and available on uh, Barker Wellness's his website. That thing. <laughs> <laughs> that thing. <laughs> and uh, um, it's all vegan. This was sad to see. The Doobie Brothers' original drummer and co-founder John Hartman passed away Aww. on the twenty-third of an undisclosed uh, cause. He was seventy-two years old. Uh, Hartman, who initially was the band's sole drummer. Uh, was an integral part of the Doobies during their meteoric original run. Starting in 1973, he drummed alongside second drummer Michael Hasek, uh, who was then replaced by Keith Knudsen. Uh, Knudsen had died uh, February 8, 2005 uh, from complications related to pneumonia. Hartman split from the band in 1979, only to join forces with the Doobies again on their initial reunion albums, uh, 89 Cycles and 91's Brotherhood. After which he retired from the music business, he was inducted alongside the Doobie Brothers into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2020. So sad news there for the Doobies. And an announcement was posted on uh, Dead and Company's social media sites announcing that next summer's tour will be the band's last. What? Uh, the group was formed back in 2015, along with Grateful Dead members Bob Weir, Mickey Hart, and Bill Krutzman. Uh, the band is rounded out with guitarist John Mayer, former uh, Allman Brothers Band bassist O'Teal Burbridge, and longtime Rat Dog and Dead Sideman keyboardist Jeff uh, Jeff <laughs> Jeff Chimendi. <laughs> choose <laughs> music, music fans, choose Jeff. Um, do you see the potential of a super group between the Grateful Dead and Motley Crue? <laughs> Why not? I mean, now that you know that they're retiring. Uh, last April, Rolling Stone had jumped the gun uh, in reporting that the band was calling it quits after the 2022 run, but it was quickly shot down by both Weir and Krutzman. Uh, the band both has posted a statement across social media platforms that read, as we put the finishing touches on booking venues and understanding that world travels fast, uh, word travels fast. Uh, we wanted to be the first to tell you uh, that the Dead and Company will be hitting the road next summer, and that will be our final tour. So there's a documentary. I don't know if it's new. It seems very new, and I, I maybe it was Paramount Plus. I was watching at the time, but uh, it's really good. I'm not. I'm not a massive Grateful Dead fan, but uh, the story of the early days of the band and the, and the you know the, the incredibly committed fan base. Mm -hmm. It's pretty wild, and especially seeing oh, yeah. some archival footage. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm intrigued by all that stuff yeah. too, and and I like the hits. Sure, I just don't do the deep stuff and the the, the live shows, which I did do one. It just it wasn't my flavor, wasn't my no. thing. But I, but listen, I can listen to some dead songs and, and get sure. into them and enjoy them. But and appreciate it. But what I don't understand is the fanaticism. I'm intrigued by it. Yeah, I think it's cool, but I just not my thing. So, uh, and then finally, Bob Weir had uh, had posted. Well, it looks like that's it for this outfit, but don't worry. We'll be out there in one form or another until we drop. Is his so. daughter going out on tour? Uh, uh, you would hope so. She's stunning. And that is what I have in music news. And that means we are going to take a break. I'm going to give away the last of these. We have a movie premiere. It's tonight at the UA King of Prussia. And Casey will be there. It's the greatest beer run ever. Right? And it's if a true you, story. If you would like to go, uh, just be one of our 10 callers right now because I... I Waited too late to give these away, and I didn't realize we had so many. So we'll take 10 callers, 215-263-WMMR. Click uh, contest at WMMR.com. You might have another chance to win. That might be over with, but you can check it out. But nonetheless, be one of the first 10 callers right now. We'll set you up with tickets to that tonight. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll come back in a second. Jackie is indeed here. We were talking to him a little while ago. He is filling in for uh, Pierre this week, and we'll get the letter of the day, word of the week from him when we return. Stay with us. Carnahan read it and gave him some notes, and they started dialogue, and uh, he sent it to me, and I was like, man, this is really interesting. Like, would, this could be really bad or really good. I, we brought it to our agency. They brought it to Cannes, and Netflix bought it, like, the next day, and we were making the movie in a month and a half. That guy was knocking on doors for 13 years. But it took, it took like, a, a did, so Car uh, Carn 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 if, if the, not for Joe Carnahan, it wouldn't have happened. What did you not anticipate being a producer of a movie that caught you off guard? Um, you know, I, we, at one point, this movie was going to be 23 days, which is kind of Herculean in right. itself. And we were like, I think we could save money. Let's make it 19 days. <laughs> so I shot like 35 pages of dialogue the last two days of the film.
Wow. So, so we could save like eleven dollars. <laughs> well, because it's, it's, you're on the other side of the yeah. uh, of the of the uh, yeah. the check now, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you you're, you're now to save as an actor, you might piss him on as I, I need a little bit more time or whatever. On the producer side, he's yeah. just saying, can we do this for cheaper? Yeah. I have to bring this up too. Uh, doing the research on this movie, Wolf Warrior 2, which yeah. is, explain where this is. Well, we have not heard Wolf much War about this movie. No, because it's not in America. But globally. How about this? So I do a movie in China last year, right? And it's a big deal because you want a Chinese kind of presence. But uh, uh, it had there had been a Wolf Warrior 1. It was very successful. Made like 100 million bucks. And they, they paid me a lot of money yeah. to go to China. J Joe and Anthony Russo produced it. They produced, they're, they're the directors of uh, Captain America. Yeah. They said, go do this. It's our whole stunt crew is going to really. And so I went and did it and made a ton of money. The movie's going to make a billion dollars. Oh, my God. It's like the, the highest. It is the second highest domestic grossing film ever behind Star Wars. Yeah, what? and I play a character named Big Daddy. I'm the bad American. Yeah, okay. Wait, uh, you have okay. to see the jacket I'm wearing. <laughs> all right, we're looking <laughs> at the show. It. We're looking we're, at the trailer. This was all shot right in now. China, by the way. <laughs> I am, and I'm going to say this on the radio: the biggest American star <laughs> <laughs> in China. <laughs> yeah, this Dude, movie is a phenomenon. I was okay. reading the numbers yeah. on it, like surpassing. Yeah, you got to realize globally where this movie falls. Well, yeah, we, we, the list. we live in this tiny little bubble in the United States, right? And, and there's a I mean, there are more people in China, yeah. meaning there's there's more money to be made, I guess, over oh, there. Yeah. Well, yes. that, that's what happens. And they, they talk about you opening up in other markets and so on and so forth. Their movie opens up in India and does well. The Bollywood, you know, is, is a Yeah, I mean, this is literally the second. This is only behind Star Wars. It's, it's <laughs> like, so, like, Joe Russo called me and goes, you are a unicorn now in China. <laughs> We're going to go make Lethal Weapon. It's with you and a, and a Chinese movie star. We're going to go do Lethal Weapon next year. So when you, when, right. when you play a bad guy wow. and you, you're known for that you're sort of a bad yeah, guy, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I played it campy, like I was over the top. Uh, oh yeah, oh, that's in China. Be I didn't think anybody was going to see it. <laughs> 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 I was like Al Pacino in Scent of a Woman. <laughs> 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 that's great. Look, okay. that's Big Daddy. Oh, oh man. Yeah. man, I represent everything bad about the world. Wow. <laughs> hey, where did you guys shoot uh, for Captain America: Civil War? Was that in Africa? Uh, part part of it was in I think part of it was in Africa. I didn't. I was always in uh, in Atlanta. And by the way, Crossbones is not dead. Is he dead? I don't know. He seems dead. <laughs> Come on, man. He seems dead. Dude, I want. Seems the, dead. We, uh, he, I was just down at Marvel. You know, with every said nobody mentioned that he wasn't dead. <laughs> He's dead. They don't. That's one of the. <laughs> I think he's, he's definitely dead. dead. He's, he's definitely dead. dead. He's dead. Man. That no, uniform's dead. too freaking. No, cool. no, he's dead. I know. So I'm too old. Listen, I think at some point they're going to have to change the Avengers. We're getting, <laughs> they're getting a little long in the tooth. <laughs> Can I ask a question? When they, about first, when they first get their yeah. AARP card, yeah. 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 I have a question about your scene in Civil War. Yeah. Um, the, the spit on the side of your mouth, the, was that yeah. uh, makeup spit or was that your... No, it's real spit. <laughs> I have it right now. I get excited. I'm really sweating right now. Uh, it's got to be wild, though. It, it, just listen. If it, you're, You are part of one of the greatest movie fights ever filmed. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, that elevator, elevator fight, which we know you had a lot of sway over. Yeah. It, 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 I can watch that over and over. That's uh -huh. got to be a sense of pride for you. It's fun. Yeah. It's fun. It was, yeah. It's all fun. And knowing that also now that you could just d demolish Chris Evans. Uh, yeah. So skinny now. I just saw him. He's so beautiful. Uh, but I was with all of them. Like, they were all there. The whole, yeah. every Marvel character was assembled. It was yeah. like 45 people. Like, I'm sitting with Cheadle and William Hurt. You don't realize how many people have been in those movies. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. 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 Wow. I'm like, I might, I I think I would cry if I was I cried. in the presence of all of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was fascinating. Yeah. All right, let's hear it for Frank Grillo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, let's uh, dive into the entertainment news. I'm sure you heard about this, but it's a big announcement. Princess Kate and Prince William are expecting their third yeah. child. Yeah. Yeah. It is official. Kensington Palace confirmed on Monday that they are already, of course, they are already the parents to Prince George IV, and who is four. I'm sorry, not the fourth. Prince George is four. <laughs> How did you pull that one off? And uh, <laughs> Princess Charlotte, who I is... I ricocheted off the ceiling. Uh, who is two. The Royal Highness, here's the official uh, announcement uh, from Kensington Palace. It said, their Royal Highness... The Royal Highness... Says... The, 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 <laughs> The Duke, Duke and Duchess, Duchess of, Cambridge of Cambridge are very pleased to, to announce that the Duchess, Duchess of Cambridge, Cambridge is expecting their third, third child, child, Harry the Fourth. The Queen, the Queen and of member, of, of, both members of Parliament 
in conjunction with the Benny Hill Estate. <laughs> <laughs> they got them both. Of both families uh, are delighted Ringo. with the new <laughs> Ringo. What? Ringo and Betty Hill. <laughs> Step it up. Fish and chips. <laughs> Fox hunts. Tallywhacker. Tallywhacker. <laughs> So uh, Kate is again facing an acute form of morning sickness. Sometimes she had grappled with uh, during her first two pregnancies. It's um, it's yeah. completely debilitating. There's a do they have the name of it there? It's it's uh, yeah yeah. It's called uh, hypermesis uh, gravidarum. Right. So she's her her level of nausea and everything is off the charts. Sounds like a Harry Potter spell. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Harry- she had it with with each. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly. So she actually canceled an appearance Monday morning due to the illness. Um, and they had said that uh, in a statement to as with her previous two pregnancies, the Duchess is suffering from hypermesis uh, gravidarum. Uh, her Royal Highness will no longer carry out her planned engagement at the Hornsey Road Children's Centre in London today. A 35-year-old royal is expected less than three months, uh, is reportedly, I'm sorry, less than three months pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> And they only went public with the information because of how sick she is. Uh, Are you okay in there, sweetheart? (laughs) (laughs) Would you like some milk of magnesia? (laughs) (laughs) The prince recently discussed Kate's parents. Seems to be in a bad way. Uh, the prince recently discussed Kate's parenting skills in glowing terms and admitted that uh, there are good days and bad days for every parent. He had said, "We well, as the uh, the other parents in the room will testify, there's wonderful highs and there's wonderful lows. Uh, it's been quite a change for me personally. I'm very lucky in the support I have from Catherine. Uh, she's an ama- amazing... <laughs> she's an amazing mother and a fantastic wife. Love between a man and a woman is a beautiful thing. Especially if it's on video. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't you agree? Uh-huh. Yeah. I'd have to yeah. agree with you on that. <laughs> and and as wonderful as expressing that love through human touch and yeah. and uh and and well, getting it on. Right. I'm being nice because Bill's here this morning. Oh, I know. All right. This is about sex. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the withdrawal method. Okay, where you go to the bank and you take everything out in one <laughs> shot. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay. No, also known as the pullout method. Yeah. Uh, is being used twice by twice as many men as a decade earlier. Uh, there this are... is for as a form of birth control. Yeah, it is the most. It is it is a risky proposition. Oh yeah, and, absolutely. Um, you know it. it uh, uh, and that's that's I don't know if that's that's not good news. Listen to this: while ten percent of unmarried men between the ages of fifteen and forty-four use this form of birth control in two thousand two, that number jumped to nineteen percent in twenty fifteen, according to the Center for Disease Control. Yeah, but but the use of condoms is on the rise, but still only a third of men wear them. So in, in my condom days, I my brand purchasable at the local mobile station, Bearback. Bearback. Yeah. Really? No. Wow, I was a Trojan guy. Trojan guy. Trojan I went bread. with the most popular product. Trojan bread. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, do they still have the machines in, in men's bathrooms? I haven't seen them in a long time. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the dispensers you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, on the weekends, I work as a lot lizard. <laughs> ah, it's good to know that yeah, those are there. Yeah. You sure you're a woman? Yeah. I, ha- I have on rare occasions seen them before, Case. That's where I saw them for the first time as a child. There was a, a bar across the street from our swim club. Go buy daddy some condoms. <laughs> and no, but I, I didn't know what condoms were. I just knew that they had a machine there. Yep. And so I went over there. I bought some out of there. I bought a French tickler and a regular one. I was oh, going to yeah. ask if they had French ticklers or <laughs> yeah. not. Yeah. <laughs> And then I brought it back to the pool and I inflated them like they were balloons. Of course. <laughs> and there was like an adult who was like, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, what is that? It's an enjoyable right. day, I must add. It doesn't seem right if we don't go past 11. We got it into the habit last week. Yeah, we did. Yeah, with the fellas being on the road, it did go a tad bit late. But here we are at 1043, wrapping things up. I'd like to thank Mr. Dane Cook for being hey. on the show today. Dane has got a new comedy special. It's coming out on October. It says fourth year, but I think it's the fifth. You can go to danecook.com and get the uh, the info all together. But uh, he filmed it at his home. 
and has now releases. So the digital release is coming out on October 4th and 5th. But check uh, danecook.com for all of the details. So nice having him by. It was also nice to see Jackie Bam Bam hey! Hey! earlier. And he's back in our studio because you were taking the helm for Pierre Robert this week. I'm going to do my best. We yep. have to stop meeting like this, guys. <laughs> we do. Is he... Now, he usually takes, like, a Monday off, too. Is he off next Monday, do you know? That, I'm not sure. I don't okay. think so, yeah. That's the, the I word he was I heard. off two weeks. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh. This is okay. last week, and this is the second week. Oh, oh okay. I was wondering if he was going to be off next Monday, Monday as well. So. That's too far in advance. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> one day at a time, Jack. All right, so we're going to need to get one letter at a time from you. Are you ready to begin? I am ready. Here we go. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Now, the daily letter. And the Preston and Steve show is brought to you today by the letter. The letter S as in sweet. All right, S. And we have a pair of the best seats in the house and VIP merch package for the Smashing Pumpkins and Jane's Addiction. Friday, October 21st show at the Wells Fargo Center and the Celestial Colleagues VIP merch package includes access to the Smashing Pumpkins Lounge, mm -hmm. exclusive merch, and VIP entrance. And tickets for the show are on sale now via Wells Fargo Center philly.com so we will give that away on friday and jackie's going to help us out all week long and away. i will have those tickets for Ooh. pierre all this week but regular tickets i don't have all that vip okay just the regular standard ticket regular tickets yeah. excellent so you've got these several hours to play with on the radio what are you going to do today man uh, of course we're going to serve up the workforce blocks uh steve what do we call them the grateful crew as of today yes so uh a big block of motley friggin crew uh celebrating their sophomore album today shout at <laughs> the devil released in 83 we'll track through that it's Luke Spiller, the Strut's birthday. And press, you better be tuned in. Abbey Road, 53 yeah. years ago. Wow. Yep. So uh, we'll track through that. Of course, 12 noon, we'll give you that keyword worth $1,000 in the Yoohoo loot. Excellent. All right. Thank you, Jackie. I want to thank also our sponsors. Press and Steve Show brought to you today by Acme Markets. Fresh foods, local flavors, Acme, official grocery store of the Preston and Steve Show. Also brought to you by Jersey Mike's. Jersey Mike's, be a sub above. And. Zane Western Apparel and Work Gear huh. in Powell's Grove, New Jersey. Online at zanewestern.com. Uh, tomorrow, the program will have Tat Tuesday because it's a Tuesday, a Tuesday, and that's what we do on Tuesdays. And we also have Nicholas Hirsch. He is the conductor of the Philly Pops, and they're going to be doing The Godfather. Yes. Oh. The music. And is this along with the movie? Do we yes, know? yes. Okay, excellent. So we will talk to Nicholas tomorrow. And see what else we can get into. That's it. We're done. Rage on and have a great day. And we'll see you tomorrow, friend. Bye-bye.